Hey guys, Fia back at it again with another Twitch VOD. This one is from the 27th of April, 2022. I started through my 50 tunes, uh, attempting to get the Shaw mount. That's gonna, yeah, huh? But we also did some fundraising for Panquan Network. Um, I don't know if the QR code will still work by the time you see this. There's a QR code um, there for fundraising through the whole stream. Um, but if it doesn't work and you are interested after what you hear during the stream, you can donate directly to the cause via Tiltify. Um, you should be able to jump on in there and see that yourselves. But if you'd like to catch us live, you can do so at twitch.tv forward slash Fiyama. You can add a slash schedule onto that. If you would like to see when I'm next going live, converted automatically to your time zone. And if you would like to catch me not, well, it is still online, but not like live. You can do so on social media. All those links, uh, particularly my Instagram, are all down in the description box. Feel free to explore those. But until then, enjoy the VOD. Took a lot longer than it needed to. Uh, where's this button? Good. Brilliant. Not hint, brilliant. That's fine. Whatever. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. No mount makeup today. Today has been a big day. No mount makeup today. I uh, unfortunately uh, completely and utterly ran out of time. So my apologies. The game is missing uh, because of me. But that's... Look, sometimes life just happens, doesn't it? <laughs> sometimes life just happens to you and you've got to go along with it. Um, so there we go. No mat makeup today. Um, you may call it either Invisible or Tawny Wind Rider. Your call. Uh, <laughs> I did put something on my face so I didn't look dead, but um, I'm, I, it's not it's not inspired by any particular amount. Uh, what am I doing? Who knows? What am I ever doing, you guys? What am I ever doing? Oh, oh I forgot something. It's fine. I'll get it at some point. Uh, but I'm I'm completely and utterly scattered today. Uh, it it truly it really has been a day. Um, mm, but it's fine. We're here. We're gonna get a, a noodle. Well, it's gonna be fine. Everything is gonna be fantastic and wonderful and fine. <sighs> Placed? I think it placed. Hello. Oh, I didn't do the... One moment, please. Where's the button on these? There we go, found it. Hi. Hello. Today's stream is sponsored by Panquan. And, and wait, hang on. Let me just double check exactly. Yes, Panquan Network. Today's stream is being sponsored by Panquan Network. Legal stuff coming. Um, but no, literally. Um, ah! El Ray! El Ray with the raid. Thank you so much. Welcome on in, Raiders. You've come in just the right time. I'm about to explain everything you need to know about today's stream. I am Fia. It is lovely to meet you. If you haven't been here before. If you have been here before, welcome back. Welcome back. Today's stream is sponsored by the Pank One Network. Uh, the Penguin Network, uh, they're, they're a charity. They raise money to throw at research to defeat pancreatic cancer. Cancer sucks. We know this. But pancreatic cancer particularly sucks. Particularly sucks. Um, so the Penguin Network is a non-profit organization. They research treatments for pancreatic cancer through an international coalition of hospitals. I did double check. I'm, I think... I don't think that there are any Australian ones in the coalition. There should be. However, I know that hospitals especially have finite resources and they might be researching other things, particularly like Australia is a really big one for skin cancer, for example. So they might be busy researching other cancers, but that's, look, there's a coalition, international coalition of hospitals and cancer research centers as well. Um, the goal is to raise the survival rate of pancreatic cancer, not necessarily an outright cure, although, you know, raising the survival rate 
is that not step one towards an actual bloody cure? I think it is, personally. Like, you can't just kind of go and, like, zap and it's gone. It's, it's something that takes time and effort and baby steps and money. Money. Do I think that research against these kind of medicines, uh, these kind of, these kind of medical conditions should be funded by, you know, government and big corporations and stuff like that? Of course. Yes, absolutely. They have a lot more money than we do, but that is not the case in our current society. For better or for worse, it is up to us. It is up to us. Um, so pancreatic cancer is currently the deadliest of all cancer types. The survival rate is less than 10%. It's 8%. If you are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer today, the chances of you living for another five years is 8%. 8. That's ridiculous. It's just, it's just flat, plain ridiculous. What? <laughs> Why? With all of the medical advancements and stuff that we've made, so pancreatic cancer is not uh, like, you know, a, a sexy cancer. People think, uh, like, there's a lot, like, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fundraising initiatives and things like that for things like skin cancer because it's on the outside and you can see it and it, like, mars your skin and all that kind of, especially considering a lot of them happen, you know, on and around the face, the arms, things that are hit by skin a lot. Uh, hit by skin a lot. Hit by sun a lot because, you know, the sun can cause skin cancer. Uh, breast cancer, another sexy one because, of course, it's boobs. That's, you know, it's a thing. People don't want to lose that marker of femininity. Uh, and things like, you know, testicular cancer and stuff like that. Um, th you've got... Th th these are the ones that get, like, a lot of attention. Like, a big, like, lots of attention. Um, pancreatic cancer is one of those ones that's... It's not, like, it's not visible. You're not marked on the outside that it's, you know, you, you obviously can look a bit sick and you're going to be feeling rotten and all that kind of stuff. But it's not something that leaves a super visible mark if it is something that you've survived. Um, it's also a problem because when people are diagnosed, a lot of the time they're given weeks to live. Not months, not years, weeks. Weeks to live. Let, let that sink in. So because not, like, <laughs> the, you know, if somebody has, you know, a, a several year struggle with something, a lot of the time family and friends and colleagues and all those kind of people gather around and they, they fundraise for whatever's going but this is like you get diagnosis and you're gone and that's it there's no there's no time in there to to rally everyone together and to go and do the fundraising and to do it's just it's so quick and it's terrible so terrible and so that's why it like comes to people like us to 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 you know fundraise and to make this known and all that kind of stuff one of the um obviously i've been given a whole bunch of stuff to to help promote this stuff but one of the um one of the panel images i was given where is it i need to find it uh because it was i it it shouldn't have been it made me giggle a little bit um where is it maybe it's not here there it is. Uh, we've raised enough sympathy, it's time to raise the survival rate. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, that is so succinctly put, and I love that. 8% survival rate. We've raised enough sympathy, it's time to raise the survival rate. And how do we do that? Money. We do it with money. So, you've got a couple of options. Uh, Qualitron will be reminding you every so often that that's what we're doing today. Uh, obviously, you've got this lovely thing here to tell you what's going on. And you've also got, let me, yeah, there we go, this here. That is a QR code for Tiltify. If you scan that with your phone, it will take you to the donation page and you can do what you want to do. So that's that's pretty cool. And this and, and all this kind of stuff will be on all the scenes. So obviously we've got it on Stream Raiders. Uh, no, I don't want that to actually start early. I forgot about that. Oops, and we've also got it on our WoW screen as well. So it'll be there, the whole stream reminding you what we've got going, what is happening. And, 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 because I know, I know that this is what you want. I know this is what you want. Yeah, we are. And I forgot to get a cup for those two. God, I'm forgetting everything today. I am a mess. I do actually have an empty soft drink bottle though. So... If things are gross, I can spit into that. Fantastic. Good. 
The beans. The beans. Indeed. Okay. Oh, itchy. Itchy. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're doing today. Um, we're gonna jump in here and I'm gonna go park fear at Shah because that's also what we're doing today. We had a redemption last month for, uh, uh, 50 tunes versus Shah. We can't do all that in one stream. It's too many characters. The respawn rate won't allow it. Uh, but, but, uh, we can do roughly half of them today. Yas! Rel with the first donation of the evening. That is a butt. There is a. Did you, <laughs> did you see that? Ah, uh, dear. Um, thank you so much for your generosity, Rel. Much appreciated. Let me. Wait. Oh, no, I left them in the bag with the sink cut off because I know they go gross. That's right. I forgot about that. Uh, all right, so first bean of the day. Uh, this one's gonna either be tutti- wait, tutti fruity? Yes, tutti fruity or stinky socks. We're not gonna bother doing the things because it slows me- Ah! Eat the beans donated for- thank you. Eat the beans. Much appreciated. Is that- or is that not Shiba? <clears throat> anyway. Tutti fruity! Ah, yeah, off to a good start. We like that. We like that for fear. Um, right, I'm gonna park that there. So there's one. I need four more. Two. Three. No. Mm, no, wait. Three. Four. There we go. Oh, no. The beans. They are scuffy. You can't prove anything. Good. All right, let me catch up on chat because I haven't read any chat messages yet and that is a bad thing. All right, Zamwell first. Well, Zamnest, congratulations on this, the occasion of you grabbing first. Uh, Rel just missed out, but grab second. Welcome on in. Just beat you to- Oh! Rel, they- they almost popped up on my screen at the exact same time. which was just like, brrrm, straight away. And I was like, oh, Because you didn't see that, because the camera and the mic were off. Um, <laughs> we do know you, Zam, fairly well. Not like, as much as you can, uh, over the internet without, you know, with the username. Good, yep, okay, good. Hello, Apathy, welcome back with your 6th and 9th. Um, Yes, and the contributions to the 5060s leveling challenge, uh, community challenge. Good. Yep, there we go. Hello, Dory. You do have third. Well done on third. Hello, Scarlet. Welcome back. Oh, I have got my captions on. Thank you very much, stream closed caption a bot. Um, uh, you are here and alive, Shiba. Welcome back. Hello. Let's fix that. Let's not. Oh, dear. Um, hello mid- Oh, shot time. Hello, hello J. Chris. Welcome on in. And Bad Asteroid. Welcome, do you have a donate or anything for us? Of course we do! Exclamation Pank1. P-A-N-C-O-N-E will get you the thing. Uh, Qualitron will also be posting about it every roughly half an hour. And if you scroll down underneath the channel, there's a panel. It's purple and yellow. You can- it's the very first panel. You can click that one or you can scan the, the QR code in the corner, there's like four ways you can do it. Patience, uh, exclamation, pank one, scroll down, or QR code. Your choice. They all go to the exact same place, so there is no difference. They will all let us know, you can keep it anonymous, and they'll they'll fill up the, j -j -j the little bar here. So, there you go. I got... Oh, I got the cache of Shartouch Gold, okay. I was like, no loot? Wait, I'm bed, then I forgot it drops it in your stuff automatically. One down, 49 to go. Um, hello Nick, but thank you very much for the question, Bad. You, um, yes, definitely, and welcome on in. Thanks so much for doing bang one. Of course, absolutely. Such a good cause. I am assuming that you guys are from the place. <laughs> oh, um, wait, that was entirely too quick. What just happened? Wait, what the? Ha Quiz. Right, so that guide to upping the donation goal, I'm going to need that slightly more earlier than I expected. Well then, quiz, thank you so much for your generosity. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of beans, uh oh. I'm just gonna just keep eating beans all stream now. About, right, yep, mm. Good, I've had one. I've had one. Shiba, can you keep track of how many beans I've eaten? <laughs> I'm gonna have another one. 
Same thing, Tutti Fruity Stinky Socks. I think it's Tutti Fruity. It's not terrible, but it's not as flavorful as the last one was. So I think it's Tutti Fruity. Good! Good start. Rough day. Ah, just a big day. Just a big day. Are you lovely? Thank you, Jay. Much appreciated. I uh, expect there's a QR code that's right. Yep, that's one of the four ways you can do it. Absolutely. This <laughs> white walk straight out. Look, I'm not that pale, Nick. Just never mind. <laughs> mm. Mm, my bull eyes. Um, hello. Oh, well, she a fantastic scarlet. Congrats. Thank you again, Elray, for the raid and everyone who's coming in. Elray and Kit and Serbe. Oh, it's rated 3 out of 10. She's getting. <laughs> Oh no. Thank you for the cast of command, Shiba. Much appreciated. I appreciate it. Hello, Corn. Welcome on in. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Integrated Nota than Stardew Valley. Yay! Oh, I love Stardew Valley. God, I played it years ago and it got to the point where, like, I wasn't doing anything entertaining on stream. It was more just like maintenance stuff and people got bored of it, so we changed games. But God, I played it like nonstop for such a long time. It was so good. And all those achievements. Aha! I'm a sucker for achievements. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, <laughs> that is certainly the wrong one, Zam. Good job. Uh, let me... I forgot that was even a command. Good lord. See, I, I would have set it up. Tiltify. There we go. Um, I would have set it up being like, that's okay. Every time I do a Tiltify campaign, I can just update this command. And then what did I do? Forget about it. Good. There you go. Tiltify command is now updated to be the same thing as well. So there you go. You've got a couple, couple of options. Thank you, Sam. Look. Look. <laughs> Today has been a day. Okay. Um, sister of Mary Cancer when she was 11 going on 12 and I'm going brain dead due to the doctors not draining the fluid around her heart. Bandu, I'm so sorry to hear that. That sucks. Holy cow. That would have left such a mark on your family as well. I am, I am so sorry for your loss. Um. The beans. Yeah, look. He's making work through to regard sound backwards. That's odd. That doesn't sound right. Um, hello, Virtue. Welcome on in. Hope you're having a lovely day. Your generosity, absolutely. My first donation. Hey, Assass. Good night, early morning. I'm having a wonderful afternoon, evening. Thank you very much for asking. I hope you can say the same. Can't prove anything. <laughs> meep, meep. Hello. Um. Nice. Indeed. Hello, panda. Well, that's a big one. That was indeed very quick. Uh, so I need to... A moment, please. <laughs> Good lord. Um... Cool, so what are we on? Jeebus. All right, that's fine. Let's, um, no, I, ugh. Okay, one thing I really don't like about the Tiltify platform is that when you go to change the goal and you try to backspace the one for 100 and turn it into, it, it clears the whole thing and then you put three in, it's like three cents. And you're like, excuse me, what are we doing? Yeah, it's, it's a thing, but there you go. There's a bit of gray left on that bar now. So, hey, hey. fantastic. Look, when I when I say that my community is like the best one on Twitch, uh, I'm not kidding. Not kidding. That was quick indeed, ye are the beans. Absolutely good cause quiz. I agree wholeheartedly. I could not agree more. I have to make him into a smoothie and just drink. Uh no. <laughs> uh okay, spoiled milk or coconut. My mouth is unhappy. That was, um... Oh, I can still taste it. Okay, another one, quickly. Uh, birthday cake or dirty dishwasher? D dirty dishwater. I keep calling it dirty dishwasher because I am an umpty. 
<sighs> Wait, I missed that one as well. Good lord, I'm not good at this. I need to up that timer. Ah! Bleh! <laughs> 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 Uh, Atlanta, thank you so much for your donation because cancer sucks and any effort to not have others lose folks to it is worth it. Correct. I agree wholeheartedly. Thank you so much. Thank you for your generosity and for making me another bin. <clears throat> What's that? Is that four? I think I've had two good ones and two bad ones. Um... You're supposed to have to make me to spin the jaw of the beans. Oh, the beans. Well, there's that packet that was only slightly opened. And then I have this packet. And, 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 and then I have this packet. So I reckon, I reckon we're good, maybe. We'll see. I wish they sold them in buckets specifically for influencers because good Lord, like the packs, they're not, they're not super expensive, but they're not cheap. And when you have to buy them like individually, last time I put an order in, I bought like four or five boxes because I knew that they were a really good in incentive for this kind of stuff, right? I just wish you could buy bigger sizes, like a bigger box. Like, I don't care about this thing. Get rid of that. Just give me a box of lots of beans. Please and thank you. <laughs> um, who is the legend that donated to you? 100 an awesome thing to do. That is quiz. As someone whose wife died, not of cancer, I know what deaths do to families, children, etc. I am so sorry for your loss, quiz. And thank you so much for your generosity so that hopefully in the future one day, one more person will know what it's not like. So that was a terrible sentence. Um, but you, look, I'm, sometimes I'm bad at talking. For someone who talks for a living, I'm really bad at talking. But hopefully the goal here is we can raise enough funds to, to make it so that more people who have a loved one or themselves experience pancreatic cancer cannot have to lose that person. Can ha cannot have that experience. And that's like, you know, that's, that's what we want. That's what we want. Um, there you go, I fixed it, Sam. Thank you. I just copy pasted my message from the other ones because I figured consistency is good. <laughs> What's my dad to prostate just in May last year? Oh, Panda, I'm so sorry for your loss. My condolences to all who've lost someone, dear. Agreed, absolutely. Love those days, so grateful to you for offering your time and platform to support a good co- Oh, thank you, Jay. I really appreciate it. Nah, it's, look. When, when you build something like this, when, like, I've been streaming for just over six years, and, like, when you build something like this and you have this amazing, incredible community, sometimes you just gotta do something for good, you know? Like, you've, you've gotta, like, aim that community at something terrible and annihilate it, like cancer. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, yeah. And it fills your heart as well, and, you know, put some, put some points in the good karma column and all that kind of stuff, like, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Spoiled milk. Guessing it's milk. It. It was. Uh, I'm just here for the gross faces. Good. Why is there only one clip? I've had two bad... I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> for your Shiba kid count. Shiba immediately forgets to do that. <laughs> uh, I think so. This will be number five. This will be number five and it's Tutti Fruity or Stinky Socks. Okay, the worst thing about putting them in this bottle is that the, the like, thin mouth of it. There's also saliva in there, it's fine. But um, the thin mouth means that all of the, the bean scent and stuff is coming, and is like coming out of the, so every time I go to spit it in, there's a dirty dishwater in there. And I'm not sure if you've been here before, guys, but I've, like, the flavor I've pinpointed in the dirty dishwater bean that makes me want to spit it out is coriander, otherwise known as cilantro. I am one of those people who cannot handle that flavor. It tastes like soap. So every time I go to spit one out, I get a face full of the scent and taste of goddamn cilantro beans. I, I have made bad choices. <laughs> Hello, Landa. It was a Landa dono. Um, can I make it go for longer? Let's have a look. Overlays. This one. Alert box. Alert duration! I can! Let's make it go for longer. Let's make it... 
go for five. It was on three seconds. So I'm sorry, that I think it just tested it, maybe. Yeah, because it says zero dollars. Okay, that was a test. Um, that looks like enough, I think, maybe. Okay, save changes. Good, layout saved. I think I have to refresh it in here, though, to make it actually do it. So it's going to disappear for a second, but it'll be back real quick. And back. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. All right, so now it'll last a little bit longer, and I might actually be able to catch it. We'll see. Ugh, I get so busy. I get so busy. That was fourth. Yeah, that one was fifth. How many am I supposed to do? What are we up to? 220. Good lord. 225. No, 230. This isn't updated down here. No, wait. Hang on. It says 2.30 on my screen, but 2.20 on my dashboard. Or oh, 2.25 on the dashboard. Maybe if I refresh it. Technical difficulty. There we go. 2.30. So what the f... Four. Mm, yeah, 46 beans. I'm not going to be able to keep count of that, so I'm just going to keep going. Um. Oh, sharp! Oh god, that bag smells horrendous. Ah, uh, when it was paused, thank you. Don't have to eat a bean for me. Okay, I appreciate it, Landa. Thank you. You cruising to the stories. Storytelling day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now the face just classic. Look. Look. They smell horrendous and they taste some of them taste really good, and then they just don't, and it makes me sad. Oh, there are two black ones in this. It, I'm not eating those ones. So, obviously, they, they look identical. Did I... Oh, I didn't get a bloody tag. God damn it. Alright, we're gonna have to wait around again, because I didn't get a tag. I was too busy playing with jelly beans. Oh well. Um... There we go. So, the black jelly beans are either skunk spray or licorice. I don't like licorice, so both of those are gross, so I'm not eating them. Good. <laughs> I'm glad we all agree. Uh, but this one is either peach uh, or bath. That's odd. Um, the... I wonder if you guys are going to be able to see this. Actually, I could just do this. Do you see where it says peach and bath? Why does the peach one look different? That's silly. Would they actually look different? Can I tell? The only way I'm going to figure out is by eating all the peach ones, isn't it? Okay. Okay. So, peach or bath? Fun. Thank you so much for the resub with your Prime Gaming 39 months. My god. Thank you so much for your continued support. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Okay, Bean. The bath ones are too accurate. Mm -hmm. The bath ones are too accurate. I don't like them. Can confirm. The bath ones look like peach beans. Don't make me sad. <laughs> oh, gross. Gross. Alright. Um, time for some... Happy stuff, I think. Uh, I got a package. I got a package... Uh, of gifts from Throne. Why does chat disappear every time I... That makes me really sad, but that's fine. Ooh, package! Uh, let me open up Throne. So, um... <laughs> Steal. Hello there, Zam. 
Hello there. Okie dokie. So I had a few things sent uh, by Zarin and by Sean. These are these are from Zarin and Sean. Um, I've got three from Zarin and one from Sean. So I'll do the one from Sean first. These ones were back in my birthday. These are birthday presents. Yeah, birthday presents. So I have a um, gel lip, what they call it, gel lip pencil in the shade Adria. And I believe this is kind of like a whiny, darker sort of, hmm. You know I love my darker shades. So let me pull up the camera so I can make sure that I'm sending, showing you the right stuff. 75% <gasps> on the community challenge. What on earth, you lot? So that's the color on the end of the pencil. Oof, that's a nice color. Ah, oh my goodness. Where's it? Can you, you ever see this? There we go. It's got a bit of a coating on the top just to kind of keep it from drying out while it's in transit. So it'll take a little bit to get that off. But this is, oof. That is a gorgeous color. Mm. Uh, so these are the ones we had some issues with because they thought it was a fraudulent transaction. So I think, yeah, there's a bit of coating on there. I'll have to sharpen it. I'll just sharpen it and it'll take that off. But... Look at that as a gorgeous color. It's beautiful. It actually kind of close to what I'm wearing today. Oof, delicious. Great, fantastic. Yay. Amazing. Let me just tick that off as received. Um, then I have... Wait, I just realized there's stuff missing from in here. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. That's all right. I'll reach out to them and ask. I uh, just need 39,840 embers to make fear level up tunes to 60. Click the little fire under the left chat box. Click that big old bar that says 50, 60 is leveling. You can donate up to 2k embers or you can donate multiple times up to that point. Embers are a free currency to spend and you get your embers back if we don't reach the goal. Correct. You stole it. Don't worry about it. No stealing. That's bad. I do have, however, lipstick. This is, uh, this, I haven't tried this formula before, but it's their, like, bullet lipsticks. And it's in chocolate. I'll wait till this is over before I swatch it. Um, but while we do this, while we have... Um, so pancreatic cancer is the number one deadliest cancer in the world, but we can change it, of course, and that's what we're doing today. Raising some funds to, uh, oh my God, stuck to my hand, um, to change the outcomes of pancreatic cancer. Uh, uh, what's the word? Pancreatic cancer diagnoses. There we go. Zam, Fade, Neke, and Aileen, congratulations to you on your bonus shit. Brilliant. Uh, then this one. Um, so the... The survival rate is less than 10%. We've said that it was it was eight. Um, as one of the lowest survival rates of all cancers, which is terrible. We don't want that. We want to make it go up. Me better survival rates. Um, we may not be able to prevent it from happening just yet, but we can absolutely make sure that people who do get it can survive. And hopefully we can use uh, those survivors and their experiences to do further research as well. Big thing. Um, survival rate has gone almost unchanged for 40 years. The survival rate in 2022 is almost as good as it was in 1982. What? Why? Well, we're going to find out. That's what we're trying to raise money to do. We want to find out. Putting slightly down. Are you just sitting closer today? Uh, pretty sure I'm sitting closer. I haven't touched the camera. Um, I think I'm sitting, like, I'm not, like, all the way back, and I'm not, like, pulling my legs up to, to like, curl up and all that kind of stuff. I'm actually sitting the way I should be. <laughs> uh, good. Have you all placed a unit? I have. You should definitely place units on the battlefield by clicking the link in chat and logging in with your Twitch account and dragging and dropping them to the battlefield. Um, pancreatic cancer is often called the forgotten cancer. 
uh, because of the number of weeks a person is, is given to live after being diagnosed, which is just, that's a bit ridiculous. Um, and there's a line here in, in the um, document that I've got that says, this is the cancer that makes you wish you had a different cancer. And that is heartbreaking. That is just utterly heartbreaking. Imagine finding out that you have cancer and going like, oh, you know, well, these days there, there are there is more research being done and there are more treatments available and so cancer isn't the death sentence it used to be and all that kind of stuff. Maybe I can get through this. And then being told, well, actually, it's pancreatic cancer. 8%. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> Good lord. It would just suck. I, I, I cannot begin to imagine. I cannot begin to imagine. Uh, but that is why we are raising funds. That's why we're raising money. Doing the generosity thing. And all this stuff. I think I missed any messages. I didn't. Brilliant. I think it's time for another bean. Uh, peach or bath? Why can't I get any peach ones? I really like the peach ones. I really shush you, Shiba. Why? Ooh, um, lipstick. So this one's from Zarin, and it is called chocolate. Ah, oh, look, it looks just like chocolate, doesn't it? Look at that. Ah, oh, I will not eat the lipstick. Good. Um, ooh, it smells good too. Oh wow. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous shade of lipstick. Thank you, Zarin. Oh my. That's delightful. Mmm. -hmm. I have to wear that tomorrow. Uh, and then. Oh, wait, where's the thing? I'm gonna check it off. It's this one. And then. You know, I love my dark lipsticks. Nation Bar may be tricking my eyes. Oh, uh, there is also that, yeah, the donation bar it has made, because it's overlapping the camera. So if I went back to here, and if I turned that off for a second, it does give you, like, it's not, I haven't moved the camera. I've just shifted it, like, the other two things over there, I've shifted up a little bit. But it's cutting the camera off, it's making it a little more narrow. I knew I'd make a post. Yes. Yes. And I have, this is a liquid lipstick, a matte liquid lip paint. Uh, this is the one I've got one that's like a pale pink sort of shade called Berlin. This one is called Tokyo. Yes. Ah, oh, love me some dark. Love me some dark lipstick. And this is just gorgeous. Let's uh, mix this baby up a little bit. <gasps> it is the deepest, darkest shade of purple. Look at that. <sighs> it's beautiful. I love it so much. I love it so much. So I have liquid lipstick and lipstick. And a lip liner. Thank you very much to Zarin and Sean for those beautiful pieces. Um, and uh, because the order amount was over X amount, um, I was sent another pencil in Jade, which I already have. So I'll put that aside, sealed. And because it's been so long and there've been so many hiccups, I got another set. <laughs> ah, holy! Thank you so much for the donation. Much appreciated. Absolutely incredible. Ah, yay. So generous. Much appreciated. Yay. Yay. Hope you're having an, an awesome day as you deserve. Uh, Sweet Virgie, have you checked Fia's Instagram and left her a follow today? Last I checked, we were on 993. It's a gorgeous color. It is absolutely, oh, mm. 
Yes. That's the kind of shade um, that I, I had something kind of similar, but not as nice. Like that was really smooth to apply. Um, I wore something and it was a little bit lighter when I did my Sylvanas cosplay. Was it a super dark purple like that? Good afternoon, Dano. Hello. Uh, all right, we'll go back to here while we're waiting on Shah because I accidentally didn't get a tag last time. Go me. Um, I'm going to turn ATT back to... So what a good cause. Hope all is well. Absolutely, I agree wholeheartedly. And yeah, no, I'm doing very well, thank you. Thanks for asking. I've had a really big day, but um, but pretty good. Pretty good. Um, all right, so I'm gonna mark that as received, but I need to email them and let them know that I missed, they missed the thing. Cause there's another item on the packing slip that wasn't in there, but they did put like five packing slips in there. So it doesn't surprise me. Um, So many people farming Shah today on your realm. I know, isn't it amazing? Like, I know it's cross realm and all, but like, this is this is something different. There's like a lot of people here. I mean, I'm not I'm not upset about that. It's kind of cool to watch. Uh, all right, this is going to be. Uh, oh, it's Tutti Fruity or Stinky Socks. Hello, Full Focus. How are you doing? Oh, oh, hmm. Hello, Blooming. How are you today? I hope you're doing fantastically. That was socks. Yeah, that was, that was stinky socks. Gross. Icky, icky, icky. Icky, 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 icky. Mwah. Mwah. Ugh. Goodness gracious. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I've had a really, a really big day, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I'm here. I'm farming Shah. We're raising money for a fantastic cause. And uh, at some point shortly, I'm hoping that I can go and get myself something that's tasty to wash the flavor of these beans out of my mouth. Yeah, my stanky socks. Lech, right? Mm-hmm. Totally. Lovely and delicious. Uh, okay. Spoiled milk or coconut? I think this one's coconut. It's coconut! Yay. That makes me happy. Wonderful. Mm. Oh, okay. I'm actually going to use my, um, what's it called? Moonfire this time. <clears throat> Get the tag. Because, <coughs> excuse me, I can't afford to miss spawns or I'm not going to get through all 50 in two days. First good one. No, we had two good ones at the start and then just a really bad chain of really bad ones. How, am I up, how many am I up to, though? Has anyone been keeping count? There we go. Oh, sorry. Six or seven, I think. I had three good ones. Four, five, six seven, eight, nine, according to how many halves are in here. 
Uh, Alright, out we get. Next one. Oh, I'm having um, bean boozled jelly beans um, for the donations that we've had to Pank One. And um, three guesses and all of them were wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had two tasty beans at the start and then I just had another tasty bean. And the gross ones I've been spitting out, so I counted how many halves were in the bottle um, to figure out um, how many I'd actually had. They've been stuck to my teeth now, though. God, they're so sticky, aren't they? They get everywhere in between your teeth and stuff. Delicious, but sticky. At least, this is why you don't crunch down on the nasty ones at the back of your teeth. Because then they get stuck everywhere and you cannot get rid of the taste. Okay. A lot of the a lot of the rest of the tunes have their hearths set to Sha. But um a lot of them don't. So what's gonna be the fastest? Yeah, Del. Cool. Is she a serious to remember dad? Sounds too hard to pass up. Totally fine, Rel. Enjoy. Eat well. Have a wonderful time with the family. No, I wasn't on long popping out to dinner with fam. We're back in a wee bit later. No worries, Panda. Enjoy dinner. We will see you later. Good luck with the drop in the beans. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay. Let us skedaddle our way over to Shaw. And this one is either uh, canned dog food or chocolate pudding. Mmm, delicious. Not delicious. Not chocolate pudding. Oh, God. What? How is it so accurate? It smells exactly how canned dog food... Like, it tastes exactly like canned dog food smells. I know I say this every time we eat these beans, but, like... My heart goes out to those employees whose job it was to eat a jelly bean and say, mmm, doesn't quite taste enough like dog food. Like, I, oh, man, I could not. I could not. I could not. This is particularly potent pack. Your reaction seems stronger this time. I, look, maybe it's because it's been a while since I've done it. Or maybe it's because I've had nothing but really good food for the last few weeks and so my taste buds are more attuned to the not crap or something. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but look, maybe, maybe. We didn't end up having very many from the Christmas branded packs. So maybe the Christmas branded packs, they upped the gross juice or something. It's, it's possible, it's possible. Uh, do you think they tasted dog food before they made it? I don't think that they tasted dog food. I think because um, if you've ever gotten a dog food bean, you might know what I mean when I'm say when I say that it tastes like dog food smells. So if you've ever had a dog and you fed them like out of the tins, we used to have a Jack Russell Fox Terrier cross. Oh, he was a little psychopath. I tell you what, but um, we'd get like the big tins of dog food, and we'd get we had a dog food fork that we had bent so that we could cut around like about halfway down the tin and give him half a tin at a time and then put some foil over it and put it in the fridge. So whenever you'd take the foil off, whenever you'd open the fresh tin, the smell, it's a very particular smell. Like it's meaty, but it doesn't smell like steak. It doesn't smell like cooking meat. There's, there's a very particular meaty smell to it. And the canned dog food beans taste just like that smell. I feel like if I ate the bean entirely and then like <sighs> at somebody's nose, they'd be like, that smells like canned dog. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, 
it tastes like the smell. So I think they would have smelled it and then tasted the bean and been like, yeah, those are close enough, if that <laughs> makes sense. I, I still wouldn't have wanted to do it. Good Lord, no. But that's kind of, I think that, yeah. But welcome in, Nithro. Nithro, Nithro. I, th I feel like it's supposed to be Nithro as in like Nitro, but I'm not sure. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Welcome on in. I hope you're having an awesome day. They use a particular type of meat they use in dog food they used for that. Possibly. I mean, most of, uh, most jelly beans and things like that, they don't actually use bananas to make banana flavored stuff, if that makes sense. Um, they use esters. Uh, oh, they actually do use the, holy cow, there you go. Sugar, glucose, syrup, thickener, flavors, colors, lots of colors. Concentrates, apple, blackcurrant, carrot, hibiscus, pumpkin, and spirulina. They'll be for colorings. Um, acidity regulators, salt, glazing agents, peach puree concentrate, banana puree, chocolate, sugar, cocoa, mass, and cocoa butter, pear juice concentrate, cocoa powder, coconut, thickener. But they don't have dog food in there. There's no meat products that I can see there. So I think it'll probably come under flavors. And a lot of the time, flavors count as esters. Um, in high school, we had a, a um, just, I think it was just one class. We were studying organic chemistry. If you remember, organic chemistry was the really fun one where you got to draw lots of sticks and N's and O's and C's and make the, yeah. Um, but we're doing organic chemistry. And one of the things that we did was esters um, because esters are really quite easy to make and they smell exactly like certain things. So when we went in there, the, the room smelled incredible. Like the room smelled like a perfumery and we're like, what is going on? Um, and we had like little tiny clear, completely clear, colorless, everything, uh, beakers around the room. And what we had to do, we got a little sheet of paper that had like one through whatever it was. And we had to like lean over, we were completely quiet. We weren't allowed to make a sound have a bit of a whiff of what was in the beaker and write down what we thought it smelled like and do that for every single one of them. And every single person got every single one of them correct because esters are so strong and so potent that they're very obviously a particular smell. So there was a banana one, there was a strawberry one, there was a chocolate one. It smelled exactly like melted, creamy, like beautiful velvety chocolate, but it looked like water. Um, it's weird as hell, I tell you what. Um, but esters is what they use in a lot of perfumes, but also a lot of foods. There are a lot of food safe ones. Um, and because they just, they work. And they don't seem to be harmful. Hey! Dano, thank you so much for your donation! Much appreciated! Your generosity, yay! Thank you! Uh, fun fact, the bananas used to make the artificial banana flavor is an extinct species. Correct! I know, how trippy is that? How trippy is that? Um, and the artificial banana flavor is apparently exactly what they tasted like and smelled like. They didn't taste or smell like. That's why banana flavor is so different to actual bananas. Because they're, yeah, how cool is that? Uh, we lost our mum four weeks after being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and my cousin was one of the lucky ones who was able to fight for 18 months due to his young age and fitness. It is close to my heart but also heartbreaking to contribute to this cause. I, I can imagine, Dunno, and I am so sorry for your loss. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, thank you again for your donation. Um, remember to take care of yourself. Like, honestly and truly, and to everyone who has uh, has shared stories so far, if this is- Ah! Doop! Thank you so much for your donation as well. My gosh. Much appreciate the generosity. Um, uh, sorry, as I was saying, if anyone has been- like, Anyone who is affected by this cause, or anyone who has had- uh, Who has been sharing all that kind of stuff. If- If it gets to a point during today's stream where it's a bit much, that is understandable, that is okay, it is totally valid, and feel free to, to step away if you need to. Um, and if you need further help, like no matter where in the world you are, if you pop into the Discord, or even if you ask in chat, if you let us know like the country you live in, we'll be able to find someone who is qualified, like a helpline or something like that, to, to just have a chat to to get stuff off your chest if you need like if you need somebody who can help on that sort of level. Because um, I know that this is not an easy topic, it, it really isn't, uh, 
but that's one of the reasons why we do need to talk about it occasionally to make sure that people know the deal and and you know raise some money to make sure it's not the deal anymore um but yeah just keep in mind you know keep yourself in mind when when we're going through today's stream it is it is a big deal it's a big deal take care of yourselves you know, i always say it, every stream take care of yourselves and be nice to each other so do it really honestly take care of yourselves uh, i didn't like that i had profanity in my donation remark so i had to say duck cancer good i love it fantastic you did i can see that that's wonderful thank you so much for your generosity very much appreciated i'm sure everyone knows the true sentiment we do indeed it is a common phrase here on the internet uh, and it shouldn't be not because i don't agree with it i absolutely agree with it it shouldn't be as common as it is because we shouldn't still have to be dealing with it as often as we do it's it's just that simple and that so that's what we're trying to do today is where we're trying to reduce the frequency with which we need to be dealing with these just horrible horrible things it's uh it's not pleasant but thank you for being here guys thank you for sticking with me through this and and thank you for all of your generosity much appreciated i think it's time for another bean you know no one really tells you when you're going into all this kind of stuff and doing um uh, charity streams and, and raising money for stuff and all that kind of thing it's it's um <laughs> there's a there's a whole balance to be had between uh you know the yeah let's get hype and let's raise money and let's do things and let's you know and and the so we're talking about cancer the the whole the like that's it's a really serious topic and it's really difficult to jump from my condolences and I'm so sorry for your loss to hype trains and do you know what I mean like it's just oh yeah it's um that's not gonna yeah no that's not going anywhere uh <laughs> it's uh yeah it's a tricky balance to to be had um because on the one side you can't keep it somber and serious and and super super respectful i mean of course you keep it respectful of of course but if you keep it super somber the whole time people who are coming to twitch for a good time will find it elsewhere but you want to keep them here so that they can hear about this amazing cause that you're raising funds for and hope and maybe eventually either contribute or tell other people who are able to contribute. Because not everyone is, and I totally respect that. I understand that not everyone's in the position to give, and that's okay. Uh, but, you know, chances are you probably know some people who are. Send them the link. They don't even have to come into stream. No, no need whatsoever. They can, you can absolutely just shoot them the link, let them know what's going on, uh, and if they are in the, in the giving mood, then they're welcome to do so. Spread the word. Can't really make my jokes about cancer. I'm somewhat out of my element here. Yeah, it's a it's a bit tricky, isn't it, dude? It's a little bit tricky. So, jelly beans, uh, <laughs> dirty dishwasher, or birthday cake. Mm, no. Oh, I can still taste the coriander. Mmm, yeah, there, there. Makes me sad. The face says it all. I know, right? Poor fear. Yeah, well, I put myself through it. It's my own fault. It's my own fault. Oh, that's interesting. Tiltify has, like, little things where I can, um moderate a message like if a message is is insulting or, or whatever or offensive i can like flick it over to to like close it and not have it show on the i think there's like a campaign place it must be <laughs> copy campaign url Oh, there is. Oh, look, and it's got, 
it's got um, stream on it too. That's funky. So you can watch from the Tiltify page. That's interesting. I don't think embeds count as views though. Just FYI. But that's super cool. Oh, and yeah, so it has... It has everyone's lists down the bottom. Like, and not everyone's lists. Everyone's messages. It has it down the bottom where you've got your, your stuff. Um, so if, if I think that something's offensive, I can moderate the message. I can remove the message from the campaign URL. That's cool! I like it. I like it. And you can donate with PayPal or with your credit card. That's super convenient. Ah, oh, what's... Oh, it's got a little dot with the original goal too. Amazing. I love that. I love that. Um, did you like my foot pick? Oh, hey, Zam. Okay, I'm like, are you asking Zam? I'm sure you are. I'm very confused. We can still have fun, and those that have passed would want us to, especially if he does funny faces. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And the other thing is, like, I mean, we are, obviously, we're talking about loss of life, and we're talking about very serious illness and all that kind of stuff, which is terrible. But we're also talking about the potential for none of that to happen anymore. We're talking about improving survival rates. We're talking about eventually one day a cure. And if that's not worth celebrating, what the hell is? Like, my God, you know? Goodness gracious. Uh, I didn't check because I knew it was going to be a food. Be me to head out. No worries, Elray. Rest well. I hope you have a phenomenal night. And we will see you next time. Let's hope to rest. Thank you. You all take care. You too, Elray. You too. Good to see you again. And thank you again for the raid. Very much appreciated. Ah! Desia! Amazing! Thank you so much for your generosity and your donation. Guys, we've hit 300. I gotta move it again. Good lord. Thank you so much, Desia. Ding goal, indeed. Indeed, we've hit 300. We had it originally on 100. And then Quiz came in and dropped $200. And I'm like, oh, I guess I need to move the number then. Uh, so, <laughs> so I guess i got to move it again. Goodness gracious me. Baby da -da -na -na, oh, my numlock is on. Na -na 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 -na. There we go. Let's do that. Is that going to update it? I think I have to refresh it. Um, means it's gonna disappear for a second again, but it'll come straight back. Here we go, and oh, there we go. Amazing! Thank you very much again for your contribution to see. Much appreciated. Oh my goodness, you guys, you're so generous. All of you are so generous. Blowing me away. What's the first goal? One hundred. 100. It's the minimum that you can set and I usually, when I do charity streams, I usually set it to there because I, I, look, it's been a while since, I haven't, I don't do them super, super often, especially um, given the whole like medical bill situation thing with the dentistry that I have. It's been something that I haven't done for a long while, but I want to kind of get back into it because I want to be able to give back. But at the same time, I've got $23,000 worth of bills to pay, do you know? So it's like a, it's kind of trying to find that balance between like directing money to a really worthy cause while at the same time dealing with my own medical stuff when I can. It's a bit tricky, um, but I'm, I'm going okay with the balance so far and I'm in a comfortable place with how much I've saved towards my dentistry. So I'm like, I, I think I can, I can afford to do this. So that's why we're doing it. Uh, but yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. New goal needed. Yes, new goal. Get. Maybe two and three hundred hours. Pretty good. I reckon it's pretty damn good too. Holy cow. But yeah, like I, I've done, I did like way back when I started streaming, I did a 24 hour stream for like a charity stream. And I think we made, I think it was a, like three or four hundred bucks, something like that. So, and because I don't, like, because I haven't done them super duper often, it's like how, like, and I also don't want to put up something that's like five grand and then make you guys feel like you're under like so much pressure to get there because I know it's not, I know that not everyone's able to give, especially, you know, with the world situation, all that kind of stuff. But if you can, here's an opportunity, you know, like that's sort of, yeah, it's, charities are really kind of, 
and I, like as a streamer with like an email address public and all that kind of stuff you you are approached by so many charities so many charities and there have been quite a few I've had to turn down simply because like I'd book one in and then I book another one in and then there are like three who want to date uh, between those two and there is such a thing it was there was a study done on it in Australia a little while ago uh, I think it was called charity fatigue where it's like give us give give some money to this cause and then to this cause and then to this cause and then to, and you just it all kind of runs together and it's just constantly giving and it all like it, it just it yeah it runs down you can't give that focus and that attention to each cause that they deserve that they really deserve so that's why I'm kind of like when I'm when I get those kind of um requests I have a look at my calendar and see if I've got anything else going on obviously um, but I'm also really, really cautious to not put anything too close together, um, not have like three in a month, that kind of, because it's just, I know like the first one might get a whole lot of support, but then the other two might not because they're just too soon. Um, it's, and then having to pick like which ones to support is a horrible feeling because every, like they're all r ridiculously deserving, all of them. So yeah, it's, uh, <sighs> It's a big thing. It's a big thing. But this one, this one really stuck out. I went and did my research and, and I, I couldn't believe, I could not believe that it was only an 8% five year survival rate. Like what the hell? That's ridiculous. Um, it's just, it's too small. Uh, Zam, Aelin, Neke, Dunno, Bad, and Funk, there we go. Congratulations to all of you on your bonus shit. Well done. Uh, morning from Amsterdam. The city's going to turn into drunken chaos shortly. Uh, enjoy, question mark? Stay safe. I hope you're well. Uh, barbarians. I think I've already leveled up my barbarian, maybe? No, that's a berserker. I always get those. There we go, barbarian. Blonk. I do have a quest that's fulfilled, though, so I need to go turn that in. Collect. Um. So, speaking of pancreatic cancer, what is it? What is pancreatic cancer? Um, so I do have, obviously, full clarity with you guys. I do have talking points. Um, I do try to expand on them as much as I can, but you guys know that I'm not great with just going right off the bat with, with something. Um, so I do tend to read at verbatim, but then, you know. But you're used to that, because I do that every time we do something like this. So it's great and it's fine. Uh, ooh. Hey, good, we're into the ones that have got the thing. So, um, pancreatic cancer is a cancer that begins in the organ that lies behind the lower part of the stomach. Um, and the, the organ is called the pancreas. So it sits just behind, so I believe it's like closer to the spine, behind the, the lower part of your stomach. Uh, the pancreas secretes enzymes that aid in digestion and hormones that help regulate the metabolism of sugars. So it does have a function. It's an organ that does a thing. Um, pancreatic cancer is incredibly difficult to diagnose because there are no symptoms in the early stages. No symptoms. Which is kind of unbelievable, hey? Like, you think about having this growth in an organ that's so important to digestion, and there are no symptoms. It just keeps on doing its job while it's got this big-ass tumour growing in it. Like, that's... Holy cow. Um, despite its subtlety, it is extremely aggressive and it spreads quickly. In its final stages, symptoms are often subtle or non-specific, such as lack of appetite or weight loss. And most people just kind of put that down to any number of other things, which is not great. And by the, si by the time symptoms begin to present themselves, it may already be too late. And so that probably all hands itself into the 8% survival rate, right? So the fact that, you know, you, you're, because, you know, when they, when they talk about cancer, when, when anyone talks about cancer, you always talk about catching it early, catching it when it's in like stage one so that you can kind of get on top of it and treat it or surgery or whatever it needs, whatever needs to be done, right? But if stage one is silent and then stage two is silent and then stage three is silent and then stage four is, oh, you've lost some weight. You're looking good. Have you lost some weight? Like... You know, it's, that's, yeah. So by the time they actually realize, hang on, there is actually something wrong here, you're screwed. That's it. 
which is terrifying. <laughs> Honestly, that's actually genuinely terrifying. Ah, <sighs> dearie me. have a look. It's kind of... It's a whole thing. Especially in this economy. I just did that reference. Uh, your Italian family means it's flame in Italian. I know it does. That's how I got the word from Google Translate. I'm not Italian. Uh, I main Fire Mage, and uh, the way I used to name, I've got too many characters now, so it's too much effort to do this, but the way I used to name my World of Warcraft characters was grab a handful of words to do with their class. Um, so, like, uh, flame, fire, burn, cinders, ember, hot, that kind of stuff, and stick those words into Google Translate, and, and then just change the translation <coughs> language until a cool word popped out at me. I did that a bunch. Um, and that's how I got the name Fiamma. Because it was a fire mage and I had the word flame and I clicked on Italian and I was like, ooh, I like that one. And so I grabbed it and it was available and so that's what I named my character and uh, it has stuck for 15 and a bit years. It's kind of cool, hey? <clears throat> oh, throat's kind of sore, it's the beans. Hiding at home today, it's King's Day, we celebrate the monarch's birthday, not my thing. Totally fair. Totally fair, sir. Well, welcome on in. I hope you have a lovely time here. Uh, I'm not good at just talking about something. I'm sorry what I made in the wrong stream. No, look, when it's something I don't have a suit, like, when I don't have too much knowledge about, right? If it's, even it, people come in here with a question about streaming or, a, like, if it's a, something that I have an opinion on, then I can talk about my opinion. But this is, like... This is facts about pancreatic cancer. Um, so I don't want to get them wrong, firstly, and my memory is trash for memorizing lists. So if I have like a bunch of bullet points, I'm never going to be able to memorize them. So I tend to read them verbatim off the thing and then like expand upon them. Um, it seems to work better for me, but I know that some people really hate that. So I just wanted to disclaim it before I kicked off. Ah, uh, similar to stress, scarily common signs. Yeah, absolutely. Really like, like that's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for another bean. Uh, this one. Yeah. Strawberry banana smoothie. Or dead fish. I really hope it's strawberry banana smoothie. It was dead fish. Fear should make beans a future ember redeem, like 5k embers. The only thing stopping me from doing that is the fact that they cost money. And I would have to spend hundreds, if not approaching a thousand bucks a year on jelly beans. Because <laughs> I know that you guys are, and I know that there are a lot of people who have like close to a million points saved up and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, it's the only thing. So, I mean, I can add them to throne. Do you want me to, do I need to add these to throne? Are they on Amazon? <clears throat> in booze lead they are of course they are ooh nerds rope rainbow candy can I order them instead um hey Jeff Thank you so much for your contribution to help kick cancer's butt. Much appreciated. Thank you. 25k embers. That's a lot of beans. Yeah, thrown. 
Mmm, Illidan's treats smell like dead fish. He loves them. I what? I don't think these would be kitty safe. Wait, Illidan's a kitty, right? Can you add to throne, then they can be redeemed when in stock? Yeah. Yeah, I can turn off redemptions for certain things, but not delete it entirely. Yeah, that's a thing. But I kind of, I did think that it would be better having them for, like, charity streams or, like, um, subathon celebrations, stuff like that. But, I mean... I mean... Question is, if I had those for if I had them for points, would people actually save their points to do the community challenge each day? Or nah. My grandma had a long battle with pancreatic cancer. Oh, far out, Jeff. I'm so sorry for how close to home to for hang on, let's try that again. I'm so sorry for how close to home this hits for you. That really sucks. Uh, special case decisions are probably better. That was kind of what I was thinking. Because you don't want them to lose the special either. That's the that's the other bit. <clears throat> oh my god. Whoa. How many grams is that? Five times 357. That's 1,785 grams. That's nearly two kilos of bean boozled jelly beans for 160 bucks. I mean, it's out of stock, but still. Good God. Good God. Um, well, after almost a year away. Hey, I hope you're enjoying it, Shay. Make the regime higher than like 50k. You need a cap on the number per stream, otherwise peeps like X and just spam them. Hey Rain, what's that add-on for the timers for the world boss? World boss timers. It says it in the head of the like that that word there. World boss timers is the name of the add-on. Welcome on in Rain. Hope you're having a lovely day. When Killy kills a thousand grams, yes, there's nearly two kilos of beans for 160 bucks. Hey Keggy, welcome back. Miss my red pigtailed ref female dwarf hunter. <laughs> Well, I hope you have a wonderful fun time. Oh, excuse me. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, it has been a day. It has been a day. Is fear tight? Yeah, honestly. There are, there are, there are few days where it has been more true than it has, than it is today. It's just, oh goodness. It's been really full on, really full on, but that's, it's okay. Look, it, it happens every so often. Um, I just wasn't really prepared for it to be like, usually if I can see that I've got a really hectic day coming up, I can sort of pre-prepare and pre-prepare for it all. But today just sort of jumped on me out of nowhere. All this stuff that I wasn't anticipating to happen just kind of happened and I was like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to bed this evening. That is for certain. Oh, excuse me. Shah time. Shah time. But I hope you're all having a much better day than I am. Wonderfully smooth and happy and all the stuff. All the stuff. Yes, bring your rage to bear. Try to strike me down. There's the cash. And home we go. On to the next tune. On to the next tune. <clears throat> you had a rough day? Oh, it wasn't necessarily rough, it was just big. Exhausting. 
But it's fine. I'll survive. I have thus far. Uh, Alright. Coconut or spoiled milk? I don't like spoiled milk beans. They're gross. Mm, I'm needing a stiff drink kind of day. No. Absolutely not. Had the opportunity to. Had the opportunity for cocktails. Add a mocktail. Um, nah. Nah. I need all my wits about me for some stuff that needs doing after stream. <laughs> Wait, Illidan before puppy preschool. Illidan is a puppy, not a kitty. Good. Gosh, I'm so sorry. I have a terrible memory. Uh, 11 kilos. He was 10 last week. I'm not prepared. <laughs> Spoiled nuts of cocoa milk. Cocoa milk is delicious. Spoiled nuts, not so much. Nuts go rancid because of the fat content. They go bad like fat goes bad. It's nasty. <laughs> oh my goodness. I see me out of way. I was gonna say, your bean odds aren't on point today. No, they're terrible. Um, playing Tag of Fall again, Elder Scrolls, too good lord, 90 centers. That is great, but dang it, if I hear bear roars and bat squeaks tonight in my sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've certainly been one to have, um, video game sound effects pop in my dreams, or like when I'm just, as I'm falling asleep, hearing it and thinking it's coming from the lounge room or something. Yeah, no, I've absolutely been in that boat before. <laughs> Uh, I spoke about in a bag. I have you. Yep. Yep, they go rancid. They are not delicious. Oh. What's going on there? I know what's going on outside. It's a bloody dirt bike. Um, there's a person who lives nearby here who thinks a dirt bike is a motorbike. It's not. Spoilers. Um, it's extremely loud. I actually saw them driving it the other day and it is actually a dirt bike, not a, uh, not just like a, a motorbike with some weird thing on the back of it. Ugh. Uh, Mum has a few macadamia trees. Uncool when they go bad, I can imagine. Enjoy your luck, Dunno. Enjoy the movie too. Thank you for the well wishes. And yes, already kicking goals for raising funds. We're going pretty well, I reckon. Going pretty well. We'll see what the rest of the stream has to offer. Uh, I play and solve game issues in my sleep. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, I mean, turn off all the other senses and your brain starts solving puzzles, hey? Oof. I feel like I need, I don't know, something. A bottle of Coke or something. <laughs> Mm. How long have we got on Shah? Six minutes until Shah's spawn window begins. Um, vodka? N no. <laughs> Alcohol is a depressant. It will put you to sleep. Um, that's what I'm trying to avoid is the sleep thing. Chair stream. Uh, chair stream might be a good idea, actually. Go grab myself a, a cup of something to wash out the, the jelly bean taste from my mouth. We've got five minutes. I will be back shortly. Run away, little girl. Run away.
Y'all have fun with the sound effect. Ah, <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> cool down. Uh, it's redeemed value, but it worked. Need to change the bot message for that, I think. Uh here we go. Extensions. Thank you for Let the biddies. Me with my sources. No. Yeah, I think that's... Okay, that should have fixed the message for when they go red. Should. I don't know. We'll find out next time! Thank you very much for the video shoes. Shumiri's quest just in place paladins. I think we all guess what Sakuma was playing on repeat in my head. Yes. I've just knocked lights. I have. A really good job of knocking the lights off. That, please. Please stay. There we go. Ah, oh, dearie me. Hmm. So, how was everyone's day? How did we go? You all know about how my day went. How did your days go? E? Yeah, that's about right. That's about the sound I was making for most of today, I think. Ooh. I am so sorry for all the yawning. I am, um... Usually I'm okay. Usually, I mean, I get a bit tired towards the end of stream, but usually I'm okay. Um, 
this just feels like next level. My apologies. First day back with kids! Yay, Reedy! Fantastic. I'm so glad you had fun. I've been watching Dance Mums? Oh my god. Where do you watch it? Because it keeps popping up in my Reddit feed. And I feel like I need to watch it. I've been... Do I admit to this? I think I already have. I've been binging Real Housewives of Georgia on Netflix. Oh my god. All of these problems would be solved if you all just sat down in a room and let each other speak and actually genuinely communicate. Like, my god. Holy cow. Uh, entire day in least group meeting class, my team ignore my office forty message me constantly. Perfect. <sighs> On Amazon Prime. Ooh, okay, I don't have Amazon Prime. I have been thinking about it though. Maybe I'll just have to bite the bullet and go get speak my throw shoes at each other. Oh, they're just I don't I don't understand. Wish it was on Netflix, honestly. Yeah. Look, there is... There... I feel like there is a really good point to having multiple streaming platforms. And it's so that there's this competition thing, you know? So that they, they fight with each other to keep prices low and all that kind of stuff. Like, as low as possible to encourage them to be the one that you go with. But... It also doesn't work very well when they've all got different products on offer. If they were all offering the same products, then yeah, you'd, like, you'd, you'd actually, so you'd go with one that had better customer service or had a better price or had, um, you know, the, rele the releases came faster or you, like you, I feel like there'd be something like that that you'd be able to rely on, but that's not how it's working now. Instead of, instead of paying to the specific company that you want. It's you're paying for the shows that are on all the different platforms and it's just, yeah. There are there are pros and cons to the whole system. I love teaching overwhelming admin requirements that destroy us. Yeah, I, I've heard that that is a thing. Ah, uh, to be honest, Netflix is a dying thing now. Netflix keeps shooting itself in the foot. They do, they have been making some questionable choices. I have been making some questionable choices. It seems like the really big downturn started with that Cuties movie, though. Um, which is, like... It's interesting, though, because that movie... What, didn't it win a whole bunch of awards or something? Like, it was for a, it was for a, a film festival, like a little film festival. And it, it did quite well or something. I think there was, obviously it was controversy, but it had a really good message and stuff. The problem is Netflix is not exactly an art house platform. It's not like, I mean, yeah, occasionally you'll get like this little indie film that goes on to Sundance or something and then explodes and become this massive worldwide sensation, but it's not often. It's not often. And so a lot of people, like they didn't, dig deeper to see what the point of the movie was and even then even if that was the point of the movie and it was valid it didn't really convey that very well either so it kind of yeah the whole thing just kind of went bang and then since then it their, their numbers have just been dipping and dipping and dipping and then because the numbers dip they have to make a choice to cut some things and then that makes the numbers dip more and then they have to make a choice to cut some things and then the numbers dip more like it's just a vicious cycle Ah, uh, vicious cycle. Be all Disney one day? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, compete on content, not price. That's a problem, yeah. That's the biggest problem. Uh, I still have to own physical DVDs. I think of them like books. Fair enough. Fair enough. Miss all my box sets. Uh, I might have started them cracking down, trying to stop account sharing. Is digging them way down. Yeah. But, like... It's gonna, it like, it's it's gonna happen eventually on all the platforms anyway. Like, it's just that Netflix has been around the longest, and so it's having to kick in now for them. There, there's a there's a finite market, and especially after the pandemic, like at the beginning of the pandemic, there still weren't very many platforms that were well established yet, and Netflix was like the big thing, and so the market they they user numbers it was saturated. There was a nowhere to go for them but down. Because anyone who actually did that kind of at-home watching of stuff, they already had Netflix. The only way for them to increase those sub numbers is to prevent people from account sharing. They should have been doing it from the start, but they didn't. Imagine 
<laughs> I used to really enjoy what using Netflix. Now I don't use it. Fair. Fair enough. Um, I do use it. I use it a lot. Um, I, I'm absolutely curious about things that are on the other streaming networks and platforms and stuff, but there is so much on Netflix that I haven't watched and things that have piqued my interest that, that I've kind of gone, ooh, that looks good, and then but I haven't watched it yet. I've got enough on Netflix that I don't need another platform. I just don't need one. Uh, on to the next one. <clears throat> I don't know why more companies don't have family plans, to be honest. Family plans should be the way to go. Family plans should absolutely be the way to go. Um, without this whole, you must be in the same household and blah, 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 blah. Like, having it be a little... So, with the thing, the thing with Netflix is that they let you have as many... From the beginning, it was one fee and you could have as many profiles as you wanted so that your viewing preferences didn't infect the other people's and stuff. I understand where they were coming from with that, but what should have been done is you get it's a $7.99 subscription with one profile. You want to add another one? It's a dollar ninety nine. You want to add another one? It's another dollar ninety nine. You want to add another one? It's another dollar ninety nine. And then you end up with four profiles for for you know if we're looking at the the family, mum, dad, and a couple of kids kind of thing. And then you're paying what's what's that? One ninety nine times four plus seven ninety nine. You're paying fifteen ninety five. That's a Netflix sub. That's exactly a Netflix sub. And so, if you've got four friends that are all sharing one Netflix account, you get that money from them, and they split it as they already are, or maybe they've just got one each and they all share or whatever, but you've still worked your way up to that price point with having that many, do you know what I mean? Like, that just makes so much more sense to me. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a business person, so there is that. Uh, right, so I have to go to... I don't know. I should just got a do wish. There's more companies doing pay this much extra and don't get ads. Discovery Plus is that feature and it's so great. Don't get ads. But I don't get ads on Netflix. At Netflix are looking at doing a free tier that is subsidized with ads. What do you mean that has no ads? Like, why the hell is anyone paying? for a thing that is also subsidized with ads. That shouldn't exist. Um, think about DVDs or CDs versus books. Books are much more tactile. You interact with them physically to get the content. Final records of some of that, but CDs and DVDs, not so much. For some people they do though, Jeff. For some people they like having the spines um, along the wall kind of thing. And that's the tactile thing for them. It's being able to pull the book out of the, the front cover and then flip through it. Or having the, the you know director's commentary or whatever on a separate disc or whatever it happens to be, um, just because it's more tactile to you uh, doesn't mean that it's not to others. And also the whole um, like sometimes tactility—that's not a word—isn't what people are after. They just like having the display on the shelf of of their passions and the things that they like, um, and that's okay. to get me my arrow. There we go. And we're going to do battle. And why would you battle? Um, so reasons that you should be... Let me start that whole thing again. There are a few reasons why you should consider supporting the Panquan Network. Here are a couple. Uh, they're making a genuine difference by cre conducting critical yet severely underfunded research uh, towards the treatment of pancreatic cancer. They are specifically looking at treatment uh, and it is it is critical research because without that research, the survival rate will stay where it is, um, uh, and and that's not okay. Eight percent is ridiculous. That's that's not okay, uh, and it is severely underfunded because, as I mentioned at the start of stream, it's definitely not one of the sexy cancers. It's not one of the visible. I know, like I know that's an oxymoron, but um, it's it's not a vis uh, not a highly visible thing. It's also not something that people survive with very long and so there isn't that time to like talk about how this person has that particular cancer and and 
help them raise funds for it. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not super highly visible. Uh, not as much as it should be at the very least. Uh, little Funk, Neke, Bad, Meaty, Silver, and Kata, congratulations to all of you on your bonus shit. Well done. Um, nobody should have to tell a loved one that they only have a short time to live. It's not, like, when we were mentioned before, again, that when somebody is diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, they're not given, like, you, you have X years or, or even months. A lot of the time it's you have this many weeks left. Weeks. And that's not okay. That's just, it's just so not okay. Not only is it obviously jarring for the person being diagnosed, but looking at the people left behind, you get that diagnose and then the decline and then that's it so quickly that there's not enough time to spend time with the loved one, but also prepare for the inevitability that they're going to leave. And so you end up with, you know, wills that maybe weren't done because it happened all so quickly. You have funeral costs and funeral to plan that you, you never even thought, like, you know, a month ago, four weeks ago, you may not have been thinking about that for 40, 50 years, and all of a sudden, bang, there you are. Like, it, it's not just the fact that the survival rate is so low, it's that it happens so quickly that it just, it, there isn't even a time for the ripple to go through the loved ones. It just, smack, and that's it. Deal with it, and that's horrible. Utterly, unbelievably horrible. Um... The mortality rate is currently 93%. Uh, also, you should support the Panquan Network because cancer sucks. As, as Dupe so eloquently said, duck cancer. Yeah, it's, um, that's, that's basically, that's it, hey. That's it. <sighs> it's a big thing. Ah, uh, another time for rain. Uh, this one is going to either be Booger or Juicy Peach. I hope that it's Juicy Peach, personally. It was not. Oh, God. Oh, it's so bad. Oh. Ugh. Uh, although the solution is not to stop sharing, but adding a fee for those who do. It should have originally been built into their pricing tiers. Like, honestly, it, sh it should have originally been built in. Um, but what do I know? Ah, uh, DVD covers are so pretty, though. Uh, they did that fee structure with device numbers, not profiles. Ah, okay. Chaos! Thank you so much for your donation! And Yuri as well! Thank you for your donation too! Thank you both for such generosity. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Both Chaos and Yuri. Lovely, lovely humans. Let's beat cancer. Amazing. Go, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for your donations. Um, device numbers, not profiles on the first day. See, that's my issue with that is that I use my, my profile on my computer, on my tablet, and on my phone, but it's all me. I feel like if they did it with profiles, like not saying you're wrong, like I obviously you're stating a fact and that's... Um, like I feel like if they had done it with profiles instead and made it a low enough addition to the cost. Cause like, firstly, like if you're, um, obviously you could just go down to one profile and not pay any extra and do that. However, if you have different enough tastes or like you're trying to watch the same thing, but it, and then you can also do it like you can only view it on, you know how if you have certain plans and you start watching it on too many devices, it's like you can't watch this because you're already watching this here and this here. So you can't watch this here as well. Yeah. So um, if, if you only had the one profile and it was limited to one device at a time, because it makes sense, one person is one profile and one person can only really watch one thing at a time. 
I know we can, we, yeah, but still that's, you know, logic here. Um, so, I mean, yes, you'd have to obviously take turns in, in using a singular profile and you'd also like, if you're both watching the same show, you'd like miss where you're up to and all that kind of stuff. I think it would be inconvenient enough that people would be willing to pay a little bit extra for another profile and something like $1.99 or $2.99 is low enough that people will just be like, oh yeah, no, that's fine. Let's just, let's just go with that. But enough that it matters in terms of their revenue. But I, again, I, I don't know. I don't work for Netflix and I, I never have and I don't think I ever will. Um, but yeah, there you go. Might be an American Canadian difference. Uh, I'm not sure what that's in reference to, but that's okay. Uh, hello, Yari. Welcome to chat. Only Prem is a big corporate of ads during shows. But you pay for it. Why would you have ads? Free to air TV has ads so that they can use the ad revenue to keep the lights on. If you're paying, your money is supposed to keep the lights on. That's bad. And Netflix has an ad. Like, if you finish watching the entire movie or an entire series, not even a season, if you watch the entire series and there's no more episodes, it shows an ad for something else on the platform to keep you watching. But it doesn't show you an ad for Wheat Bix. Like, that's ridiculous. I disagree vehemently with that. That's ridiculous. Um... Better reminder. Yes, I knew. I was just getting to it. Uh, tons of DVDs and CDs. Just thinking this past weekend about how I never watch the DVDs anymore. There you go. Interesting. Well, it could be an opportunity for you to, to do a bit of a clean out or have them as an art piece sitting on the shelf. Might have to dust them occasionally, but I mean, you do with most art. I have zero ads during shows on Prime. Tactility relating to involving a perceptual sense of touch. Oh, it is a word! Go me! I love that, Yori. Thank you so much for confirming. That's awesome. Love my Mashbox set. I had to track down one of only two in Queensland for sale to get it. Thank you, Zam, for dropping the link. Much appreciated. Uh, so if you do want to donate today to Pank1, you can wait for Qualitron to post it. It's going to post every half an hour, roughly. You can type exclamation Pank1 or exclamation Tiltify to get the link. That QR code up in the corner there, covering the minimap, if you scan that with your phone, it'll take you to the donation link. And if you scroll down underneath the channel, there is a purple and yellow panel. It's the very first panel. And that one will also take you to the donation link. They all go to the same place. There is no difference between any of them. Uh, but it's so that, depending on what is easiest for you, however you're watching currently, there are lots of different ways uh, to get that link. Excuse me. Never read physical books anymore. I still love books. Some books have been around for much longer than optical media. They have. Books smell better than CDs too. Is that it? Just personally. I think books smell better than CDs. I got my first new book in a really long time recently. And it was a gift from Kay, one of you guys. Um, we had it listed on throw. It was suggested by Kay and then Kay also bought it for me. It's a Sylvanas book. And I started reading it over the weekend, and then this week has just exploded. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, it's not going to get any better, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. We have another American thing there, and we get hella ads. It feels like watching cable TV. Yeah, see, back, we have, in Australia, we have Foxtel, which was pay TV. So in Australia, we've got free-to-air TV, uh, which basically, if you're building or you you have an antenna on the roof, or whatever, and the electricians and whatnot put an antenna plug in the thing, you connect your TV to the the antenna plug, uh, and you watch television. There are there are things available, and it's free. Um. Then so it's free to air, yeah. Uh, and then you've got uh, pay TV. We called it pay TV. I believe it's the same concept as cable over there, but I could be wrong. I'm not really sure exactly what cable entails but we have Foxtel uh, in Australia which um, is uh, look the popularity is waning but that's good uh, so you pay a monthly fee and you get these channels uh, they have packages of extra types of channels so like you get the base package and that's your Foxtel package uh, and then you can get like you can add sports channels and it has like five or six pure sport based channels uh, and then there's another one that's like movies and it's just all movies, movies, movies all the time. Then there's like a kids package that has like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network and, and all those kids. I'm sure that those two are still around. 
um, but like kids stuff. And then there's like entertainment, which is like Fox 8, where The Simpsons has shown a whole lot, those kind of films. There's like sci-fi channels and blah, blah. Like there's all these different packages with different channels in them. And you can kind of add what you want for an extra X amount of money per, like, and some of them were more expensive than, some of the packages are more expensive than others. Pretty sure the sports package was pretty expensive because people would usually sign up for it for the three months that covered the season of their sport and then cancel it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's Foxtel. Um, and Foxtel back when I was, uh, like single digits, maybe a little bit older, but mostly, mostly just single digits. Um, uh, they had ads but it was always ads for either another show on the channel you were watching. Like, you know, stick around later tonight. Like if it was at midday, 5 p.m. tonight is such and such show. Um, or if they were having a special marathon event coming up, like there was going to be a whole long weekend where they were going to show back-to-back -back Simpsons, you know, for, for 48 to 72 hours or whatever it was, then there'd be ads for that. Uh, and then they started introducing ads for other channels. So if you had the kids thing and you were watching Nickelodeon, it would, oh my God, I'm a lucky trap. This is a lucky travel chain. God damn it. Um, so if you have, if you're watching Nickelodeon, they'd have some ads for Cartoon Network, you know, to, to show you what other things are on in your package. Um, uh, and then they started advertising stuff from other packages. So if you were watching the kids thing and one of the movie channels was having like kids movies at some point over the next weekend, they'd advertise that channel and say, you know, call your Foxtel representative to add this channel to your package kind of thing. Um, and then they started having actual ads that were paid by external companies to, and that's when I'm pretty sure their subscriber numbers started to drop off because they're like, I'm paying for this and I, and it's not cheap. Foxtel is not cheap. Uh, it's not a Netflix subscription. This was, a, and they would send you a physical box and a remote and all, like it was very expensive every month. Um, so uh, my dad had it, mum didn't. Quiz, oh my gosh. Thank you so much for your donation. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. Oh my, thank you. Thank you so much. Were you, was it starting to irritate you that it wasn't a round number? It, that's how I, everything has to be multiples of five. Is it <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. This is unbelievable, you guys. Okay, let me bump. There we go. Um, oh crap, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, where's... Open new, reopen close tab. There we go. Um, thank you so much, Quiz, for your generosity. Again, again. Goodness gracious me. Uh, okay, uh, I've heard of these ads. Definitely isn't a thing in Oz. Um, I'm not a fan of peaches, I take it. That was a juicy peach. Can you do Shah multiple times on one tune now? It used to be weekly lock. Nope, that's why I have 50 tunes. 50 tunes, 50 characters versus Shah. I've got a whole account full of characters. Matrix, sorry it's taking me so long to respond. Uh, I was obviously having a bit of a, a chat, <laughs> a bit of a rant. But yeah, I have I have 50 characters. Um, so I'm doing Shah once on each of them. In uh, They just all happen to be on the same mount. Welcome on in, Matrix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, I thought they had the tiers of limited to number simultaneous streams. They do, but they're cracking down on account sharing. Whereas they could have just monetized account sharing by like saying you can have one profile and then for every additional profile you want to create, it'll bump your subscription up by $1.99 a month or something or two ninety nine or something like that. So for the moment, no need to apologize, Chaos. Oh my God, don't be silly. Don't be silly. So we can look, ah, uh, they're not simultaneous. And passed away 12 years ago from pancreatic cancer. Thank you for fundraising. Oh, Yori, I'm so sorry for your loss. The ah! Northy, thank you so much for your donation. Thank you for the generosity. Thank you for being here, Yori, and thank you for supporting me and helping me get to this position where I can use my platform to do good things like this. Much appreciate you as well. Ah, uh, simultaneously using devices. It was one, two, or four, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, someone who, and that's still a thing as far as I remember. 
Uh, as someone who survived cancer, cancer research is very important to me. I can imagine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ah, uh, like Steam sharing. Yeah, well, it just that just boots you off. If the if the account holder like that owns that game. Ooh. Yari with the gifted sub. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Very kind of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, Steam sharing is a bit different because it's not a subscription. Because it's not a subscription, you're purchasing a game and then you're lending that game to somebody. But then as soon as you want to play it, anything in your library, it kicks them off kind of thing. So it's, yeah, a little bit different, but yeah. It is an interesting model. It does feel work for Netflix. Uh, you could use 10 devices, it's just only one, two, or four at once. Ah, yeah, so maybe husband, brother, and mom could all watch on whatever dice we wanted at that time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like if they, and I know that they had that on different tiers, but if they only, if, if you scaled it back and set the number of devices you could use simultaneously to the number of profiles you have, but then charge for additional profiles beyond the first one, that, I think that would be, like, maybe it might help, you know? I don't know. It just, it might be a better business plan for them. Uncertain. I don't have access to the numbers. Books on the shelves and said, you could. You absolutely could. Hey, Zarin. Everyone's doing well. Very well. Thank you very much. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm not sure what I hate more, ads on websites or pop-ups asking me to disable my ad blocker to view content. Yeah, look. I understand that they need to, like... So with, with the ad blocker thing, if a website uses noisy ads, then they're asking for it. That's, like, first, first and foremost. Do not make ads make noise. Piss off. Um, but beyond that, if they're providing content for free, they have to pay for server hosting somehow. So I kind of get the ads from there. But, like, yeah, it's uh, kind of irritating. And you click fantastic. Wonderful. Bought a series because of TikTok. Still need a reader. I'm very excited to start one day. One day. Just wanting to get the chair off my reading nook. Beautiful. Amazing. Sorry, getting spam texts. It's great. Okay. Um, Fox of these days probably as bad as free to air for ads. Paper TV still hear about the British Sham Well. Do you hear about Wow Sham Well? Fox Hell. <laughs> Time for a new goal. Indeed it is, Quiz. Look at you go. My goodness. Hi, the this. Sun Well. Ah! HLW, thank you very much for the resub with your Twitch Prime. Much appreciated. So generous of you. Um, I don't need more. It's just yeah, it makes me grind the enamel off my teeth. It's the cash train. Kevin the OSA is like that total rip off. Yeah. Huzzah. Huzzah indeed. Could you imagine if they made an old, made old world bosses a daily lockout? One day I, my brain would break and I'd be like, yeah, let's just do it every day until it drops and then I'd die and it'd be fine. It'd be fine. So we're going to wait on Timeless Isle. Hey, a nurse. I've been around much lately. Writing's been intense. It, that's a, I feel like that's a good thing though. Like you're get, you know, you're making progress, you're getting there and you haven't wanted to be distracted. And I respect that. I respect that. Carpet your catio. Don't, it can't show Netflix, but Google Play Music, ad for YouTube and Disney Plus, we totally do. I have a fear, what if I want to find hot single mums in my area? Then turn off your ad blocker, clearly. Get there with a sign like normal people. Videos and autoplay on new sites. Yep, agreed. Hi Jack, how you going? How are you going? What shits me about ads is when I scroll down and have to scroll again because the ad's jumping around miraculously. Yep. It's especially bad on mobile, I've found. Like, it's so bad on mobile. Hype train. Yeah, we've got 30 seconds to trigger a hype train, but that's okay. Focus is a little bit different today, but that's okay. I'm not going to ignore it. Scroll up and your ad is loaded. Push stuff around. Yeah. Worst ads are on mobile. Strongest microscope to even see the X button. And God help you if your fingers are any thicker than a toothpick. In my opinion. 
Gonna find me a boyfriend free girl. What? <laughs> I am confused. Hey, please God, the one person understand that reference. I do not understand that reference. I apologize. I apologize. Oh, goodness. There is no God for this. Nope, that's just you. Oh, shot time. Every time I hear myself say shah time, even if I think shah time, I get that that um, sound effect from Mario Party in my head. Charts time! Yeah, when you like land on a chance space and they bring up the boxes and yeah. Yeah. My humor is wasted here. Not all of it, just the highly specific references. <laughs> This doesn't make you think of bubble tea. No, but that does. Stop being such a niche meme. Don't say it too fast or we'll hear shot time. That's not very good. Hey, Ventu, how you going? Oh, I go to SHA256. What is that? I know, I know it's a reference, but what's it a reference to? I don't know that one. But I don't know most of them, to be totally fair. Be totally fair. Analog woo, fantastic. Encryption standard. Ah, okay. So it's not like a reference to a movie or show. It's a reference to an industry thing. Yep. Good. I, yes. <laughs> Good! Thank you for educating me. I will not remember this. Bean time. Chocolate pudding or canned dog food? A shocker. Hmm. I'm so playing TBC and I like it. Ah, oh, nice. I'm so glad to hear that, Ventu. Enjoy. More of a hash function, but yeah, used for encryption. Noted. Algorithm. Uh huh. I was gonna say if you just lower your pudding standards. No, I refuse. <laughs> How dare you even suggest that as a possibility? How dare? I wonder if I'll get all the different transmog before I get the mount because there's so much transmog. Let's just find a proto Drake. Okay. Oh, they got a. Actually, it seems to work fine if I type it correctly. All right, so blue. Green, Ironbound, Red, Rusted, Time Lost, Violet. I think I like the Ironbound best today. Just today. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I keep bell. I haven't chosen for years and on ashes. No, that was the mount that was chosen last stream. Because I haven't played since I last streamed. <laughs> uh, and like two more transmogs from Shah. I need a whole lot, but I think it's because there's like cloaks that all share appearances. Like if I... <clears throat> uh, so what does it say? Dungeons and Raids. Mop. World Bosses. Um, 
and then it's Shah of Anger. So this is this is all I need left, but that's um on that's warlock only, so if I go account mode. This will be a much bigger number. Ah! Oh. Plate mail, plate mail. So I actually need to hand in some of those claws of anger to get the okay, I can do that. I can do that. Because I've got them on like nearly every bloody tune. Um and then there's the cache that has a bunch of stuff in it that comes, so that's terrace. Um, that can drop directly from the world bosses, that one too, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that, uh, and then, okay. So, yeah, these share appearances with each other. All of them are, like, massively appearance sharing, as you can see, but it's your glad gear. It's your PvP gear. So it comes from Shah, but it also comes from Season 12. So I believe... Um, you can get them for, I believe some of them you can buy for, um, marks of what's it as well. But like all of those, like all of those cloaks show appearances and then there's the armbands. Um, and plates, um, plates, arm um, wraps, bindings, like a lot of those, if they're the same armor type, they'll look pretty similar, um, slash they'll share an appearance. That one is very, sp oh, cause that one can also be bought from Town Long Steps. Okay. So yeah, once I do get the mount, I can absolutely go and buy most of these with Marks of Honor, I think. But yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Like, two more transmogs from Sha. You have a lot of PvP stuff to buy, though. Oh, I do. You are 100% correct. I just don't have the marks of honor to do it. <laughs> PvP doesn't exist, except when, when it's PvP. Uh, PvE. PvP only exists when it's PvE. <clears throat> Com comp stomp. Or if it's Ashran. I take Ashran, too. I'll accept Ashran. I swear to God, the next comp stomp's in June or July. It might be July. There it is. PvP comp stomp begins. It's in July. Halfway through July. I would like to have all my stuff done and finished so I can do a whole week of just comp stomp farming. Please and thank you. Three months, yeah. Yeah, if I can get on top of my shit and then just do nothing but comp stomp for those few weeks, like I, I will get so many marks of honor and I'll be very happy to do so. Hopefully eight comp stomps in an X pack. Yeah, every three months, yeah. They're good for, they're good for grinding that Renown up. And also doing the Renown kind of helps me switch tunes as well, like rotate through characters. And it, cause it all, like it all contributes to what's it, you know? You're on a level, which is now what, 24? Yeah! 24, baby! It's not bad. Get a title at 25, cause that's very important and definitely matters. Ah, the honor rewards list of honor rewards. Wow. Only 12 marks for all the appearances though. Yes, except it's 12 marks for all the appearances on all the different, like a lot of them were class specific way back in the day. And then obviously there's different um, like plate, metal, uh, plate, mail, leather, cloth, etc. So it's, it's a bit bigger than just kind of, but yeah, um, it is nice. It is nice. A lot of the sets don't include things like cloaks, though. And the arsenal's are like 80 marks rather than 12. Um, cough on a 14. Hey, we gotta start somewhere, meaty. We gotta start somewhere. <clears throat> okay, so... So 
So at five, we got the dutiful squire, dutiful gruntling. I have the gruntling. I don't think I've gone and bought the squire yet. Uh, on level 10 was the honorable pennant and your artifact appearance. Um, on a 15 was the prestigious bronze courser, which is a mount, which I have. On a level 20 was the alliance enthusiast and the horde fanatic. Uh, I got the horde fanatic. I am yet to purchase the alliance enthusiast. Um... Uh, then Honor 25, which is the next one, is the Honorable Fiamma. Uh, then Honor 30 is the Prestigious Pennant, plus your second PvP Artifact Appearance. 40 is a mount. 50 is a title, and your third PvP Artifact Appearance. 60 is the Pennant. 70 is a mount. Um, both of those, the Ivory Corsa and the Azure Corsa, are both in my top four by percentage at the moment. I think, oh, unless that's changed. They were in my top four. I hate it. They're both on the first page. 80 is the Unrelenting, uh, is a title, and, and your fourth artifact appearance. 90 is the Esteemed Pennant. 100 is Fiamma the Unstoppable Force. 125 is the Prestigious Forest Corsa. 150 is the Prestigious Royal Corsa. 175 is the Glorious Pennant. Honor level 200 is a title, Fiamma, Bound by Honor. Tw honor 250 is the prestigious Midnight Corsa. Honor 300 is Fiamma the ta Tatistician? No, Tactician. Um, and then Honor 400 is Sir Snips or Bucket Shell, they're pets. Uh, and at 500, you get the prestigious Bloodforged Corsa. I hate that it jumps from 250, like 300, 400, 500. It would take you forever. Uh, great Neke, Zam, Fort, Aelin, Mart, Zem, and Zombie. Congratulations to all of you on your bonus shit. We'll start a new battle, and we're also going to talk a little bit more about pancreatic cancer and the talking points I have for this half hour block. Uh, celebrities that have passed away because of pancreatic cancer. And I didn't know some of these. So that's a thing. Um, barbarians and busters. Can I place a barbarian again? I can. And if you've got any to add to this list, like if you know of, of people that others would know who have passed it, who, who died from pancreatic cancer, that's uh, like, yeah. Um, real cases, real people, Judge Fiamma. Funny you should say that, Nano, because the first person on the list is RBG. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the US Supreme Court Justice and icon. Uh, as it says on my list, which she was absolutely an icon. Uh, she she fell prey to pancreatic cancer. So there you go. You got a skin! Yay, Ali! Well done! Fiamma the Unstoppable Force does sound great. The Honourable Fiamma Judge Lady. Yep. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I've been working towards 15 for years now. There you go! But hey, that's fine. You got there. You got there. A couple of pets in there as well. There are. Absolutely are. Those are like the Alliance Enthusiast and the, the very one, the first one at Honour Level 5 is a pet. Um, and then yeah, at Honour Level 400. Um, guy in Comstomp this week had 436 on a level. Holy cow. One day. Many decades from now. One day. Uh, when did you start doing the per half hour topics? I've been doing it all stream, actually. Um, every time we have a battle come up, I'm using it as a reminder to do the talking points. Because I will forget otherwise. Uh, so, RBG. Alex Trebek, the host of Jeopardy, uh, was, fell prey to pancreatic cancer as well. Uh, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Uh, the note here says actor who played Professor Severus Snape in Harry Potter, but I mean, obviously he did so, 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 so much more than that. Uh, Alan Rickman. Uh, that's why, that's why he left us. Uh, Steve Jobs, Patrick Swayze, and Sally Ride, who was the first American woman in space. Uh, they all died from pancreatic cancer, which is horrible. Maybe some of those people would still be with us if we were able to get some of this research done and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, there you go. F indeed. A uh, large amount of the massive honor level people kind of semi-cheated at the start of BFA. Yeah. Yeah. Pain cancer is incredibly hard to detect. Correct. Absolutely, yeah. Paying respect stream is fine. I figured as much. Thank you, Duke, for the confirmation. But, um... Yeah, it is, it's incredibly hard to detect because there are no symptoms uh, for the first couple of stages 
Um, and the, the later stages, the symptoms are things like weight loss and lack of appetite, uh, which can be caused by so many other far less nefarious things like stress. You know, um, so it's incredibly hard to detect. It's incredibly, like people don't know what's going on because they can't see it. Uh, and by the time the stuff is seriously wrong enough to be causing them concern and going and getting tested, it's too late. Uh, and this contributes to the fact that when people are diagnosed, they're often given weeks to live rather than months or years. Uh, and the five year survival rate is 8%. But we're trying to change that. That's all obviously very somber topics, as you know, as it should be. It's it's a very serious topic and needs to have this discussion and spread the word and all that kind of stuff. But um, we also need to get shit done. Basically, we need to we need to get this research happening, uh, get it funded, and fix this because eight percent is just it's ridiculous and that survival rate hasn't changed very much at all in the last 40 years the survival rate today in 2022 is the same as it was roughly as in 1982 what like that's unbelievable yeah it's it's horrendous so let us take this moment to you know switch it to a, a happy happy track to like the amount of people today who have look at this Look at this! What is this? Thank you so much to everyone who has been able to donate today and, and who has done so. Um, thank you to everyone who has told all their friends and, and tweeted about it or posted on Instagram or on Facebook or wherever wherever you contact your people. Uh, Discord servers and stuff, reaching out to them. They don't have to come join the stream if they don't want to. I mean, if they want to, that's great too. But if they don't, it's okay. You can absolutely just drop them the donation link. And, uh, and they can jump straight through there if they so choose and if they're able to and all that kind of fun stuff. Mm, not to mention that weight loss is understandable if there's a lot of loss of appetite. Exactly. They kind of go hand in hand. Uh, I remember when Grays was a person who believed they were cursed with bad luck, even had the ceiling cave in on them during surgery. But through that, they managed to find his pancreatic cancer. Jesus. <laughs> TV. <laughs> Can't be 100% sure, but I think it's a bar, Jazz. I swear to God. This is now why you're talking about pancreatic cancer. Yes, we're fundraising now. It's a charity stream for Pank One Network. Proudly fundraising for a bloody good cause. Welcome back, Panda. How is your food, question mark? Which god, along with the capital G or some other one? I don't know. All of them, all at once. Loudly. I could swear to Zeus, that'll really get you screwed. <laughs> Literally, probably. Anyway, um, moving on quickly. Uh, <laughs> uh, I presume you're not that one, they honestly are in the swearing overheard. Oh, mighty Warshan, please smite the pancreatic cancer. Yes, it was good. Wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. Brilliant news. Oh. Oh, my goodness. I'm fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> hmm. The biggest makeup yet. Uh, we didn't have any amount of makeup today because I've had uh, a day. It's been really, really big. Not not good or bad or any like it's it's been fairly neutral, but it's just been a really big day. Um, so I haven't uh, had time, and I had to like I was sitting there, and I'm like, do I get this done? And it really, really, really needs to be done, or do I stop what I'm doing and put makeup on? And I'm like no, I need to get this done. So I, I made the executive decision to not do makeup today. Um, I mean, I've got some on, uh, but I just put like a little bit on just to make myself not look too too dead. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, but that's okay. The game will be back on Friday. Obviously it's the 20 Wind Rider. Yeah, so I said that it, it's up to you. It can either be invisible uh, or the 20 Wind Rider. Your call. Oh, right. That's right. I was doing this thing. 
Reach out and claim your glory. Let's go by that. Um, oh, this is horse. So you look gorgeous, always. Oh, thank you, Vanda. You know, Elsa's big for his Instagram profile, or at least is about to be. You should totally check her Insta and leave a follow on the road to 1K. Look, it's, um, we're close. We're really close. Seven to go. 993. It's just ridiculous. Alright. Uh, upside down spectral terror wing. Okay, I like it. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Oh, oh goodness me. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really had much of a chance to do uh, anything today, so that's fun. <clears throat> so it's dangerous, you can pre-order Uber Eats for some restaurants, so it's just close to ordering green chicken for lunch last night. I thought you could pre-order for all- I guess maybe they're only, like, so you can do that for all restaurants. It's just a matter of how far in advance you're allowed to schedule it. But like, if you're on your way home from work or whatever, or, or you're sitting there in the last kind of 10 minutes of your shift, um, or like you're at home, but your housemates are on their way home and stuff, you can you can schedule dinner for like half an hour in the future or something like that. There have been a couple of times where we've gotten Uber Eats during stream and we've booked it in and paid for it and everything before stream, and then it arrives at around the 7.30, 7, 7.30 mark. Um, I'm pretty sure you can do that for all restaurants. I just don't know how many of them, like maybe some of them allow, like only allow it for a certain amount of time and not into the next day. But yeah, it's a really handy feature. Really, really handy. Uh, when they first started doing it, like I, the first time I did it, I think it ended up being delivered like straight away. And I was like, uh, but, um, but, so I stuck it in the oven and just, like, let it sit. <laughs> it wasn't as good. Uh, what's on the dinner menu tonight? Uh, I think it's steak. I think we're having steak, but, um, I'm, I had a very large lunch. <laughs> I'm not super duper hungry. Um, <laughs> I had a really big lunch. Uh, but, yeah, I'll probably have a much smaller dinner. It's the HSP that took one and a half hours to arrive. Yeah, yeah it does. Well, I'm tired. Totally okay, Panda. Not a worry. Not a worry. Oh, yeah, because I'm so... Uh, oh, excuse me. I'm so tired. Like, usually I'm okay at this time, but I think it was the really big lunch that's doing it, because I'm, I'm absolutely exhausted. Uh, but... That usually lowers my appetite a bit as well. So, yeah. Fish burgers. Ooh, yum. Waited two and a half hours for a hot dog and fries once. Yeah. I like, I would have maybe, like, not. <laughs> I would have called the restaurant or called Uber and just been like, uh, look, my food's still not here. Bugger this. Bugger this. Oh, crappy hot dog and fries the wrong drink. Yeah, that's, um, that's not okay. Uh, all right, peach or barf? It's no longer a hot dog. <laughs> Cold dog. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, the car will deliver it. Yeah. No. Nah. Reported. Refund. Go away. It took a little while. Yeah, I think I have my drink. So I've got, um, I've got a glass of water there, but I have like the, the apple cinnamon stuff in it because water tastes gross. Uh, and I think because I had some of that first and it's cold water, so it may I feel like I couldn't taste it properly. And then it hit me and it was gross. Oh, 
crunch. Crunch. I drove right up to near my driveway. I was standing outside waiting. He did a U-turn, then said my food was delivered. Yeah. <clears throat> That's, um... That's not ideal. I really hope when people get reported for that kind of stuff, they get like a warning and then if they do it again, they just get booted from the platform or something. I mean, I know that they need more drivers. Did you guys, so Queensland has a shortage of bakers at the moment. I don't know if it's Queensland or just, or like just Queensland or like the whole of Australia, but like bakers as in people who work in a bakery, there's a, ma there's a massive shortage of bakers currently. That's just, I, I, like, I wonder why there's a shortage of bakers in particular. It's a really interesting thing to be short on. It's interesting. Um, I was living my work at a hospital. They dropped a plane brand bank, so the maintenance stores then booked it. Caused a bomb threat. Yeah. Uh, long hours. Yeah, but there are a lot of other jobs that have long hours as well. So it's got, it's got to be, there's got to be other things in combination with the long hours. Long hours, rough hours, you have to deal with self-entitled customers. Not always, not all bakers actually, like, deal with customers. Um, long hours, early hours, little pay. Is the pay really that bad, though? Like, if there's a shortage, you'd think that that would drive pay up. Bakery workers aren't necessarily bakers. I'm aware of that, but... The the specific sign said bakers. Uh, <laughs> um, so my local, one of my local Woolworths has no bread. I mean, not no bread. Ah, challenge complete, Zam. Good Lord. Challenge completed. Fantastic. Um, so my local Woolworths um, has about a tenth of the bread stock that they usually have. Um, and for a while now, it's kind of like, you know, apologies due to shortages. We don't have, you know, our full range available. We're working to get it available as soon as possible, blah, 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 uh, for a couple months now. And then when I went in the other day, they had a bigger sign that was like, actually like on the front rather than just kind of tucked into a thing. It was like labeled on the front and it specifically said, um, you, like, you may have noticed that we don't have our usual ranges. This is because there is a shortage of bakers in Queensland. Um, and it, like, we have, we have been searched, we have been actively hunting for qualified bakers since our last baker left the company in late January, and we haven't had any luck. If you or one of, you know, if you know anybody who is a qualified baker who is looking for work, please encourage them to apply at this link. You know, if you yourself are a baker and are looking for work, please talk to any of our staff, blah, blah, blah. Like, they were really, like... They need a baker. Like, this is not just, like, a bakery worker. They need bakers, specifically. Like, I, you didn't have the context, so you couldn't possibly have known what I was talking about, obviously. Um, but they are very specifically looking for actual bakers. There is a shortage of actual bakers, not just bakery workers. Um, so there you go. <clears throat> Interesting facts. Uh, Apprentice-wise, I can only assume... Um, increasing pay. What well, is a thing that happens, Nano? If there is a desperate need for a particular thing and there's not enough of those people in the country, they either raise like, wages or they bring people in internationally. At the moment, they can't bring people internationally. Like, you can lull all you like. It's an actual proven thing that works. Just not when they don't need to. If they can find a worker for it, why should they raise wages, you know? Like, it's from a business perspective. It works, though. Mm. Work at 4am sucks, plus government pull the guts out of the- Ah, that's- that there sounds like we're onto something. The government pulled the guts out of the TAFE apprenticeship system. When did they do that and what did they do? Where can I read about this? I can't wait for Dark Moon Fair! Yay, Rusty! Dark Moon Fair is fantastic and fun. Enjoy. Uh, so regardless of the reasons, it's actually huge and surprising to be that short of a trade. Yeah, and that's like, it's a trade. Like, trades don't usually get... And trades are pretty well paid, usually pretty well paid in Australia. 
because we rec we recognize that it is a highly specific skill that needs to be trained and all that kind of stuff. Like electricians get paid through the fucking nose. They get paid so well. Like it's re it's really good. You've just you've got to put the work in. You've got to go through the apprenticeship and all that kind of stuff. It takes a while to get there, but if you can survive the few years it takes, you make bank. You make I can only imagine it's the same for bakers, but I don't know. I could be wrong, obviously. Um, you could say they're really in need of baked jack. <laughs> oh, God. Um, thank you, actually, for the explainer. You're so welcome, Jeff. Not a worry at all. Yeah, when I read that, I was like, oh, I need to provide more context now. So, <laughs> yep. Thank you, thank you for pointing it out. Um, it's all about the right culture, it does work, the world. Uh, I guess it's usually the last resort. Plumbers too, oh, plumbers get really paid. Okay, cool, I wasn't sure about plumbers. I know about electricians getting paid really well. I wasn't sure about plumbers, so I didn't want to say it without having like the facts to back it up. But yeah, there you go, awesome. Uh, especially on mine sites, worked on mine sites for a decade. Um, mines, everyone on a mine is paid ridiculously well. Uh, everyone, no matter what you're doing, regardless of whether it's a trade or not. Um, I could go over there as an admin worker and be paid seven times as much as I'm being paid now. Uh, but I also wouldn't be able to stream. So <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do my passions and whatnot. Um, it's horrible, nicely done. Mechanics too. Trouble with apprenticeships, especially baking, is going to be so slow. Uh, I need to get a roll on and stop loafing around. Tape issues are caused by multiple years of funding cuts, usual issues with our tertiary education. Um... Apprenticeships Australia. Um, Australian government is funding free or low fee training courses across the nation for job seekers and young people, including school leavers through its job trainer fund. Australian government has partnered with state and territory governments to establish the $1 billion job trainer fund. Australian government will provide 500 million to the fund with match contributions from state and territory governments. That was a while back though. That was in 2020. That was, that came along with job keeper, job seeker, et cetera, et cetera. They also had job trainer to try to retrain people so that if the, if the industry they were working in completely shut down, the training was supposed to help them get into a different line of work so they could still work. Um, that was a long time ago, but yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what's the skilled migrants visa? I wonder. If the skilled migrants visa is still a thing. And what's on the list these days. Visa is for invited workers, eligible New Zealand citizens, eligible Hong Kong or British national overseas passport holders with skills we need to live and work permanently anywhere in Australia. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so it's very, very different nowadays. So New Zealand stream, you have to live in Australia for at least the last five years. Hong Kong stream, um, you obviously have to have a Hong Kong or British national passport. Um, visa requirements and residence requirements. But points tested was the old one. You used to, like, you used to, so you don't need a sponsor or a nominator but you have to be invited to apply. Um, so I imagine you flag yourself as someone who's interested and then maybe they invite you depending on your stuff potentially. Let's have a look. I wanna see the list of skilled what's it's. Skilled occupation list. Thank you, that's what I wanted. 
I had a lot of experience with this back, uh, actually nearly 10 years ago now. Um, I was doing a lot of research into visas um, and stuff. Stuff. Uh, social workers do delicate stuff too, but if a social worker makes a mistake, a person isn't usually killed on the spot or a whole neighborhood out of power. Yeah. It can la- it can- I mean, it's not immediate, but it can la lead to lifelong problems for m multitudes of people if a social worker boo-boos. Um, however, as we can- as we know from, you know, the Australian government, they don't tend to care if something's many years away. <laughs> they tend to focus on the here and now too much. Um, dumbass politicians doing the normal thing, not like education is important or anything. Yeah, if you educate the masses, just they'll uh, overthrow you because- they're smart enough to know that what you're saying is crap. <laughs> Honestly, though, anyone correct me, I can't imagine being a baker being on the same level as, say, electrician pay-wise. Being on where you're employed, what you're baking. Baker average salary. Australia. <laughs> uh, au.talent.com, indeed.com. Glass door. I reckon. Oh, hang on. Nap. No, seek. I trust seek. Uh, typical salary. Yeah, fifty-five k. Not that great. Typical salary is fifty-five k. You've got not many at all earning under fifty-five k. Um, you've got. A bunch 60k and then a few less at 65 70 and then not many but there are some at 75 but it usually ranges from 50 to 60. um in queensland specifically vast majority of them are on 60k vast majority um new south wales vast majority are on 60 with a good chunk on 70. victoria is mostly 55 wa is mostly 55 taz is mostly 60 SA is mostly 60, NT is 60, and ACT is 60. So no, not a, not the, not the six figures that uh, some trades get. But yeah, but if you are a morning person, and that's you know you like. I mean, I used to work at a place where I started work at four in the morning. And I did all like the opening stuff and the baking and I wasn't a baker, um, but it was like a cafe. So we had like pre-made stuff that I had to actually cook to put. So it was like freshly baked, you know, um, and did all that kind of stuff. And then I clocked off at like midday and I'd done my eight hours and I had the rest of the afternoon while all the stores were open, all the doctors and, and banks and all that kind of stuff. Everything was fine. It was re it was quite nice. Uh, obviously, now that I'm a bit older and I've definitely transitioned into my vampiric <laughs> sleeping patterns, not gonna work for me. But it is, honest to goodness, really nice to clock off at that earlier uh, earlier time, uh, especially once you get to the age like once you get out of the age where everyone's like partying and going out at night and all that kind of stuff. Once that's not so much a thing anymore, and you don't really care doing things in the afternoon with people and then going home and having an early night. It's, you know, <laughs> like rising and falling with the sun. It's pretty good for you. Pretty good for you. Okay, subclass 189. Let's have a look. Yeah, skilled up here. Ah, oh, right, okay, I see. Um, yeah, look down into that. Variation of it currently, at least. Hello, Lucky, doing very well. How are you? Oh my God, I'm right there. Death is real threat to electricians. Always getting it. of course. Electrician deals with super high voltage, as in I'ma kill you. High current voltage. Yeah, I assume there's some sort of stipend for danger pay, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, it's um, you get paid enough to pay attention. It's like um, dealers at the casino get paid enough so that they don't take bribes. It's like yeah, I mean, part of it is is the whole danger pay thing that also have quite interesting uh like life insurance policies and stuff like that but um it'd also be because of the amount of training you have to go through to ensure you don't kill somebody um you have to be compensated for that time and those skills as well um as in australia completely run by chinese companies and workers 
Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, seems like a rare few talk moment. Sounds fascinating. As an ex-electrician, stupidity is the only reason you die. We're extremely well trained in safety. Only times I was ever electrocuted was through poor choices. Yeah, but those, th that training, all that training, you've got to be compensated for that, you know? That's why, like, doctors and surgeons have such redonkulously high hourly rates, and, and lawyers too, is because they have all that training and knowledge behind them so that they can do their job just that effectively. Ah, uh, I have to love the work for that way. CT is a bit better, 70k good. The only people who electrocute are the new and the old. New because they don't know, old because they get careless with the dangers they face, didn't show up a diligence or respect. Uh, I'm on 24k on a pension. Uh, sleeping in this economy. Basically, yes. Moida, also such high premiums. Yeah, I imagine it'd be something that, but like, you know, you're also, you're paying the high premiums, but you're also getting paid, like, a bit. Um. <clears throat> um. So select visas. We want the 189 skilled independent. That's a temp, uh, it's a permanent one. Uh, accountant, general, actuary, aeronautical engineer, agricultural consultant, agricultural engineer, ag agricultural scientist, air conditioning and mechanical services plumber. You can come to Australia as an air conditioning and mechanical services plumber, air conditioning and refrigeration mechanic, analyst programmer, architect, artistic director. Interesting. Arts administrator or manager, audiologist, automotive electrician, barrister, biochemist, biomedical engineer, biotechnologist. Okay, this is gonna be way too long. Hey, wait, hang on, no, we've gone past B. Baker's not on the list. Baker's not on the list. There you go. That was a quick search. Okay, let's go. Listen, so physician job offer I saw was paying 15k a week. Oh, last on site. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'm good having some personal time to pick this board. Looking for some good vibes and comforting times. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. People try to make drama, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't have time for this. Have fun. Enjoy your discussion. Goodbye. Wait. <laughs> don't have time. Uh, right. The future of pancreatic cancer research. So at the same level of research that has resulted in substantial increase for the survival rates of prostate, breast, and skin cancer must be done for pancreatic cancer. This could potentially double its survival rate. Keep in mind it's already 8%, so double that is 16%. Still not great, but it's a big improvement. Um, so the research will be conducted by the Panquan Network, which is who we are donating directly towards. Uh, and this, the Panquan ne Network is an international coalition of hospitals, including John Hopkins, um, and they are working tirelessly to raise 10 million to fund the needed research. So overall, they need 10 million buckaroos, um, but they are, I think today's goal, or like this particular event's goal was, oh, I'm trying to find it now. I had it somewhere. There we go. Fundraising goal is 50k. Um, hello? Hello. What kind of tea would you like? What fruit ones do we have that aren't the ones that are... Are they all in the fridge, or is there... I know strawberries in the fridge, because we just cracked that one open. Only a grapefruit. Grapefruit? One of, the, one of the fruit teas that's already open would be great, but beyond that, I'm happy for you to pick if you'd like. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yep. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Okay, good. Get some concern sometimes. Thor, Zam, Fade, Mame, Demon, and Ally, congratulations to all of you on your bonus shit. Um, 
Yes. So, uh, yeah, uh, what they're doing. So this is, it's National Storytelling Day. Um, they're, they're coming together. It's National Tell a Story Day. It's a day each year where people of all ages are encouraged to share their stories, using this day to support those suffering and those we have lost to the world's deadliest cancer, pancreatic cancer. We want to take this day to give a voice to those whose stories ended too soon, to the families that lost a loved one to this death sentence, to the kids who didn't have their parents by their side at their wedding or watch them cross the stage at graduation. Um, we're dedicating this campaign to them with the help of talented storytellers in the Dungeons and Dragons online community and RPG streamers on Twitch, which is why they approached me because I play World of Warcraft, which is an MMORPG. RPG. Um, there. Um, so D and D GMs have an incredible talent for weaving, engaging narratives and bringing together other creators to be a part of the story. While RPG gamers emphasize video games as an effective and potent medium for storytelling, perfectly fitting the theme of the event. So that's what we're doing. Um, that's what we're doing here and now. And the fundraising goal overall for everyone as part of this is uh, is fifty thousand. Um, so it's not my goal, not just mine, but like everyone for this whole event. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, what was that? I missed something. That's fine. Um. Important to the future of the group. It's a difficult conversation to have. Oh, it's not necessarily drama then, but, um, you'll be right. Everything will be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, cancer is some big supporter. Yeah, right? That's, it's, yes. Specifically pancreatic cancer. Because the survival rate, if you're told today that you have pancreatic cancer, the chance of you living for another five years is 8%. Which is redonkulous. Absolute. Um. Is that... I just saw that pop up on my dashboard. Is it gonna... Where's my hand? Look, did you see that? Why did the alert not come up? I don't know why the alert didn't come up. Unless it was like a tick box saying, please do not play alert or something. Which, in which case, okay. Um, hi, Jess. Jess be like, make a decision. Yeah, you know, he knows I'm bad at making decisions, so it's fine. Um, more MMO than RPG. Yeah, yeah, it is. But they also do weave some incredible, amazing stories. I think ESO has a few streamers involved also. That would make sense as well. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Liv, welcome in. Hope you're having a lovely day. Yay, story time, really good cause. My dad has cancer and it's rather bad. It's a little more real than I can handle at the moment. Totally understandable, Lucky. Take care of yourself. It's a big important thing. Take care of yourself. Um. you be like, yeah! <laughs> sneaky donation is sneaky. Apparently. Apparently. I love how to support his little roof me. Totally okay, Lucky. Not a worry at all. You can take a nons. Maybe it doesn't show if you do. Maybe. I still have a name and a message and stuff. So I don't, I don't know, but, um, it's still, it's showing up elsewhere though as well, which is why it's a bit strange, but that's okay. Let us do this. What I might do is refresh it and see if that helps, but first. Let's refresh that. Come back in a second. There we go. I know sometimes those kind of integrations can time out and stuff, which is unfortunate, but it is a thing. But thank you so much, so much for that donation. Such generosity, such amazing. I am honestly blown away by you guys. This is beautiful and awesome and just great. And on his best. Goodness gracious. I'm so proud of you guys and I'm so proud, like, I'm, I'm so happy that this is the kind of community I've built. 
over these years, you know, that's just so awesome. So, so awesome. Makes me happy. <laughs> Makes me happy. Oh dear. I guess I should eat more beans, hey. Uh, okay, peach or buff? I'm muted lurking, feel like I'm unmuted. An emotional moment. It's this here, Red. This is why I'm a little emotional. Because, like... This is just awesome, you know? Just so, so, so awesome. Uh, people are opening their hearts and, and their wallets, let's be honest. And, um, and donating to such an awesome cause. Who donors for a good cause exactly absolutely you know like it can be really tough with um charity streams and stuff like that especially when it's a, a really difficult topic that can feel a little rough for some people um but then also like asking people to give money when i myself am in a, a sticky financial position currently um for anyone who's new here who's, who's lurking and doesn't know I have $23,000 worth of dental bills that I need to pay for. Um, so giving to charity is something I can't super afford to do really frequently, which I do feel quite bad about because there are so many amazing charities out there that I would love to support. And one day my, my dream is to kind of be comfortable enough financially that I can do that really regularly. One of my, one of my big dreams is running a, a don't like a charity stream like this. And at the end of the stream being like, oh, we've raised 2,000? Let me match that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that would just, being able to do that, oh, God. That would just feel so amazing. Uh, but unfortunately, not just yet. One day, but not yet. Um, so, yeah, when, when I can't really afford to, asking other people to feels... A little bit awkward sometimes but then you kind of realize that this this kind of a cause is just it needs that it needs somebody to stand up and and ask and say could you please help us we we need to we need to fix this egregiously wrong situation um and and so that's what i'm doing and and i'm so grateful that my community is the kind of people to step up and do it you know yeah <clears throat> Love to support. Get made redundant on Friday. Oh no, Red. I'm so sorry to hear that. Shit. I hope you're getting a decent package. God, that sucks. That really sucks. Ugh. Hmm. Beans really get do stuck in your teeth, hey? Ah, oh, this works really well. Moving away from the area in the next month anyway, we would have had to resign. Getting paid to leave is better. You are absolutely correct. That has worked out really well for you. That's awesome. Like, I I mean, it's obviously it's still not awesome, but um, I'm really glad that it's worked out that way for you. That's great. <laughs> Koalatron. Flexing on you with the with the timed message, Zam. <laughs> God, what are we on on Instagram at the moment? Nine ninety three, seven followers before I hit the big one k. <gasps> oh goodness gracious me! Oh, I also don't like the job. Really has all come together well. Holy cow! Well done, well done for getting the universe to to spin it in your direction. Nicely done. There. I haven't even looked at my to-do list for today yet because, uh, well, everything got a bit of a, a bit messy. So, um, hmm. Yes. Do that tomorrow. Oh, my day tomorrow is going to be, uh, 
it's 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 gonna it's gonna be unpleasant. Um. <clears throat> up tomorrow. It'll pop up tomorrow. Has all that. Has all that. Not gonna do that this week at all. Or that. Don't have time for you. Goodbye. Uh, all right. What have I got tomorrow? <sighs> God damn. Uh, hmm. I'd ask if anyone wants to be my assistant, but I don't have money to pay you, and people deserve to be paid what they're worth, so... Uh, um, <clears throat> everything's fine. <sighs> oh, lordy. Huh. <laughs> Saturday's gonna be catch-up day. Sunday is the 1st of May, right? Sunday? Okay, so I have till Saturday to get half this stuff done. More than half. Um, uh, can I ask what the add-on is for the world boss timer? Um, do you see what it says in the headline there? Or is it's world boss timers? That's what the add-on's called. I don't think I can meet the exacting standards you set. Not many people could. Like, just, just being, like, brutally honest, not not many people could. The, like, I'm not going to be like, here, do my Twitter, and then just, like, no, absolutely not. Um, Like, if I was going to get someone, let's, like, talking about social media in particular, if I was going to get somebody to help me with my social media, firstly, the platforms that I use, you can, um, you can schedule things without actually scheduling them. Like it can be like awaiting approval, if you if that makes sense. So you can put something in and say it's going to go live at or at at ten a.m. on the first of May, but it wouldn't actually push it through unless I went in and ticked it off. So, um, and that also means that I could go in and make little tweaks because making a tweak to something takes a whole lot less time than thinking of it, writing it down. And then, you know, it's, yeah, so that kind of thing. So if I were to have somebody that was going to help me with that kind of stuff, the first thing I'd do is sit down with them, either with them next to me or screen sharing or something like that and show them exact, like actually do it with them watching and asking questions as I go um, so that I can show them not only how everything works, but also like my, you know how when I'm doing the puzzles and I kind of think aloud what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I do that, but with my social media posts so that they could see what my thought process was going through all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, obviously give them opportunity to ask questions and things like that. And then we would do a thing where they go through and they do the scheduling, but then I'd go through and approve stuff and just like go, yep, happy with that, happy with that, happy with that, uh, change that word out, but happy with that, happy with that. And then they'd be able to go through and see what's actually scheduled so they can see if anything's changed and, and kind of take note and adjust from there. But um, yeah, it's not like, I set extremely high standards for myself, but I, I recognize the fact that other people are not mind readers. They're not going to know what I want unless I tell them in no uncertain terms. Ask Shiba next time you see him in chat. You can, if, if you're wondering about like how I am in terms of communicating work stuff, you can ask Shiba about the process we go through for emotes because like, I'll be like, this is what I want it to be. Like, like Fiamma brain or Fiamma colander or whatever the hell, right? Um, Cause it was originally Fiamma colander. And then I realized later that typing out colander, oh, people are going to spell it wrong. Fiamma brain, on the other hand, a lot easier to spell. So I changed it to that. And she was like, oh, yeah, fair point. Um, but like I explain quite thoroughly, like in a sentence or two, what like the idea of it all. And if I'm having a lot of trouble with the um, the, the description of it, uh, like the the um, the sheets farmer sheets um i was having trouble explaining what i was thinking so i did like five or six little sketches of sort of different ideas of what it could be and then she took those and ran with them and we got the the farmer sheets we see today thank you sam um so i reminded her then 
sure. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I like to think, like, I've, I've read so many horror stories about clients that I don't ever want to be the subject of one of those stories. <laughs> so I always try to be super clear about what I want. And if I don't know what I want, I will say that. I say, I want something that's like this, but I don't actually know. Do you have any ideas? And then we have a conversation about it and maybe I'll get like a sample, uh, like a, a quick sort of sketch with maybe some color splashed in there just to get a general idea. Something that doesn't take too long so it doesn't add extra workload and then we can kind of make changes to that and go from there. Um, I try to be a really good client and so I would try, um, I'm trying to think, would I be in that circumstance where someone's doing my socials for me? I'm not sure, like either I could be a boss where they are an employee doing a task for me or I could be a client where they are, they are a social media person and I'm one of their clients that they do work for. Do you know what I mean? Like it's kind of, but regardless, I would want to keep those lines of communication as open as humanely possible so that no one gets upset or shitty or miscommunicated or, or any of that kind of stuff. Um, because this is my brand. This is my brand. This is me. This is my business, and it's important to me that it succeeds. Um, and it's not going to be as important to anybody else. It's, you know, the, when you read about all those, like, Bridezilla comments and posts and things like that, uh, one of the big things I see on Reddit a lot is, like, no one cares about your wedding as much as you do. They're, they're going to rock up and be like, oh, this is so pretty. They're not going to notice... <laughs> that the roads are three three shades off of the pink that you wanted. No, they're not gonna notice. Like, it's not a thing. Like, this is, it's your party, it's your thing. No one cares about it as much as you do. No one cares about your child as much as you do. Like, your new baby or whatever. No one cares about your your pet as much as you do, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Like, all those kind of things. Nobody cares about my brand and my business as much as I do. Like, that, make, that just makes logical sense. Um, and so, providing enough information so that they can do a good job without caring about it as much as I do. But that can also be a benefit because I kind of like, is this the right thing? Should I change that word? Have I used too many hashtags? Blah, 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 blah. Whereas they don't care so much. They can disconnect from it a little bit and be like, yep, that's good. <laughs> so it's it kind of, yeah, it's, it's a, bit of, a bit of give and take. But I absolutely do have exacting standards, but... They aren't set really for others as much. Though, to be fair, I've not had to work with anyone else for my stream. Everything you see has been me. Obviously, I have moderators. They do an incredible job of keeping me sane and answering questions of like advice when I ask them and, um, and you know, participating in chat and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of like the technicality bit, bits and bobs and stuff like that, it's all me. I've never outsourced any of it. Um, obviously I've, I've paid for panels and I've paid for um, start and finish screens and I've paid for emotes and badges and et cetera, et cetera. But um, anything that isn't art, <laughs> like, like, like this, this, this isn't art. This, this isn't art. Um, I have been told that I need to, uh, make these for Instagram and stuff as well, though, so that's fun. Um, <laughs> that'll be interesting. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so it's all a bit kind of... But it is something I'm going to have to start thinking about. Because it's going to get to a point where I'm not going to be able to grow anymore unless I have people helping. Um, but how do you pay people when you haven't achieved that growth yet? Is sort of a, it's a sticky one I'm, I'm wrestling with a little bit. <clears throat> you pay them with exposure. Never, never. God, I'd need like several chemical showers to, yep. Yeah. Ah, simple. Yeah, it is a super, super basic, teeny tiny little add-on panda. It's fantastic though. Is this the PTR? The PTR for what, Vikings? Um, oh, right, that PTR. No, I wouldn't be farming mounts on a PTR. 
That would be silly because you wouldn't get them on in the live version. You get a super rare thing to drop in the PTR and you can't bring it across with you. I remind Rita very quick, straight to the point. I try to be, and I'm like, I'm really glad that Shiba appreciates my style of communication and works well with it. As evidenced by our amazing, gorgeous, adorable emotes, my lord. Love the mods. Exactly, Rusty. We love moderators here. Mods are the backbone of the stream. The artist is the gorgeous eyes and the gorgeous smile. Mods are the backbone, and I'm the rest of the bits and bobs <laughs> that, make, that make things happen. <laughs> it's great. It's Ow. Don't hit yourself with that. That was a accidental. Silly. It was really light, though, I promise. I'm sorry. That's why you said ow. I always say ow when I knock myself around like that. You know that. Doesn't actually mean it hurt. That's gonna be a screenshot. Anyway. Yeah, probably will be. <laughs> Do I smell chippies? Yes. I like steak and chips. Thank you for the bubble tea, Jas. This is a strawberry bubble tea with what I imagine will be coconut lychee jelly. Nope, that's coconut jelly, not coconut lychee. Delicious. On to the next one. Um, fair enough, sorry, I don't know what was it. No, no need to apologize, it's all good. I just, I tend to like to give an explanation so that people don't have to ask the question in future if they can pick up on the little things that tell them the answer, if that makes sense. Especially here where I can take up to 10 minutes to answer your question. <laughs> Obviously other members of chat can answer too, but it doesn't always work that way. <clears throat> I have a tip. If you do start making colors for IG, etc., you may want to vary up the colors. I get it. Fiamma equals orange, red, fire colors. Also kind of looks like April is October, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, so this is the thing. It's still brand colors. That's the thing. Um, it's, not, it's not just the fact that it's orange and red like fire, but it's also like my bird, not the bird over there, the ashes, not, not that skin, but like my, my, my logo is those colors and all that kind of stuff. Like it's, if you keep things consistent right the way through, people can always recognize it as your stuff. Uh, like if people saw any of my schedules that are black with the orange and yellow like that, they'll immediately recognize it as mine, even if it doesn't have my name on it. Uh, and that's what, like building that brand recognition is super important, super, super, super important. Um, it just so happens that my colors look similar to pumpkins in some people's eyes. Um, yeah, uh, is that like a traveler? There we go. But yeah, like if your if your colors, like if you were a a pair of streamers, like if, if you were a couple who were streaming, for example, and one of you had red hair and one of you had green hair, and so you had little chibi drawings of you with your green and red hair and all your branding was green and red, it looks like Christmas, but it's still you, it's still your brand. Like it's, yeah, it's, I know it's tricky and it can be tricky to differentiate, especially, thank you, especially when I'm such a small brand, particularly. Thank you. They're only slightly damp today. Much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you for dinner. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's a super fine line between between like going for your thematic each month and all that kind of stuff, and then actually trying to maintain um, brand consistency. It's like even Twitch's stuff, when they do Christmas, they put a Santa hat on the purple glitch with the purple background and they put like string lights in the background. Or if they're doing Halloween, they might make it like flash like strobe lights every so often or have some like gloomy stuff or, or whatever, but it's still gonna be purple um, because that's their brand color and, and that kind of thing. It's, yeah. Yeah. CJ Vario Gaming, by the way, have a new name. Fantastic, congrats on the new rename. Uh, me and my emotes are gonna need a back brace from carrying the weight of stream. <laughs> yes, Shiva, absolutely. Shall I drop them out? Not yet, not yet, but that's okay. Instinctive owl, yep, again with the strawberry, yep. 
Correct. It's delicious. I know I would have voted Thai. Yeah, but we had milk last time. It is autumn here. That American got my view mixed up. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> That's okay. But, I mean, all of us have such a centric view on what we're experiencing. It's it's not anybody. It's like that's just human experience. Hey, we we our, our world is coloured by what we know and what we are experiencing and stuff. Um, face when average LFI wait time is more than an hour. <gasps> Jack, I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, noms tonight is a steak with chippies. Chippies. I like chippies. Having a, a bit of a break from the steamed veggies on the side because of stress. <laughs> Basically. I need more energy to get through this. Ah, dear. Golly gosh, I need to empty my inbox. Everything is important. That's the problem. I've got... I've got a full page of emails in my, like, a full first page on my Gmail. But it's, like, all of it's actually important. And it's there because I need to follow up on it later when they haven't responded after a week. Oof. Oh, excuse me. I should let you eat then. Oh, it's alright. I'll pick at it. It'll be, like, that's what I always do. Uh, even when I'm not streaming, I tend to pick up my dinner pretty slowly. Uh, unless I'm, like, starving, in which case it disappears in 3.7 seconds. But I'm alright. I'm doing okay. I'm not like dying of hunger at the moment, so I'll be great. It's also warm. Should we go the follow-up reminders? It does. It does, but um I don't know if it works if you've got them hidden from viewer in other folders or whatever. Um And plus sometimes it's a sometimes it's a pretty urgent thing that I don't necessarily want to follow up in five days I might need to follow up in three days or two days because it's something that if I don't actually get it done now like they're gonna forget and I'm gonna miss out on an opportunity kind of thing uh if I wait time later in the week seems shorter but you also get to deal with those tenth alts that don't know what they're doing like me even though I'm on my main in there fair Fair enough. Yeah, on, on like Wednesday, it's the fastest, obviously, because everyone's like, okay, time to go in and do my thing. And then on the weekends as well, it's pretty quick, like Friday night through through Sunday afternoon. Um, but then yeah. Uh but I mean it is it's also Wednesday. It should be it should be good. Maybe there's just not enough of the specialties, like enough tanks or healers. Maybe everyone's queuing on the DPS and no one's on their other roles. <clears throat> I'm sure I've tried tweaking them, but no joy. Yeah. Mm. It's all right. Um, like, a couple of them are things like someone has said that they've sent something, and so I want to hold on to it to make sure that I know it's coming so that when I get it, I can go back and thank them. Or to chase them up and be like, hey, this hasn't arrived yet. It's been a month. What's going on? Sort of thing. Um... And yeah, the other stuff, there's a lot of, there's a few things in there today that will probably just end up being deleted. Um, but I didn't get a chance to today, so that's okay. This is my work email. This is my, this is my official email, not my personal one. Ha! Huh. It's 100% people re-rolling Warlock and trying to get free tier. Hey, Adoop, how you doing? I was talking to Mrs. Helix about the baker shortage. Ah, there you go. I'm glad that I've inspired conversation. This is cool. I suggested that Woolworths increase the dough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That might end up being what's going on. Like, it might be that bakers aren't in Queensland, but they're, like... <clears throat> oh. Okay, so this was this has been going on for a little while. So abc.net.au Local bakeries face demise as they struggle to attract qualified staff apprentices. 
Uh, Mitchell Talbot sells nostalgia. The traditional favourites, vanilla, coconut jam and apple slices along with freshly baked bread don't last long as a steady stream of customers drops by his small bakery at Emu Park on the central Queensland coast. There's something magical about it, Mr Talbot said. But the magic of the local bakery, once a street corner staple in almost every suburb of most towns, is wearing off and Mr Talbot's bakery is one of only a few family owned bakeries left in Emu Park. He is struggling to find the right assistant to help him since buying ba the bakery earlier this year. It's not a dying art, I'd say it's more a lost art, he said. People just don't want the job. It's a gruelling job, unsociable hours, a midnight start, and no air conditioning for bread making, not to mention the hot ovens. Add to this the temperatures of a central Queensland summer, where the mercury can rise to 40 degrees for days at a time, although if you're in a, inside of Woolworths it's a bit different, I think. Uh, none of this deters Mr Talbot, who has flour running through his veins since he was a boy helping his parents run their bakery. Absolutely love those hours. I've done nine to five jobs or just a day shift at bakeries and I didn't like it at all. It's something about midnight because you can just come in and do what you want. You get used to it. Uh, pay is also an issue. When Mr. Talbot completed his baker's apprenticeship in the mid 2000s, he was earning decent money compared with other trades. Then the mining boom came and everyone was jumping ahead of me. You can still pay your bills with the wages of baker, but it's not as attractive anymore like when my dad was training and becoming qualified. <clears throat> Figures from the government agency Job Outlook show full-time workers on an adult wage earn about 996 a week, compared with an average of 1460 in other trades, 1460. It's a predicament facing the industry across Australia. So yeah, it looks like it's just a... Uh... Ah... Attracting apprentices is the biggest concern, according to the Baking Association of Australia. So you've got plenty of existing bakers, but there's no apprentices coming through. No new apprentices. <clears throat> um, they just can't get help anymore. Education system's been geared to send youth to year 11 or 12, and then on to university but that's not the path for a baker. So the apprentices should be starting a bit earlier than that, or when they finish school, not going to university, going into apprenticeship. Um, but they're just not doing it anymore. Interesting. Oh, that's cool. Pilot program in regional Vic. Local bakery ran a workshop at school then invited interested students into the bakery for work experience. 31 students turned up for an afternoon. Out of those, 17 took up work experience at different bakeries in their region. And out of those 17, six or seven of them started on apprenticeships. That's really cool. Like that's a that's a good start. I mean, I mean, obviously that's where you get this kind of stuff happening. If you've got a shortage of something, you need to encourage it at the early ages. Make people realize that this is a thing you can do. And that, you know, do you enjoy doing this? Here, come try it out and see. Might help them fill the role. Uh-huh. Supply shortage everywhere. Yeah. Mm. And not just in, like, goods. Also in services. Like, human supply shortage. Wait, if you're from Queensland, damn, I'm in New South Wales. Why is that a dam? Uh... Emu Park, never very nice area. Lovely. There you go. Maybe you've even been into the bakery. Mm, some people judge you for what you do. Being a baker doesn't seem as illustrious as being a technician, even to most, sadly. See, like, I respect what electricians and plumbers and stuff. I can't do it. They do, and I respect that. But bakers make food. Enough said. <laughs> Ali, Silver, Meaty, Great, Neke, Zombie, and Little. Congratulations to all of you on your apprenticeship. Well done. Everything is school, hospitality, through South Bank, Tafe, people with good marks, and I actually would nab for apprentices with local restaurants or clubs. Mm. We had, um, once a week of an afternoon, we had a, a handful of kids who would go off to Tafe for the rest of the afternoon and do classes and stuff. Um... Like, if that was the path that they wanted to follow. I didn't, so I didn't. But, um, it was an opportunity that was available, which is really good. 
think especially like I didn't grow up in the city. I I definitely grew up in um like kind of where suburbia meets rural is where I grew up. So we had agricultural studies as a class offered at high school. Um, so like it was very much, I think that was why we, we did have a lot of people drop out once we hit the, like the transition between 10 and 11 to, to do not, not drop out per se, but change educational paths to go and do TAFE and apprenticeships and stuff like that. It's just, that's what is what's expected. And that's what, you know, we know what's going to happen and a whole bunch of them did and it was great. But, um, maybe in the cities and stuff like that, it's not something that's encouraged as much. Um. <clears throat> Not sure I haven't grown up in a city before. Uh Where are we? So we're over the halfway point of the stream. Uh, I'm going to jump back to, because I know a lot of people have tuned in who maybe weren't here at the start of stream, stuff like that. So if you have heard these talking points before, I do apologize. But uh, so pancreatic cancer is the number one deadliest cancer in the world. Uh, together, we can, of course, change that. And that is why we're doing a charity stream today. We're fundraising for the Pank One Network, which is a network of uh, international network of hospitals and cancer research institutes who are working together to try to find treatment options and, and raise the survival rate of pancreatic cancer. Uh, there's less than 10% survival rate. The five year survival rate is 8%. If you are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer today, the chance of you making it five years from today is 8%. That's ridiculous. Uh, survival rate has gone almost unchanged in the past 40 years. 40 years due to severe underfunding. So the survival rate today is almost what it was. It, like here in 2022, the survival rate is almost the same as it was in 1982. Think about where you were in 1982. Personally, I wasn't here. And that's a long time. <laughs> I'm not exactly the youngest of people. But since then, the survival rate has not changed much. That's a long time, especially in an area where, you know, cancer research is so talked about. Why not pancreatic cancer? It's often called the forgotten cancer because the number of weeks a person is given to live after being diagnosed. Yeah, you don't say you've got pancreatic cancer, you've got about three years to go. Obviously, they're not going to say it like that either anyway, but it's, it's not years, it's not months, it's literally weeks. Literally weeks sitting here at the end of April, you could have someone who, someone pass away who was diagnosed this month. Like that's, that's how quick it can happen. Uh, it's the cancer that makes you wish you had a different cancer. And I can't imagine anyone wishing they had cancer, but yep. So what you can do is help us shine a light on one of the deadliest diseases in the world. We're gonna work together and we're gonna make some real change. That's what we're fundraising for today. It is a charity stream for Pank One Network. We have raised a ridiculous amount of money and I'm just so blown away by you guys and your awesomeness and generosity and just everything that goes along with it. $500 for cancer research. That's amazing. We here have raised, like their goal is 50K for this event and we have contributed 1% of that. A whole 1%. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Trust me, it's awesome. <laughs> that's really really good so um i've lost my thing image again there you go but yes that's that's who we're raising money for um if you are interested and it's in us yep that is us dollars 500 us dollars not aussie dollars if you are interested in donating or having a read further or grabbing the donation link so that you can send it to 
family, friends, close ones, loved ones, um, via any of your social media channels or by text message or by whatever you desire, they don't have to come to stream to be able to donate. You can grab that link and send it to them and they can chip in if they so desire. Um, you've got exclamation Panquan, P-A-N-C-O-N-E, or exclamation Tiltify in chat will get you Koalatron's response with the link. Uh, or you can wait for Koalatron to automatically post it. Uh, he's posting it roughly every half hour. Um, you can grab your phone. There's a um, that away. The QR code up in the top there, if you scan that, it'll take you to the same website. And if you scroll down under chat, the very first panel, it's a new panel for today, I think it's purple and yellow, um, is with the donate link as well. And that'll take you, all of them go to the exact same place. Uh, and then you can grab that link and send it wherever you desire. It's entirely up to you. Um... So Claire, personally, when I was younger, I would definitely have dated a baker. They would smell amazing. Got to do work experience at the computer store. The school bought their computers from. That was lots of fun. I didn't actually do work experience. By the time I knew it was work experience time, um, it was like a two-week period um, where we could take time off school to go and do work experience. Um, by the time I realized it was that time, we were like a week into it. And I just kind of went, eh. Oh well. I just didn't bother. Um. I dropped down year 11 to do my trade. Went to uni once I finished. By today's rules, I think I would have been too young. Possibly. Possibly. But a lot of them do go to TAFE. Um, like they finish year 10 and then go to do the, go and like they do year 11 and 12 at TAFE kind of thing. And that forms like the educational portion of their apprenticeship. And then once they've done that year or two or whatever, depending on the trade, then they go out and do their actual like hands-on apprenticeship type thing once they've been taught like the theory of it all. Um, but I'm not too sure. I haven't done one myself. I've just had friends who have gone through it and they haven't really explained the process in depth to me. When's the new pets update? Um, What new pets update? Sorry, Rusty. I'm not sure what you were mentioning there. Was Fear streaming in 1982? No. Was anybody? No. <laughs> the internet did not really exist in the way that we know it today. Uh, I keep trying to read it as pinecone. Pancone. Gotcha, gotcha. It is pank as in pancreatic. Maybe that'll help it stick. <laughs> You're a pinecone. It's going to taste certificate while in you were 11, 12. Yeah, I just got my VC. Uh, I was living out of home, needed to work to live, definitely needed the pay part of the apprenticeship. Fair, fair. Astronauts were probably streaming in 1982. Yeah, look, maybe? I don't know. When did they, like... Military and universities, there you go. Interesting. Well, I certainly wasn't streaming. I wasn't alive. I wasn't alive yet. In fact, I think my mum would have been 18. Maybe. Mm. Men streamed from the moon, but I can't get ad-free Foxtel. <laughs> You're not wrong. Everything's about the money these days. Everything. I mean, it's been about the money for a while, clearly. But it's, yeah. You should stop giving money to, uh, what's his name? Murdoch? Pretty sure it's Murdoch who owns Foxtel. We don't like Murdoch. He renounced his, was it, I think it was Jasper telling me the other day, apparently he renounced his Australian citizenship so that he could get a US citizenship so he could own media outlets there because they have a rule about if you're a foreign national, you can't own a media outlet because it would have effects, like foreign effects on their election cycle. And then you look at what happened a few years. Anyway, um, <laughs> so he renounced his Australian 
citizenship so he could get a US one so he could own a newspaper. I don't know it's true. I, I haven't verified that. But Jas told me that. And I usually trust Jas. But also Jas might have got it from somewhere odd. So, like, verify. Before you go taking me at my word, please do verify. Um, you know what I'm like. Make sure you do the right thing and stuff. Australian American businessman. I hate that so much. He's 91. 91. Naturalized US citizen, same difference, yeah. But you can't be a citizen in the US unless you renounce your other ones, can you? Or am I remembering that ring correctly? I could be wrong. I, I could absolutely be wrong here. This is a very big guess. It was pre-internet. There was ARPANET, but internet and the World Wide Web didn't happen until about 1990. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Year I was born. Um, streaming was definitely not a thing. Yep. Yep. I mostly just like that guy and his family. I'm black and bi. He's effing awful. Yeah. He... We don't claim him. We don't want him back. <laughs> we don't want him back. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Uh, in 1985, became a naturalized US citizen, giving up his Australian citizenship to satisfy the legal requirement for US television network ownership. <laughs> his holding company, News Corporation, acquired 20th Century Fox, HarperCollins, and the Wall Street Journal. He owns the British broadcaster B Sky B. Yep. Owned over Murdoch's News Corporation owned over 800 companies in more than 50 countries with a net worth of over 5 billion and that was in 2000. <clears throat> he is the chairman of Fox Corporation a board member of News Corp and the Fox Corporation. can hold dual citizenship from the US. I mean, we don't want him or his news bias either. Yeah, but we've got it. And he's here to, like... It'll be really interesting to see what happens with the next couple of generations. Like, his kids will continue on the legacy. One hundred. Like, if, if he hands it down to his kids, they'll keep going. But his grandkids... That's... You know... So his, his kids are in there. His eldest daughter is 63 to 64. They're not sure of her birth date. Um, and she's done... Murdoch is described in relation to her inheritance as the only one of Rupert Murdoch's children not directly competing for his business affections. Um... So it doesn't look like, and she's done fairly well for herself. Um, board member, um, occupy like non-executive director, all this kind of stuff. Like she's she's doing her own thing. Uh, next one's also a daughter. She's fifty three. She's a journalist. She does reality TV. I'm just, I'm wondering if it's going to be held down to like a 2IC or to kids. If it's handed down to 2ICs, it will absolutely be someone who will keep, who will hold up the mantle of all of the shit that he does. But if it's handed through family, it 
can eventually get to someone who's not as extreme. I, I, I don't even, I'm, I'm not even talking about someone who agrees with my political leanings in charge. Like that's not even, it's just cause he is so biased, so biased. Just anyone who's actually neutral would be nice, you know? But it's whatever. We should have the same laws, make him give up all his media holdings. You can take him back if you want, absolutely not. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> um, you make me feel old here? Nah, nah, it's fine, you're fine, everything's fine. Aussies don't even want him, nah, we don't. Can we toss him into the ocean with some cement weights? I do not advocate violence, no matter who it's against. So we're not gonna do that. He's 91, just give it time. Uh, we don't want him either. <laughs> May the sea take him. Uh, I had a lawyer friend tell me I should pursue German citizenship, that I wouldn't have to drop my US citizenship. One of my relatives fled Germany before World War II. Wow, there you go. Yeah, I've I've been told I need to go get a British passport. Uh, although this was before Brexit, so. Because, <laughs> um... Britain does um, paternal inheritance. So... My dad is not an Australian citizen. He is a permanent resident of Australia and has been since he was a kid. Um, so I have the choice to go get myself a British passport as well as the Australian one that I currently hold that I need to renew. Uh, <laughs> not that I'm planning to use it anytime soon, but it's a really handy thing to have if you've got the money to spend. It's only a couple hundred bucks and it lasts you 10 years. Like, it's pretty good. Um, but going and getting the British one means that I need, like, my dad's birth certificate. And I'm not sure he knows where that is. So... <laughs> <clears throat> um... Can't come back, he tossed his Aussie citizenship away. What do you have to pick in Z new area? Oh, Zerath Mortis to get the moats to start dropping. Don't understand which one I need to compete complete. It's confusing for no reason. Third thing, top row. Yep. Yep, so there's there's like the one, two, three, four, and then there's like a gap, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. You need to go across the top first to unlock those. To get every, to unlock all the trees underneath it. And when you get the third one along, there's a quest. There's two separate quests, one to go and unlock the pet making forge, and then one to go and unlock the mount making forge. You need to do those quest chains. If you can't make the pets, you can't get the items that you need to make the pets to drop. So you need to unlock those and then you need to go do those quests. That might be what you're missing. If you've unlocked stuff and if you're like pounding through like, I've unlocked like everything, which one do I need? It might be that you haven't done the quests yet. <clears throat> Assuming unless he was incorrect, I should have I could have dual citizenship so long as both countries allow. Yeah, that's the thing. If one of the countries ever decides you can't, you'd have to make a choice. Excuse me, but I mean, no harm, right? <clears throat> At this point, could be useful. Uh, yep, no taxi backsies. Not even if he turns learns to bake. <laughs> yeah, it's not on the skilled migrants visa list. He can't. I think we should take the world's wealthiest and send them into space so they can get a better perspective on the planet. Maybe they can take a SpaceX plane. And then maybe leave them there. I mean, like into the sun. Um, is she awful? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Wikipedia doesn't say. Wikipedia tends to be pretty neutral and I'm, I'm reading it from Wiki. Um, if you try to edit that kind of stuff in, it tends to get edited out pretty quickly because it's supposed to be like a factual statement of, of like history and all that kind of stuff rather than um, those kind of bits and pieces, but not sure. Uh, no fair elections for you. This should enable rampant poison in society. Why would you get a British passport? So I can go to New Caledonia and not have to go through customs. Mm. I really just want people in charge who don't hate me for existing, want to force me being into being a real woman. Yeah, those people can like go all the way away. You got it, okay, okay, right. You're very welcome to, I'm sorry. Like it does take me a while to catch up on chat. So I apologize if you were trying to make me stop talking. Um, but yes, you're very welcome. 
No, your dad is probably in a bike jacket pocket under an engine in the garage. Uh, probably not. I'd say it's probably with his mother. Where most people keep their part of their birth certificates. Um, those chains are from Pocket Buck. There you go. Uh, hello, Sink. How are you going? Oz USA relationship is changing the sharp change of Oz with China. Might end up getting a chance at that USA citizenship. I don't. I'd, I, I have no claim to the US and don't need a citizenship at all. In space, no one can hear swear or screaming. Uh, you'd have to be outside in space, and by the time you get outside in space, so that no one can hear you scream, you wouldn't be able to scream because there's no air to scream with, and that's why there's no air to carry the scream. It, yeah. If you're in the spaceship, everyone else in the spaceship can hear you. So... <laughs> Oh, so not to actually go to the UK. Look, I mean, maybe, maybe. Uh, I've got family over there, apparently. But mm, I don't know. I've been to Ireland. That was pretty. Ireland's pretty. A joke from Alien. Oh, I knew it was a joke from somewhere, but. Also, it doesn't work. <laughs> I've been Jack had fun. Yeah, no, I've been I've been to Ireland, but um, not. And I stopped over in Heathrow, and that was enough of an experience for me. God, Heathrow's a. I mean, granted, this was a long time ago, so maybe it's better. It's probably not better. Uh, <laughs> mm. Ireland is very pretty. So. When, when I traveled over there, I was quite young. I think I was like 12, 13, something like that. Traveled with family to visit family, etc., etc. et cetera. And um, at that point, Australia was, I mean, we're still in a drought, but it's kind of become more of kind of just a day-to-day -day thing that we know that we're short, we have, we're short of water all the time, but we're managing sort of thing. Whereas back then, this was when the restrictions were really starting to come in. So they like slowly over every, every few months, there would be new restrictions. Like you can only water your gardens from X to Y. Um, no water fights. We can't, no, we're technically not supposed to use like water guns and water bombs to have water fights in summer and stuff like that. We can run a sprinkler if it's on the garden and run through it, but not during those hours, like only during the other. Yeah. Um, so there are big, heavy water restrictions and that was all happening in a really, really, really big way. Um, you weren't allowed to water your lawn or your grass or anything like that. Nah, screw all that. It's a waste of water. Um, so going from that in Australia to driving down the highway in Ireland and seeing literal emerald green hedges perfectly manicured down the middle of the road. Like, you know, you've got your two roads, one going one way, one going the other way, and then like the grass strip in the middle with these beautiful hedges it blew my, it stuck with me for literally 20 years now. That's how jarring it was as an Aussie visiting over there. Excuse me. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous place. I wonder if the people in the UK are finally pissed off about Brexit. A lot of them have been pissed off since the start. A lot of them have been pissed off. It's just that the majority weren't. Even if you're in the minority in a, in a country-wide thing like that. That's still a lot of people. Mm -mm. <sighs> Only the majority in England. I think, look, there were, there were a couple of good reasons for them to leave the EU from what I remember. I don't remember what they would, but like when, when it was all happening, I asked my dad because obviously, you know, he lived over there and, and his stepfather was running businesses over there and all this kind of stuff. And so I called and asked like, why is this such a big deal? Um, and there were a couple of, there were a couple of points I remember him making that were really good. And then he kind of said, but regardless of all that, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> Um, like it's, there were so many bad things that were going to happen, but as good political parties will, good users in like, they're good at what they do, not necessarily like, um, morally good, good as in they're good at what they do. 
don't focus on the bigger picture they focus on the bits you want they want you to see like um we got some uh crap in the mail yesterday uh, election stuff uh from the greens with this you know 13 points and a, a seven point plan nationally and then 13 points for your local area and all this kind of stuff and things that they wanted to do and um it was all you know we want to do like free education and and this and that and the other and i'm just like yeah but how are you going to fund all of this where's the money coming from you need to this all of this needs to be paid for you say it's going to create ten thousand jobs who's going to pay the salaries of those ten thousand people where is the money and then they had this little thing down the bottom here's how we're going to fund it and it was like tax the wealth of billionaires and tax big corporations and it's like they've been trying to do that for 30 years Good luck. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I feel like I'm a real just cynic when it comes to all that kind of stuff. But that's like, these are the beautiful, amazing things that we're going to do. And then here's, uh, sorry, all the beautiful, amazing things. And then, and then here's how we're going to fund it. Literally this little table down in the bottom showing like tax, the Uber, it was um, rollback tax cuts for the Uber rich X amount tax billion of the wealth of billion not income wealth tax the wealth of billionaires amount tax large uh, close loopholes for foreign investors amount tax the big companies amount but it like it was just nothing compared to all of the flowery amazing stuff that they claim they're gonna do you know it's a bit yeah i don't know i'm a bit cynical it's great to want those things. And I agree, I also want those things. But you need, they need to be paid for. They need to be paid for. And if you're gonna take the money out of different departments, that's fine, but you need to tell us. Because <laughs> if you're gonna fund, you know, make free education, but you're gonna slash the healthcare budget to get there, I guess that's fine, because how many people are you going to have to educate when no one can get medicine? But do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, anyway. Uh, seems like Brexit wasn't a very good idea in general. Xenophobia kind of bit them on the ass hard. Yup, life from the party who has never been about the medical program that they'd expand it was kind of dumb. It's a party that always wants to cut the medical, so why would they expand it? Now that they weren't in the EU, it made no sense. Be interesting uh, in how many who voted for Brexit are still alive. Commentary at the time. Being it was mostly the older generations voting for it. Interesting. Okay. There's a party that doesn't believe in free education. Don't believe medical stuff should be free. Oh, sorry. What I was talking about was my own parties here. Toki's not in the UK. Um, this was an example of literature that I received in Australia from one of my local political parties because we have an election coming up in a couple weeks. Um, so we've started getting the onslaught of political crap to tell us how to vote. Sorry, I should have been clearer. I did mention it was from the Greens, but I, I didn't think that there'd be people who... I, I knew, I know, of course I know people aren't going to know what that means, but I didn't think to let you all know. So, yeah, no, it's it's stuff that I received personally. Um, <clears throat> uh, wonderful idea, easy, ugly, secret, unrealistic cost proposal. Yeah, I mean, look, if they could get that through, if they could... Um, fix negative gearing and if they could close the loopholes and they could tax the wealth rather than income uh, and all that kind of stuff then that'd be fantastic they would get a ton of money <laughs> but it's not going to happen even if they did manage to get power if if we had a greens prime minister they're still not going to be able to get that stuff past parliament it's just not going to happen people are going to vote for their buddies who are the ultra rich and have wealth over a billion dollars. Like it's just, they're not gonna let it go through. As as much as, as idealistic and as awesome as it would be to make people pay their fair share into the government so that we can all benefit from infrastructure and whatnot, it's just not gonna happen. Hence my cynicism. Ah, uh, it's fun to pay for them or having to pay for it, but it's part of the that stuff makes sense. Um, 95% of news around Brexit was how Labour Party was anti-Semitic. How's the fundraising? Very well, Majesty. We're going super well. Thank you for asking. Splat. No mount. Oh, we're about to have another battle. Uh, Brexit stuff was saying they want to medical, which they didn't. Yeah, I, I figured as much. 
Um, but yeah, because you because you were talking about other political stuff that involved education and medical, and then I mentioned medical as part of a thing. Like it, I think we had a bit of an oh no crossover where it wasn't quite clear where the the divisions of conversation were happening. Um, but yes, we're all good. Everything is fine. So stream readers, we're gonna double back and have another couple chats about pank one. What is pancreatic cancer? What what is it that we're trying to eradicate? Pancreatic cancer is a cancer that begins in the organ lying behind the lower part of the stomach, which is known as the pancreas. Uh, it secretes enzymes that aid digestion and hormones that help regulate the metabolism of sugars. So it's important. We need it. We can't just cut it out. You actually, you do need your pancreas. Um, but it can become cancerous, as can most of the bits and bobs in the magical human body. Uh, it can become cancerous. It's incredibly difficult to diagnose. There's no symptoms in the early stages. You can have a cancer growing in your pancreas and there are zero symptoms. None. Nothing. Life just goes on as it was. Despite its subtlety, it is extremely aggressive and it spreads really quickly. In its final stages, symptoms are often subtle or non-specific, such as a lack of appetite and weight loss. Which I think Desir also pointed out earlier that they are also signs of stress. And if you are, if you have a lack of appetite, weight loss usually goes hand in hand with that. So you might associate the two and not realize that it's actually a cause of something deeper. Um, so by the time symptoms do start to present themselves, it might already be too late. So these, of course, these contribute, these facts contribute to the fact that um, the, the survival rate uh, for five years of pancreatic cancer is 8%. Just eight, because by the time it's seen, it's so far along that patients often have weeks left to live. Not months or years, but weeks. And because it kind of pops up, it's like, oh, this is what it is. And then they're gone. It's like, there's there's no, there's no time. You can't, like, you can't do anything. It just, and it leaves such a mark on family members and that because it, it's just like, you find out that there's this thing and before you've even started to process your grief, they're gone. And then you have to deal with, you know, maybe it was so quick that they didn't have a will set up. Uh, there's no funeral costs, like funeral insurance or anything like that. You've got to pay for all of that. You've got to organize the funeral. You've got to deal with all those kind of things and you haven't even registered that your loved one has been diagnosed with cancer yet. It's horrible and horrendous. So, we're raising money for Pank One. Pank One Network is a network, international network of hospitals and cancer research institutes who are trying to find treatments for pancreatic cancer. Their, their, their goal is to double the survival rate, so from 8% to 16%. Still not great, but hey, it's a damn start. It's a big jump for something so low. Um, they need $10 million to be able to do this research. The, the uh, goal for this particular campaign, Tell a Story Day, um, the goal is 50k. And there are a whole bunch of streamers uh, from D&D &D and from RPG games who are teaming up to try to raise money for this incredible cause. So, uh, great jobber, demon, Thor, meaty, zombie, and Draz. Congratulations to all of you on your bonus shit. Uh, but that's what we're doing today. Thank you so much to everyone who has already donated. And thank you so much to those who have followed the link. Either So there's a, a QR code up here that you can scan on your phone. That'll take you to the donation page. Uh, you can scroll down under the video player and the first, the very first panel, I think it's purple and yellow, is a uh, is the donation link as well. Um, Qualitron drops it in chat every so often. Uh, and you can also type exclamation pank one or exclamation tiltify to get that link. And then you can send it to your friends. Your friends, your family, other loved ones, drop it all the social medias, in the discords you're a part of, all that kind of stuff. And it helps spread the word. Because even if an individual, like I'm personally, I'm medical, it's a thing. Um, $23,000 is a lot of money. So I'm pretty strapped for cash. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty flat broke at the moment. Uh, everything I have is being funneled into my dentistry, basically. Uh, but this is how I help. I spread the word to you guys. I, I do as much as I can to get money into the pot, even if I can't contribute myself. So if you're someone who can't, that's okay. I understand intimately your situation. I get it, it's okay. But if you do spread that link around and you tell them what's up, why it's happening, they might donate on your behalf. And that would be awesome, of course, if you feel comfortable. But yes, do the thing, do the thing. Um, one of the things that they said, what was it? 
Uh... <clears throat> We've raised enough sympathy, it's time to, to raise survival rates. And I think that's cool. I like that a lot. Um, awesome. Uh, ba -ba -ba, scrolling back. Um, okay, but it looks a bit. Yes! No, no need to apologize, Majesty. Not at all. Fundraising is going wonderfully well. Imagine if we had an ICAC. Yeah, see, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's all just posturing. Like, all the parties are like, yes, we will fund a federal ICAC. I just, if you've got a good enough lawyer or barrister or whatever you want to call it, they can absolutely find reasonable explanations to say why this funding went into the pot for the party to, like, campaign with and why that same company got this other thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can... You can explain away those connections really, really well if you've got a good lawyer. I I just don't think that it's going to find that much corruption that they can actually pin down and punish. Uh, but hey, I would really like to see it happen. I would love to see anyone who's who, who's corrupt be ousted. That'd be fantastic. Have a whole bloody revolution of the the political system with all these corrupt pollies being booted out. But. I just, again, the cynicism, I, I don't think it's going to work the way that everyone wants it to, personally. But we'll see. We'll see. Problem with the Green Party USA. No one to save people, small world. Um, so no one believes they can save the big one. Fair enough. Yeah, the Greens in Australia have, um, so back when I was younger, before I could vote, <clears throat> a common sentiment was like, cause we have liberal and labor are our two like main parties. And then we have a ton of other ones, like a ton, a ton, a ton of other ones, plus independence and all this kind of stuff. And our voting system is very different to the U S we were explaining this on, uh, on Friday, I think it was while playing comp stomp. Uh, we have a very different voting system in that if you do vote for a minor party, it is not throwing your vote away. We have preferential voting. If the number one gets knocked out of the running, they take your vote as whatever you wrote number two on. Three, four, five, six, however many people there are. So your vote still counts. And if enough, if that small party gets enough, like a, enough percentage of the votes in that first round, they get funding from the government to campaign better next time so it's it's actually really valuable to vote for the party you believe in first even if you think that your vote will eventually filter down to to one of the bigs um but what people used to do when i was younger um they'd say oh they're all as bad as each other i'll just vote for the greens and then the greens became the head of victoria which is a state in australia because enough people said i'll vote for the greens that they made a majority government magic so they actually have power here they have actual proper power and um they keep a lot of the other parties in line in terms of environmental stuff they may not actually hold office in a lot of places but they have enough power that they can occasionally stop laws from going through that would massively d damage the environment um so yeah they're actually doing okay some of their stuff is a bit more extreme um, like on the environmental side of things, uh, which is probably what's stopping them from getting more support than they already do. But they're, yeah, a lot of the stuff that they've fought for has actually been fairly reasonable from the environmental side of things. <laughs> they know they won't get power, but they get a few seats. Having consistent platform shows where they will be. Yep, absolutely. Um, the map pulling half a king's rest. I understand the cynicism. Um, I've always known being told I have a cynical edge, but been made to recognize and confront it much more in the last few months. Look, there are not many things that I'm cynical about. Honest, like, honest to goodness. You guys have heard me talk endlessly about, yeah, you know, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm interested to see what happens. I really hope that it goes well. Hope is the opposition of, of cynicism, I'm pretty sure, right? Like, I, I do hope that these amazing aims of, you know, free education and, and free public transport in the city CBD and all that kind of stuff. Like, that would be fantastic. 
I just don't see how they're going to pay for it. Maybe less cynic, more realist. Like, I'm not like, oh, you're never going to get that done. That's ridiculous. Like, I'm not, I'm not kind of doing it that way. It's more a, um, like, I would like that. That would be great. But you, you do need to pay for it. Like, it needs to come from somewhere. Where's it coming from? Oh, that's where you intend to get it from? Good luck. But I don't see it happening. Like, it's, it's. You know, we've been trying to do that for decades. I mean, hey, you might be the ones that get it done. Never say never, but I um, I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. Oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, that's lovely, Majesty. Thank you so much for giving regularly. Like, regardless of who you're giving to, thank you so much for doing that. That's really beautiful. I love that. One day. I was actually saying earlier, Majesty, that, like, um... I would love to be successful because at the moment I can't do a whole lot of anything. Any any change that I find in the couch is going through my dentistry, right? Like that's how it's kind of working. Um, but one day I would love to be able to do a stream like this and go, oh, you know, end of stream. Oh, we've raised two grand. Fantastic. I'm going to match that. Like I, I would love, oh my God, it'd give me all the warm fuzzies and I would just be, I would adore being able to do that. <sighs> Like, so much. Uh, but not yet. <laughs> not at this point in life. Uh, but one day. One day. That's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, I'm going to share the link instead. Yes, definitely. Sharing the link. because that's the And that's what we were talking about, like, um, in terms of, like, supporting streamers. It goes the same for supporting charities. Even if you can't support something, if you share it to your people, your circle one or more of them might be able to, and then it's as though you have done that yourself because it's come through you. And even if they can't, maybe they share it, and then someone from that circle goes and does it that way kind of thing. And you never know who knows a billionaire. You never know who knows a billionaire. And if it goes through that right path and hits that right person, they might have enough disposable income that month to drop a, like a, a life-changing amount for, for a charity like this. You just You just don't know. It is always worth sharing stuff that you want to support. Always worth. Um, facilitating this. Oh, you're very welcome, Landa. Very welcome. Well, they reached out to me. Pank One reached out to me through a like a, a company thing, because um, they've like the the network has engaged a company who's managing the promotion for them. It it happens like that a lot. I very rarely am approached directly by a worker from a charity. Um, usually they outsource that kind of stuff so they can focus on the important stuff like finding treatments and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so they reached out to me and said, hey, we have this thing. Um, and it was like right before or right after my surgery. So they'd sent me a bunch of emails and then I kind of came back and I'm like, I am so sorry that it's taken me this long to respond. I've seen all of your emails here is the thing. I just had surgery. Um, so there were a few emails I had to send like that. Uh, but yeah, and they, they reached out and I went and did some research. And I'm like, actually, this is, this is one that I want to support. This is absolutely a thing. So, um, when I say I want, I do have to turn down charity stream requests occasionally. Um, and one of the big reasons for that is that there are so many charities out there and a lot of them are starting to realize how effective live streaming is for raising, for fundraising. And so, like, if I book one in today and then I book one in for, like, the end of May and then I get three emails who want to do, want me to do a charity stream in mid-May, it's like, I, I, charity burnout's real. Like, people only have so much money and they only have so much kind of emotional, uh, whatever to be able to handle all of the like these horrible things are happening in the world money please do you know what i mean like it's a it's yeah so you've kind of got to make sure you make the right choices and on who you support and when you schedule them in and all this kind of, it's it's a mess it's a whole thing it's a whole thing but i'm here and i like it this is great i haven't done this in a while and i'm very happy about it good idea we'll do yay so hi indeed. Also don't forget to support Fia by following her on Insta. And the best part of it is completely free. Correct. And last I checked, we were seven followers away from the big 1K. Oh, that's adorable. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh, good. Oh my god, 9.95. We have five to go. Where's Seeker? Seeker's gonna flip. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It is what it is. It, it is. It absolutely is what it is. Yeah. Uh, ranked choice voting everywhere in the world to do it. Yeah, what do we, do we, what do we call it? Australian voting system. I'm pretty sure we actually just call it preferential voting. Yeah, preferential voting is what we use at the moment. I remember a few years back, um, there was a, there was a comic that had like a koala and a kangaroo and all this kind of stuff talking about what, what preferential voting is and how it works. And it did a much more succinct job than I did on Friday trying to explain it. Um, but it's it's really interesting. If anyone is not from Australia, um, I would highly recommend Googling preferential voting. Um, I'm just having a look here and there are a couple of like one to four minute YouTube videos done by like one of them's done by The Guardian, which is one of our big newspapers here in Australia. Another one's by, uh, so it's on The Guardian's website. Um, one of them is on YouTube from Griffith University, which is a very large university in, in Australia. And then there's one from a channel called Behind the News, which I don't recognize, but that's also on YouTube. Um, it's like, they'll do a much better job of explaining it than I will. And they'll actually get everything right. Whereas I might've gotten some things wrong, but I, I mean, no voting system is perfect. No election system is perfect. No system of government is perfect as far as I am aware. However, I reckon ours is pretty good. Apart from the toddlers who are actually in there doing the thing and yelling at each other at question time, we'll ignore the actual politicians in terms of the actual system by which votes are recorded and taken. I think that part is pretty good. The floor exists in who the bloody politicians are. <laughs> ah! BOE leather! Look at this! Yes! Amazing. Another bites the dust. Anyway. Um, agreed rank choices sound pretty great. IMO, what did they do with their power? Uh, the Greens. Oh, they're still doing it. They're still, they still have power. Um, one of the big things that they campaigned against was the opening of a new coal mine. I'm pretty sure, by, by an offshore company. Um, I'm pretty sure they ended up being successful with that. A lot of the big, a big, because they were, so it was an, inter, an overseas company wanted to open the mine, but they needed funding from here and support from here and, you know, employees from here and blah, blah, blah. And all those here's were in Australia. So it was Australian companies supporting the international company's bid to make the mine, if that makes sense. And the, the Greens ran a whole lot of media campaign pressure, which led to a lot of protests and stuff like that. And enough of that happened that one by one, those big ass companies dropped out of supporting the international company and stuff. Like it was, it was pretty big. Um, so like there's, there's been a few things like that that have happened. Uh, our, um, my local council. So we have, um, we have councillors who work on like the, the council. And then we have the politicians who do like the electorate, which is a bigger area. And then it kind of goes up and up and up until you get to the prime minister who does the whole country. Um, so my local councillor uh, is Greens, but then my electorate is Labour, um, which is a good thing. Uh, she's she's done some awesome, awesome work. I, I really like what she's done for, for the community and for the area and stuff. Uh, personally, I'm sure there are people out there who hate her, and that's just how politics works. But yeah. Um, are they also more supportive of Aboriginal, Rainbow, and Minority issues? Yes. Yeah. And they raise those at the table. Like, just because they don't have the seat, they can still have the power. And they, so the way that it works here, you don't have half of it's red and half of it's blue. It's all kind of, they, there's, there's a lot of red and blue seats, and they stand for different things in Australia. We don't, like, our red and our blue are different to the US red and blue. They're very, very, very different. Very different. 
uh, and all of our political parties are far more centrist than the American ones are. The Americans are like opposite ends of the spectrum, whereas ours are kind of like here-ish. <laughs> like they're, they're very still closer to center than anything in the US. Um, but uh, yeah, so instead of having half red, half blue, we have like a good chunk of red and a good chunk of blue and then a handful of green and then a bunch of gray, which are the like um, independent. Sorry, my brain occasionally doesn't give me words. It's, it's just, it's a thing and I have to kind of stop and find it and then put it in the sentence. Bear with me. Uh, but yeah, so, um, when, but when a party raises a thing and they want to get it passed, they have to get votes. They still have to get more than half the votes, but neither party has half or more than half of the room. So they have to get independents and or greens on their side to be able to swing it past halfway or from across the way as well. Sometimes you get a majority, like as in like, you know, 90% of the house votes for this thing because it's just that good. But um, so that's when the Greens can step in and use that power and say, we will vote for your proposal. We agree with all this stuff, but take that out and replace it with something that's about this thing over here. And then we'll vote for it kind of thing. They can use that sort of power and they do, like they all do because that's what they do. They're politicians, it's their job. Um, mentalism stuff isn't what I'm talking about. What have they done with their power towards people? Uh, free education is 100% possible. Oh, it absolutely is. It's happened before. It's just how does it happen now? How does it happen now? The Greens don't have a whole lot of power in Queensland because Queensland is backwards as hell. That's where I live. That's not where I'm from, but it's where I live. Um, and I don't tend to pay attention to it too much in terms of the little things, so I'm not too sure. Right, campaigns. Priority campaigns. Uh, so free dental on Medicare. Um, they want to whack student debt. Billionaire's tax, obviously. They want an ICAC. Everyone wants an ICAC, though it's not really a platform at this point. Um, uh, accessible Australia. Ah, more inclusivity and accessibility. That's good. Um, boosting met. Oh, was that the Greens who did? So we have... Um, I think it might have been the Greens. at the, the Before the pandemic, um, we've got a thing in Australia called the Mental Health Care Plan. Uh, where basically you can go to a GP and they can give you a questionnaire and if you meet a certain criteria, you can get, uh, I think it's six to start with, six free or six Medicare subsidized, Medicare is our um, universal healthcare, subsidized mental health session. So with a psychologist, like a qualified psych, not just, not like, a, I mean, counselors are also qualified, but we're talking about a, a psychologist. Um and then after those six, the psych can send a letter back to the GP. You can go visit the GP and they give you an extra four, giving you 10 per calendar year. And that's 10 individual sessions and 10 group sessions. You can, like when you get the original six, it's for six of each, not six all up, like 12 all up, six of each. Uh, and then the extra eight all up. Um, and when we transitioned into COVID stuff, when COVID kicked off, the mental health care plan and Medicare itself didn't give, didn't have any provisions for uh, telehealth. It was all face-to-face -face stuff. There was no way for providers to be able to log it as a Medicare redemption if it wasn't face-to-face. -face. Like they were just, but so, you know, you've got people who are at risk medically, like myself, I'm a vulnerable person. And I also see a psych because they kind of a little bit who are hand in hand sometimes. And so they eventually, it it took a little while, but they got there um, to cover to make it cover telehealth as well. Um, and then I think they expanded it as well so that you got more, but I don't remember exactly about that because I didn't need to use more. Um, so I didn't look too much into it, but I do, I was keen, like I was really looking at that. Um, but yeah, beyond that, I'm not really sure, honestly, because I don't tend to pay attention to the little itty bitty things. I've got too much other shit on my plate. Um, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere because the Greens are the kind of people to yell everything from the rooftops. And so if 
they and that's not I, I don't mean that as a as a put down at all they're very vocal about their beliefs and that's you know it's a good thing like that's rather than you know talking in politico speak and kind of stepping around the bush and not really saying anything straight up the greens are very much like this is what we want and this is how we want to get it whether or not it's realistic is another thing entirely but that's what they want you know that that's how they are so if they have achieved something they're going to tell you uh, so I'm, I bet you'll find stuff if you have a look into it, if you're if you're that interested. Um, but I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, problem with our greens is a vehicle to handle the problems of the rich, which is the planet going bad, instead of the on the ground simple fixable problems. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Like it's it's kind of like if we don't fix the planet, there aren't going to be any little on the ground fixable problems because we'll all be dead. Um, but the, it'll be long enough away that none of us will be alive and so none of us seem to care about it. I think that's kind of one of the big issues and so the Greens are very far focused. Environmental groups and stuff like that look far off into the distance about what's going to happen in several hundred years whereas for example with us Liberals we know they don't give a flying anything, they don't give a flying koala about what happens beyond their date of death. They just don't care. They want themselves and their loved ones to be comfortable, to be wealthy, uh, and to have the opportunities that they had when they were a bit younger. And they, they don't care beyond their own generation. They just don't. Uh, whereas the Greens do, very much, Lee. Super far into the future. Um, it just needs a reasonable plan. Exa exactly, that's the thing. It's just that the plan that the Greens put forward is stuff, again, it's been trying to happen for decades. I just don't see them being able to do it. Like, I don't see them being able to do it soon enough to make it a campaign promise. Um, I thought myself a realist. Who knows, depending on the context. Or the side of realist. Yeah, of course. Pyramid scheme with the good kind. <laughs> Can confirm, I never admit being a billionaire who fights crime while dressed as a bat. Good. Noted. Five to go. You should become one of the big five people who wants to be one of my first thousand followers on Instagram. <laughs> God. There's Seeker. Hello. I was talking about you earlier. Um, good evening, everyone. And calm, pleasant day. I did not. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Behind the news is news for kids. Ah, oh, awesome. Thank you for the confirmation, media. I appreciate it. I just, I'd never heard of it. Probably because I don't have kids. <laughs> probably, I probably outaged it. Like it came in after I was a kid, and then I haven't had any kids, so I don't have anyone in that kind of age bracket. Yep. Cool. So it'd probably be like a not a super simple explanation, but a, a like basic explanation that is digestible at any of those sort of early ages. That's really good. Yeah, hundred percent on the stream goal. Smashed it. Clearly, that one needed to be higher. You're welcome. I don't know if American Democrats are anywhere near left wing in most areas, honestly. Look, I, I don't even know. All I know is that they're like on two opposite extreme ends of some some sort of spectrum. And then and we're just not in Australia. All the parties are quite similar. Comparatively. They still have big, big differences between them, but comparatively, they're just not extreme in the same way. As though, I mean, extreme in the way that it appears to be from the outside. I'm not American. I've never I've never been to America. I know a couple of Americans. We don't talk too much politics. Um, apart from, you know, personal feelings about things that happen when they happen, and even that's pretty brief. So I don't know truly the nitty-gritty of everything that's going on, but from an outsider's, like an international person watching the news, it appears that you guys are just hella extreme. On whichever ends of the spectrum that you are, you're just extreme, like all of you. <laughs> None of you are centrist, and that's, yep, you're all extreme. <laughs> <laughs> that could, of course, be very wrong. We all know media is biased as hell, but uh, that's what it looks like. So many alts to level, it feels overwhelming. I know the feeling. I have 50 characters. The lowest level is 50. I did that. It took me seven months. Um... Uh <laughs> I had, I had like 24 to begin with, and then I leveled another 26 in seven months. Um, extreme left wing on specific issues, center right, most everything else. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's like a lot of Australia is center right. Like most of Australia is center right. 
Um, but yeah, the, there's certain outliers where they, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it comes as soon as I'm never get dental bodies to agree to Medicare. Well, they were on it originally, and then they petitioned to get off it, so I mean, if you do a good enough deal, maybe. Um, in Cali, under Medi-Cal, a free dental depending on how much you make. If you're under 30k a year, it's pretty much free, honestly, it should be free dental. For the non-cosmetic stuff for everyone. Yeah, look, I agree. Um, dental health is so important to overall health that it might end up saving Medicare hundreds of thousands of dollars in other healthcare stuff if we fix the teeth. <laughs> like it's just that much of a systemic problem. Um, in Australia, um, you get free dental for kids uh, up to a certain age. I don't think it's 18. I th it might be 16, but it's all completely free up to that point. No matter, like, I mean, braces and stuff like that get a little bit sticky sometimes, I think. But every, like, checkups, your fillings, your, all that kind of stuff is all, it's all free uh, for children's. Uh, because it sets the foundation, obviously, for, for good dental care and good dental health into the future. Uh, but for me, uh, I've got $23,000 worth of dental bills um, that I'm working towards. Like, so what, I, what I'm saying by working towards, I don't have the bill yet. I haven't had all the work done yet. Um, I get the bill as I have certain things done. And then I have the option to either pay it or get a loan um, that has, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure the ones that I've been offered are interest-free loans, but they do have transaction fees involved in, in paying it off and all that kind of stuff. So every time you make a payment, there's a, a however much money. Um, so it's definitely a hell of a lot better than going and paying for it on a credit card. Don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, so uh, what I'm hoping is that because I'm having to have the work done over a period of more than a year, because I've had a couple of surgeries and like the surgery and then you have to wait four months for it to heal. And then you have the next surgery and then you gotta wait four months for it to heal. Like it, because of those big waiting periods and work has to slot in at certain points along the journey, I'm having over a year to be able to save up for this. So I've kind of been like save up for a bit and then I pay for a thing and then I save up a little bit more and then I pay for the next step and then I save up for a bit more and then I pay for the next step and et cetera, et cetera. And so far I'm ahead of it so far, I've saved up more than I've spent, but we'll see. Everything I earn from Twitch goes towards that. So uh, sub money, bits, donations, uh, purchases through affiliate programs like Humble and YesStyle and um, Bubble Tea Club and Mellow and Wailera and all that kind of stuff, all those different affiliate programs I have, Stream Raiders, um, all of the money I get from them is going into the dental fund. Um, yeah, any sponsorships I get, any, like, all that kind of stuff, all the money is going towards my dentistry. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a long road. It's a long road. Uh, then again, as you say, psych is achievable through healthcare plans, so who knows? Yep, it is. Dental's pretty much the only one that's not. <clears throat> um, truth, all of it is, in most cases. Uh more cost effective to just cover everyone than not so i think in america is eight times more expensive in some cases for homeless not to simply house and cover them to just leave them on the street uncovered yeah it's yeah look um there are there are definitely some things that america don't seem to be doing very good at um but i'm more than certain that there are a lot of things that america is doing better than australia at as well so it's not like there's no, there's no hate here, it's just gentle observations. <clears throat> they don't give a flying koala. I'm glad you liked that, Seeker. I was trying to think of ways to say it nicely. Uh, it's fun to look into the future 100 years. You're dealing with human beings. You need to solve their problems for them to trust you. Greens, at least in the USA, defeat themselves, not proving their trusted person. I may like to slight the gop. The gop hates me. They're problem solving. Room for white American voter who mostly votes for them because they do not want me to exist. The gop works hard to make sure every front they solve that problem for that voter yeah yeah that sucks i'm sorry that you have to deal with that Tok. that's not that's not okay you deserve to exist you are valid and like i can't believe that has to be said sometimes you know that just makes me sick to like genuinely i i the one thing that i see the positive of in saying that like i can't believe that people don't like 
how, how do people not think that that's okay? You know, how do people think that that way of thinking is okay? The only reason, I, the only positive I see in that statement is that if I don't understand how they think, it means I'm not like them. And that gives me some sense of solace that at least I'm not one of them, you know? I just... I don't even know what it makes me anymore. Like, it makes me angry, it makes me sad, it makes me just all of the... <sighs> everything. I'm so sorry. You don't deserve that. You don't deserve that. Ah, uh, so we've been my forge after my headset post. Yes! <laughs> awesome. Uh, I mean, who you get to hear about from over here are the extremists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, right wing, both left and right, are basically right wing, serving very rich and upper class. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Uh, smashing the donations. I know, right, Rel? How amazing is this? Like, what? Even, speaking of which, uh, Aelin, Litter, Great, Demon, Thor, and Fort, congratulations to all of you on your bonus Well done. We're going to crack open another battle, but we're also going to talk about Pank 1 again. Because you're definitely not sick of it yet. Uh, so why support Pank 1 in particular? Because obviously there are hundreds of charities out there, thousands, millions even, of charities out there. Why does Pank 1 in particular deserve your cash? They're making a genuine difference by conducting critical yet severely underfunded research towards the treatment of pancreatic cancer. Uh, we were talking earlier that they are an international network of hospitals and cancer. Crap, 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 crap. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Got him. Sorry, no mount. Um, what was I saying? Right. International network of hospitals and cancer research clinics and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but th this stuff is crit critically underfunded. It's not one of the sexy cancers. It's not super visible. It, it's base. It's barely even felt by the people who have it for goodness sake. It's, it's so, it just scoots under the radar and no one pays enough attention to it. And so it doesn't get the money because it's not yelling for it. You know, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Pancreatic cancer is not squeaky. Uh, no one should have to tell a loved one that they only have a short time to live. And before we were talking about uh, the whole, um, uh, what's it? Um, like not having a will done yet because the, the turnaround from diagnosis to death is like so quick. There's no will, there's no funeral set up, there's none of that kind of stuff. So not only are you having to tell people that you have weeks to live, are they going to have enough time to spend with you as a loved one? when they're trying to frantically prepare for the end of your life, like, no one should have to make a decision between those two activities. It's, that's, it's screwed on every level. Uh, mortality rate is currently 93%. And cancer sucks. And that's why you should donate to Kick It's Butt. Cancer sucks. So there you go. There are some points about Pank One that hopefully will convince you to either donate or Share the link with others who might be able to. Mm. I'm assuming alcoholic was a um a typo or an autocorrect. It was meant to be alt altaholic. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's very pretty. Five hundred is pretty amazing. Only a hundred from the goal. You know what, Seeker? The goal started at one hundred. <laughs> And then Quiz dropped a $200 donation. So I bumped it up to 300 and then 400 and then 500 And now it's sitting on six because you lot keep making me move the goalposts, which is amazing. Amazing. So generous. Make under 30K in California. You're homeless. Um, so the original goal was 100. Yeah. Best of my knowledge, you can get the free dental for kids only if you earn below a certain amount. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because if you're on, you know, 500k between you, you should probably be able to afford that. Whereas that money can be better used for uh, youngins who maybe don't have that kind of income. Uh, lots of people in Cali live with other people, i.e. kids in under 30. And with a lot of people, you can be Cali under 30k. Yeah, we're basically fashionably homeless. Kids get free regardless of income. It's Medicare. They go. Um, it's going to become a thing in much more than just Cali these days. Not a command jet. No, it's not a command jet. Um, but also I'm trying not to drive money anywhere other than Pank One. 
Um, trying. Uh, reality is America have depressed wages, so many, many pays across America kills in general. Kelly pushing out home prices, rent's a mess, sometimes don't want to stop cash flow. Out of fear of older people. We've got to wait for them to, like, move along. Move along. Ah, uh, sugar's real worldwide. Sometimes it eat. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Oh no 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 no! That's sorry, Tokies. I wasn't trying to exp I wasn't trying to say that that's what you were doing. I was just making it clear that my opinion isn't America is bad, um, but my opinion also isn't Australia is better than. Like I, I was just trying to make it clear that all countries have their issues, and it's kind of yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, I wasn't talking about your outlook at all. It was me. I was talking about being very self-centered. <laughs> Ah, oh, lovely viewers. Do you want to support Fia? Follow on social media. Following is a free way to support streamers. It makes a huge difference. Surprising, but true. Honestly, yeah. 1,000 followers is a trigger for the algorithm, which allows her to get more visibility and opportunities for sponsorship, which pays for my dental. But also, uh, makes it more possible for me to potentially one day go full-time with content creation, which is a goal. That's what I would like to do. Um, link for profiles here. Thanks for getting involved. Thank you so much. For the plug seeker, much appreciated. Five more people, I know, right? Like, holy cow, 995. Five more people, amazing job. Thank you, Fed, hello. How are you going, Federica? Hope you're having a lovely day, welcome on in. Ah, uh, it's a yearly amount. There's up to speed where I was today, 17. Oh, 17, not 16, there you go. Medicare between zero and 17. At least one day that calendar year you or they get an eligible payment at least once that calendar year. Get on the old add-on. We got so many errors. Oh, that's odd. It might have been clashes with another add-on you had installed or something. I've not had any issues with Altaholic. Or maybe it's a newer version that's that stopped having issues. Um, there was a couple of years ago there was a thing, because um the original developer, Theoki, um, someone else took over it. And then they started messing with some things and, and they actually put in a line of code that was malicious to another add-on because they had beef with that add-on's creator. Uh, and then Thayoki stepped in and said, like, nah, bugger this. I'm coming back and I'm fixing this noise. And so rolled it way back and then kind of developed it from there. But it's not super actively developed, but it's at least supported. Um, so no, it's only... I think though if you want to use free gentles and millionaire you should it's not smart but you should because it would affect so few people it's not smart for the system to try and cut those people out it's more expensive flat simple healthcare solution work just cover it unless it's cosmetic yeah yeah absolutely um the only problem is that like our government is permanently in the red and everyone always complains that the budget's in a deficit blah 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 so if you can show that you're cutting some people out from getting those payments and that that's a step towards getting the budget into the black, then they're going to be happy with that. It's all about optics. My gosh, the issues is my, is what it is. Fair enough. Fair enough. Confirm on after work. Way more stable than it was? Perfect. Yeah, that's, um, uncertain. Budget deficit once we lives in power. How interesting. Yeah. I think everyone's been more focused on, uh, COVID-19. <laughs> different, different phrase. Different phrase. Uh, yeah, your message did get deleted because today's a f uh, sponsor stream and I have limitations on what I can and cannot talk about. What you mentioned is one of the things I cannot talk about. I'd like to not get banned or not get, you know, excluded from future sponsored streams. Thanks. It's my income. <laughs> you could say it's writing. Like, you don't have to be super specific. 
got to keep in mind that we're out here having to abide by rules as well. It's not just all self-expression. As you said, is what it is. I do appreciate your understanding, though. Oh, I like chips. This is my last chippy. My last one. Mm. How many kills have we done so far? <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's... Don't always know exactly where the boundaries are, but I tend to try to be a little more safe just because... You know, reasons. <laughs> Mmm. Hydrates. Hi, Zam. What do we got? One, two, hydrate. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, are we? Ooh, we're, mm. we're gonna make, we're being, we're going to be cutting it really fine. We need Shadow Spawn faster. We're gonna need Shadow Spawn faster. If we're gonna get to. Did that one. Have a hydrate here. Okay. Mm. Calling out to RNG Jesus. Just for faster spawns. Like, it's not for anything untoward. I'm, like, it'd be nice to get them out as well, but faster spawns would be good. I did miss one at the start of stream. Like, I, I didn't get a tag in in time because I was alt tab doing something. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sam, what is that? <laughs> Some of the edits you can make are just... They're a little bit interesting. They're a little bit interesting. <sighs> this does. Could have been four, three, two, one, because no, <laughs> because no. Oh, that's hilarious. Golly gosh. Goodness gracious me. So, um, you know how I've been having those issues with stream lately with connectivity and stuff like that. Um, one of the oh hello, one of the uh, top suggestions from like OBS and stuff was fixing drivers, and they suggested a program called Driver Easy, and I was like, uh, okay, well if they're suggesting it, then sure. So I went and got it, and it said I had fourteen drivers that were out of date. This is like I'm talking motherboard drivers that were released in 2016. That apparently there's an update from 2020. Um, so I went and did that. Um, I had to do it manually because I'm not paying them for pro because I can't afford to. Um, maybe one day. Uh, but I did a scan and started installing things. Some things, some of them didn't work at all. Some of them has resulted in, like, they, they had an update for the ethernet port on the back of my PC that rendered it unusable. The Windows couldn't start the device even after a, re a reset, like a, a like yeah. So I had to uninstall it and reinstall it um, to make it work. Uh, but the other ones seem to go just fine, and we've had knocking on wood fewer issues today. I don't know if it's because updating random ass motherboard drivers worked, or because OBS has just decided to calm itself down today. But I haven't changed the bitrate, so and that's the next step. If if it's still hinky, we knock it down by 500 and then buy another 500 until it stops being hinky. Uh, but I think 
but okay. we have had a couple of issues where it kind of went splat for half a second but it was literally like half a second you know instead of a few thousand dropped frames i'm sitting at 233 for a four hours and 44 minute stream that's pretty good <clears throat> Uh, okay, for me two times, it's not a graphics card issue. No, no, drop frame sounds like it would be, but it's also it's a bitrate thing, and bitrate has got nothing to do with graphics. It's the bitrate that's dying. The bitrate's the the bitrate is what is collapsing, um, and that's usually a network connection thing, um, and because uh, if you're trying to send so much, and your uh, either your drivers, um, your cable, your router, another cable, or your modem, or your ISP, or the Twitch servers, the ingest, or anywhere along that whole route, if anywhere can't handle the bitrate you're trying to send, it'll just... And then it'll kind of restart itself and you'll be okay for a bit, and then it'll... Again, it's all to do with network. It's got nothing to do with graphics at all. Everyone jumps to graphics as the first solution for everything, but it's very rarely actually the thing... Um, yeah, we're not talking frame rate, we're talking bitrate. <laughs> Still blame Twitch's service for all this. So do I, but they said no. They said they can't help. Um, but I added my voice to the chorus, so if there's enough, like, if enough other people are saying they're having the same issue, then their, their ticketing system should show that they're having a lot of reports on that one particular thing, and hopefully they'll fit, like, it'll prompt them to look into it. But I doubt it. I reckon that they've just done... Like an upgrade. They were talking recently that um, the Oceanic ingest servers, there's only, at the moment, there's only Oceanic 2 and Oceanic 3. Um, there used to be an Oceanic 1, and a while back there was only a 1 and a 3, and then before that there was only a 1 and a 2. It looks like they've been taking them down to do maintenance or whatever it is. And uh, what's, pr like, potentially what's happening is that 2 isn't enough for the incoming stuff. And they need the third, but they're not going to buy, like, they're not going to set up an entire fourth server to cover the, it'll be too much redundancy once they've got all three back up and running while they're, after they've done all the upgrades and maintenance and whatnot. It just, yeah, it's, it's not fun for now, but, like, so many ANZ partners are having the same issue. So many. So I'm assuming that's what's it, and then once they get that sorted, it'll be fine again. But we'll see. We'll just have to keep tweaking. And if I if I you know have another drop out within the next couple of weeks, then I'll I'll start looking at it again. <clears throat> Do you have a built computer? I mean, it's not in parts. Yes, of course it's built. What? I don't understand what you. Do you, are you asking if I built it or if somebody else built it or something? If the computer wasn't built, it wouldn't function. I'm just a little bit confused about the question. Um, I still blame Twitch's service for all this. Yeah, uh, I'm struggling to even think up a reason why. Uh, do editing RC stuff, it's almost always graphic card for us. Yeah, no, mine's, uh, mine's live, so it's almost always internet for us. Almost always internet, network, etc. Makes sense for that kind of work. Uh, bitrate does sound like it could be it though. Never did streaming, live feed isn't what we had to work with. Codex and graphics cards are normal bane. Uh, a custom build, yeah, like years ago, and this is a very recent issue. Very recent issue. Bitrate is it. Like, there's no, no. So let me explain the situation. Every so often, the stream would just die, and when I look at my OBS with all of its data and stats, there's a little box that's green currently, thankfully, and that can go yellow or red when it gets too low or if it's unstable or like if it spikes really high it'll go red and stuff as well so it basically gives you an indication of how stable your connection is and it has the kabips kb per second i call it kabips because it's easier to say and it's cute um and so that will tell you what your current bit rate is what it's streaming at and at the moment we're sitting at 6210 6199 6123 6072 6219 it's all average like it's all it's all pretty good it's fairly goddamn stable every so often it would drop to zero and then it'd come back and it would jump to 12k and then it'd get back to 6k and sit there for a bit and then drop to zero and then jump to 12k and then come back to 6k it is very specifically my bit rate i know that that is the issue the problem then becomes what causes the funky bit rate 
Yeah. So that's like, I do know semi what I'm doing. <laughs> I know enough about this stuff to use my Google foo for the rest of it. Um. <clears throat> Uh, maybe it's like my higher IT where they do upgrades, which is to say they knock out the system a bit longer than planned. Look, potentially. Potentially. Big burb. Where's the big burb? What? Oh, was there one like on the screen with me or something? I'm very confused. What happened? <laughs> what is going on? Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Honestly, I'm getting to the point where I'm streaming out. I'm streaming out. Shooning out the stream captain bot posts. Because there are so, like, when I, when we start a thing, there are just so many of them. So I kind of just, like, read the username and sort of skip over them. Usually I look for colors. Like, I look for the, the change in color because it's always the same color. But today, Zam's name color is the same as the goddamn stream captain bot. There have been a couple of times I've come very close. Like, there'll be this big thing of stream captain bot posts with Zam in the middle, and I'll nearly miss it. Like, goddamn. <laughs> goddamn. You, Zam. But no. <laughs> Correct. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm honestly considering, like... I know having the posts there can, like, remind people to do it and stuff. But... It just, I can't, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it feels like it's becoming a bit much at the start of, um, at the start of uh, placement periods and stuff. I'm not sure. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to look at it. Uh, like when the stream drops happen, does your net connection overall drop or just stream upload? Just stream upload. Occasionally everything drops, but that's kind of fixed. When we got the new router, that fixed that. So I'm assuming that the router that was six or seven years old just reached the end of life and it was done. Um, so dad sent me this one and that's been working perfectly since. I think we've had one proper dropout where Jas got disconnected as well. Um, but only like only one. And I mean, that kind of stuff happens occasionally. Uh, not, not very occasionally, but yeah. So, but no, there's only been once that it kicked me out of WoW as well. And that was the same time that it kicked Jas out. God, Sam, can you burp on command? Unfortunately not. It'd be nice though, because you get like gas and stuff that builds up and it kind of hurts. It'd be really nice to be able to just kind of straighten up and release it and get rid of that air. Get rid of that discomfort, but no. Uh, no, I cannot. I just have to suffer through it until it decides to dislodge itself. Welcome on in. Hope you're having a fantastic day, fan of burp. Uh, help. So that I reckon, oh god, I, mm. When I drink fizzy drink, it's just non-stop. It's constant. It's redonkulous. Ugh. Yeah. Constantly. Which is kind of good, though, because, like, if that, if the gas from the fizzy bubbles gets any lower in your digestive tract, it, oh, it really starts to hurt. Like, that hurts so much worse. Mm, cannot spell. Totally okay. Totally fine, Seeker. I mean, I probably couldn't spell at the moment either. Thankfully, I'm speaking... And even then, I don't speak too good sometimes. <laughs> oh, just drop me a hydrate. Mm. Dreadfully uncomfortable, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to do the, uh, the mount makeup I was supposed to do today. Because I think it was going to be kind of cool. But, uh... Oh well. You know, it, it is what it is. No, I'm not telling you, because I'll use it later. <clears throat> fun, not fun migraine at work today. Oh, tight deadline. I've not made yet. Oof. Was it to people guess? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I don't have my makeup on today. Um, because I just had a really big, like a really big day. Um... And it kind of got down to the point where it's like, do I stop what I'm doing right now and go do my makeup or do I get this done, which really needs getting done and skip the makeup? And I made the decision to get the thing done. Um, Cause it was important and it needed doing and now it's done. So I did that and then I stuck on, I used my contour 
with a fluffy brush to put it in my crease just to get a bit of shape there. And I've got um, Super Shock Shadows from Colourpop, actually. Um, blah. This one is the... Did you switch this back to... I did! I did. If you are wanting... Look at it. If you're wanting screen caps from that, I can send it to you if you're trying to, like, figure out what you're doing. So that's what I'm wearing on my lids, and I just put that on with my pinky finger. Just smeared it on my lids, and then whacked some lashes on, and I was done. Um, but yeah, Jack, if, you're, if your puzzle brain has attached itself to this problem, I'm more than happy to send you whatever data you need or want um, to crack the, crack the case, as it were. Excuse me. Saving my makeup for next stream. Oh, absolutely. Well, the way that it works for my mount makeup, I skip one and I move that down to like the end of my list, which at this point is like the 1st of June. So you'll forget all about this by the time we get there. It'll be great. <clears throat> um, still working. Right now, Rachel 2.30, got kids, locked back on at home, clicked house my 5.20 to food shopping. This is my downtime that I'll work after. Later Seeker's problem? Yeah, I'm probably going to be doing some work after stream as well, honestly, just because today was so bloody big. Uh, I didn't get time to do anything I needed to do. Uh, I'm supposed to be day jobbing tomorrow, so that'll be... That'll be fun. Having this time out chatting with online pals. Yay! Use boots at Catalyst Creation, lol. You made tier boots, is that what you're saying, Icy? Well done. Well done. Hey, look, you've got tier face. That's what matters, right? In office tomorrow. Mmm. Made tier boots, I didn't know. Mmm. Oh well. You got a tier piece now. Fantastic. Mm, Spawned us a human sister, okay, though, isn't it? Yay for transmog. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Very welcome. I have to go the long way for this one, but that's okay. I've got uh, eight minutes to get there. The humans, extra three odd hours, adds my day in trouble. Yeah, that's that's the worst bit. Unless you can find a way to be like productive on the public transport or productive in the travel somehow. It uh, yeah. Not fun at all. Um, I'm not working during that. Oh no, not necessarily work. Um, so sorry when I when I say get work done, most of what I do I consider work because it is all work of some kind or another. Like if I needed to be on public transport, I could be editing photos on my phone, or I could be like, do you know what I mean? Like I could be doing that kind of stuff while I'm traveling if I had to. Um, or if you're driving, you could be like catching up on a podcast or listening to an audiobook or, or something like that. Um, vast majority of what I do is not recreational. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. It's, uh, it's a thing. <laughs> Welcome back. I must say, it was the only bonus work from home. Wake up, log on, consider pants later. Yep. PJs have won many days. Exactly. So you can wake up five minutes before start, eat during the meeting. Yep. Yeah, I know that feel. I, 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 you, huh? I'm gonna work in makeup suits, etc. required. Yep. Recreation in this economy. Yeah, apparently not, hey. Apparently not. My home was bliss. Take photos of my work from home setup for HR. Email expressly said, please ignore my Uggs. I didn't plan on photographing my feet today. <laughs> uh, work from home just kind of felt like it respected your time more. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of a summary of the sentiment, hey Jack. Yep. Yeah. 
You are in for a treat. Uh, that's certainly actually quality connectivity wise at home. Yeah, my remote servers do run a little slow, like not as quickly as if it were on the computer that I was actually working on. Uh, but yeah, everything else, yep, absolutely, 100%. Good job, it's 100%, 99.99% it seems work from home. It can be a little difficult to train someone remotely, like getting a sense for what and that you know even though it's a minor delay in voice communications it can make it a little bit tricky and then like uh quality if you have a network issue like a connection issue and they can't quite see what you're doing properly because the recording quality drops or the, the screen share and all that stuff like there are benefits to training in person but the vast majority of it can be done remotely i reckon kids at home was rough a bit of chair more space my desk and more mounted monitors Yes, both those things. Be fair, I'm going tomorrow for a welcome lunch. I mean, yeah, I would too. First record on home was with the two and a five year old at home. Oh no. Oh no. Hey, Sammy, how you doing? Welcome on in. Ooh, we're going to have battle soon. And the ad just finished as well. Perfection. Wonderful. And. This natural break in, com in communications gives us a chance to have a chat about pancreatic cancer. So we're back to the point in the list because I have a thing of, like, I have a PDF of talking points. Um, and I'm kind of going through like clump at a time every time a battle comes up. I feel like it works. So this, this clump of, of data is uh, some celebrities that have died from pancreatic cancer to kind of like, if you don't know anyone, who, who has had or who has passed away from pancreatic cancer, maybe this will kind of make that human connection a little bit for you, maybe? I don't know, let's see. If you have any additions to this, of course, just you know, throw them on out there. But uh, RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, she was US Supreme Court Justice and an absolute icon, as the list says. Uh, and she passed away from pancreatic cancer. Alex Trebek, host of Jeopardy. Uh, Alan Rickman who, it, it says here, actor who played Professor Severus Snape in Harry Potter, but like, we all know he did a whole lot more than that. Pancreatic cancer. Steve Jobs, Patrick Swayze, and uh, Sally Ride, who was the first American woman in space. All of them. Pancreatic cancer. So that's what we're doing today is fundraising for Pank One Network, a network of international hospitals and an international network of hospitals and cancer research institutes who are trying to find treatment options for pancreatic cancer um, to help raise the survival rate, which is currently at 8%, which is ridiculous. And if this, if this research had been funded when it should have been funded a while ago, there is a small chance that we might have still have some of those people with us. Um... And of course, you know, all of the other people out there who may not be famous or celebrities who have unfortunately been lost to this disease. So, good news is the research is happening. It just needs more funding. Uh, Draz, Totti, Martin, Demon, Seeker, Great, Fort, Kopf, and Zem. Congratulations to all of you on your bonus ship. Well done. Uh, but if you'd like to help Pank One push forward with that research, and find some treatment options, you can do so. There are several ways. You can type exclamation pank one uh, or exclamation tiltify into chat to get the link. Uh, Koalatron will every so often drop a link as well. Uh, same thing, same link. The, uh, no, I think it's above me directly at the moment because we're in stream rate is good. There's a QR code uh, at the top corner. Excuse me. Uh, that can... Uh, if you scan that with your phone, it'll send you t straight to the donate page as well. And if you scroll down under the video player, there's a little purple and yellow panel. It's the very first panel, top left, uh, and that is linked to the donate page as well. If you're not able to donate today, that's totally okay. I completely understand. I myself am in the same financial position. It's not super great, but you can do what I'm doing. Not streaming. I get that. Sharing the word. I can't contribute myself, so what I am doing, what I can do, is use my platform and use my connections to spread the word and to raise some funds. And that's what we're doing today, and we're doing bloody well. Uh, so if you do have any social media networks, or you have friends, family, loved ones, those kind of people who you can drop the link to and say, hey, have you seen, have you heard of this? Um, this is a thing that's going on. Uh, they don't have to jump in Twitch. There's no requirement for that whatsoever. 
um, anybody using that link can contribute to the cause just by following it and just by doing the bits and pieces there. I think there are payment options of both PayPal and credit card if you prefer one or the other. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's, uh, that's what we're doing today. We're talking about how serious it is and somber and, you know, extremely problematic that it's only at an 8% survival rate over the five years. That's just ridiculous. Uh, but also looking at the positives in that this is happening. This is going to change. It just takes time and money. We may not be able to give our time. I mean, I am at the moment. I'm giving my time doing the doing the thing. Um, but uh, we may not be able to do the research ourselves. But we can certainly help fund uh, those who can do it. Yas. <clears throat> Where are we up to? Great. How are you? Very well, thank you, Sammy. Much appreciated. Thank you for hoping. I uh, hope. Thank you for asking. Uh, last year, training two new team members who stood on the first day of a lockdown also sucked. I can imagine. Battle. It means it's time for a recap. Absolutely. Absolutely. I uh, just wait Insta post. So you need more hydrogen. <laughs> it was a good clip. I. L that was a really good clip. Really good clip. Miss the quietness. My home office versus the work one. Yeah, I can imagine. Alan Rickman was one. Absolutely. A few new restart, few new styles recently. It's harder to just hey gather around, check this out. Yeah, for sure. New thing before it was said. You did well done. Go you. And we have a hydrate. Which I'm gonna do. Mm. No, definitely not a fun thing. A very shit thing. Very sad for his family and friends. Yeah, and and honestly, for like a lot of us, he was exceptionally talented and and had a very particular way of expressing and and all that. You know, he's. He was very skilled at what he did, and, you know, the world lost an entertainer through that. And, you know, entertainment may not say, and, you know, like, celebrity is so, you know, far removed from us and all that kind of stuff that it's kind of like, why why should we care and that kind of thing. But um, a lot of celebrities, they're so well known because they do what they do so well, and entertainment is a very, very important part of the human experience. Um, you know, we can we can do all these essential improvements and, and necessary things, but without joy is life worth living. So entertainers, though they may be may, may be raised to a higher platform than perhaps they should be, they do still serve a very important part of society, uh, and that is recreation, entertainment, and joy. Um, or, or fear, it's feeling, you know, horror movies exist. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, feeling stuff rather than just uh, plodding on through. Yes, Hans Gruber. Indeed. Thanks, Sam. Thank you very much. Much appreciate. This issue with this great attention drawn to this important issue. I agree. I agree. It can uh, it can be difficult trying to get the messages out there in a in a way that's digestible, you know? I really remember minor stroke in 2015 when they were looking into that. They found his pancreatic cancer. Died in January 2016. As I said before, we'll say it again. Fuck cancer. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um... God, I can't believe. Six years ago. It's been six years? Far out. Hmm. Time flies. Time has been flying for way long. Oof, it needs to slow down. <laughs> Time needs to take a chill pill. Goodness. Alrighty. Got some more hydrates. Mm. Uh, past two years don't exist. Yeah, but that still puts it at four years. Like, that's still a long time. That's the same year I was diagnosed with my knee stuff. Jesus. Feels like forever ago. Far out. Oh dear. Golly gosh. <clears throat> Last year, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, uh, time only gets faster as like a snowball rolling down the mountain. Faster and hits harder the longer it goes. That sounds horrible, Thor. That I need- it needs to stop. <laughs> it needs to stop. I'm thinking bushfires were last year. Oh. We didn't really get a break, did we? We really didn't get a break. <clears throat> Good morning, Zalk. How are you doing? Welcome back. Okay. Leo was the. I think this is the 19th tomb? I think it's the 19th. I don't mind it, makes good things hit harder too. That is a really beautiful way to think about it, Thor. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. It also means that we've had longer to work towards those bigger wins as well. I mean, like, you know, as a as a seven-year-old, getting a chocolate bar is a big win. But when you get to when you get to 32, having a chocolate bar is kind of a like a yeah, okay, cool, what's next? So But you've got you've had the time to put the years of putting things in place so that the big good things happen. Sorry, um, today was big for a few reasons, um, and I don't, I don't, like, I'm not comfortable saying really much at all, if, if anything, um, but what you just said kind of wiggled into my brain in a very particular way and has made me feel and think some things in relation to a big thing that happened today. So um, everything is fine before anyone gets any kind of worried. Everything is totally okay. Everything is fine. This is neither good nor bad or any, like there's nothing, it's all good. Everything, well no, not all good. Nothing is anything, it's fine. Um, but there's a decision that I have to make um, and it's not a small one. Um, so I will tell you when I'm ready to tell you, I promise you that much, cause it will, it will affect everything. <laughs> <laughs> when I say a big decision, I'm not, it, I'm not bullshitting. Um, so, but yeah, just that, that particular sentence kind of did a thing. So thank you. Appreciate it. Ah, uh, just a big decision. Hi, I'll get me back to the moment. Process lots of stuff. Yeah. You have the moment you need. No, you're supported. Thank you, Seeker. Thank you. I'm sure you probably noticed the thing in mod chat. Um, oh, but yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah. Nothing is bad. Nothing is good. It's not all, like, it's not big exciting news that I'm keeping from you, but it's also not, like, bad. Um, if, yeah. It's got nothing to do with medical. It's nothing to do with, like, it, it's... Yeah, it's all just, yeah. What happens no, <laughs> no, no, no. I figured you might've checked into Discord after you checked into chat or something. I'm not sure. Like there's no, to be clear, I, you are never under the obligation to like read things when I post them. It's not, it's not like that at all. If, if I needed something from you, it would more likely be like a DM or I'd tag you or something like that. But no, it was just kind of a general heads up. Um, because I thought I might need some support in, in ways that mods can actually do that have no <laughs> bearing on much really, but it's, yeah, it look, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, and I mean, it, oh, okay. Cool. Cause it was like the, the, the like looking dead, like the, the face was kind of like the, 
I thought you were like, I missed something, God damn it. And that was why I launched into the, you don't have to check things immediately. I'm so sorry. Uh, I roll alts for Shah with another tune on RP Realm sitting out there, parked so I go back and forth, but Shah is so annoying. Uh, Shah's not too bad, especially like, I like doing it on stream because, or like if you're doing something else in the background, because um, like you can just kind of check in every time it's up, whack a tag on, change tunes, park, kind of, but it's, yeah, it's definitely, you need to be doing other things, otherwise it's boring as hell. Try to remain thinking of positive side anymore. Gotta try to find them. Yeah, it's actually something that I've um I've been told off for a few times in my personal life. Um, when I started therapy, when I started going to see my psych, um, I wouldn't say that I was pessimistic, but I did tend to get weighed down by stuff a lot. Like if something bad happened, it was like, oh no, this is gonna have far reaching things. But it was like the anxiety responses, like the spiraling type deal. Um, and one of the things I learned really early on that I put in my, my mental health toolbox was uh, the ability to look for a silver lining. You know, well, this horrible thing has happened. Well, at least that's a thing. Um, and it got to the point where I started, like, sometimes I really have to look for it. But sometimes it just kind of pops into my head and it's okay and I just kind of come out with it. But sometimes you're not looking, you're not supposed to be looking for a positive. Sometimes you're just meant to be commiserating. Um, so it has gotten me in a couple of trouble when, when someone's just like so upset. And it's like, well, at least you don't have to do this anymore. And they're kind of like, and I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it has gotten me a couple of, into a bit of trouble. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely the same. Like, even if it's the most horrible, terrible situation, um, uh, like, for example, $23, $23, $23,000 of dental work. But at the end of it, my teeth are going to be perfectly straight, like perfectly straight and white. I'm going to have an influencer smile. Um, that's a positive lining to the two surgeries and 23 grand I have to drop. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, not that I'm telling you what to do. I've noticed you like listening to the cards. Hope you get a time to consult them. That's a fairly recent thing. Um... I kind of got a bit curious about them and I was getting drawn to them and then um, having a conversation with someone completely unrelated to all that kind of stuff and then it turns out she uses them and so we started talking about them. There were just these kind of little universe hint dropping type of little things and I kept feeling myself drawn and drawn and drawn and so I thought bugger it let's get a deck and that way when I feel that draw I can act on it. Um, and I'm actually planning on doing, yeah, I'm, I'm planning on doing a spread. Just not because, I don't, okay, so I used, what we're talking about is tarot cards. Um, I have a deck here that is absolutely gorgeous, um, but I don't use them for divination purposes. That's like, there's a lot of people out there who use them to like predict the future or, or whatever, um, or make, make court, like solid decisions and stuff like that. And I mean, what I'm approaching here is I need to make a decision and it's going to have far reaching consequences in in all like positive and negative no matter what choice I make it's gonna be a thing um so uh it's not so much that I'm asking the cards what do I do it's more you you draw them and see what happened like you, you place them all out and then you read what they mean because I don't know what they mean because I'm very new to all this um and see what jumps into your head like when it says and I use this I use this all the time it's like you know, someone in your life is holding you back and your brain goes, oh, it's Susan. I changed it up for you. Oh, that must be Susan. And, and then you kind of go, hang on. Why do I think Susan's holding me back? Why is that where my brain has gone first? Is this a toxic, like, is this a friendship that I'm in? That I'm in? Is this a toxic friendship? Is this something that I might need to, I'm not saying the cards are telling me I have to cut out Susan. It's more an, uh, uh, an, uh, an examination of why your brain went there. Is there a problem with that relationship? Because that's where your brain went. Is that problem on my, do I have a problem with something that's happening? Or has she been expressing a problem with me? Or like, what's the deal? And how do we move forward with this? Not necessarily a cutoff, but how do I move forward? Sometimes forward is with a person, sometimes it's without. All sorts of fun stuff. But so that's how I use the cards is an opportunity for self-reflection. I draw it, I see what it means, I listen to my brain's first response, and then I question that response to see 
see if I can dive a bit deeper into my subconscious to see how I really feel about something. Like, where am I being drawn? What's going on? Yeah. Um, I snow all always. I did good. But yeah, so I am, I'm definitely going to do a spread and just see what it says. Um, I'm also going to call my parents. Yeah, it's, it's one of those kind of decisions. Like, it's a big one. <laughs> but we'll get there. It'll be fine. Uh, you know how you can make this big day a great one by making fear reach 1k followers on Insta. Oh my god, could you imagine? <gasps> could you imagine if today's the day? 9.96. Four more to go. <sighs> That'd be one hell of a sign. Anyway. Um, I mean, I did as it was posted. I'm so sorry. Anxiety is some plus sides. I always know about every contact someone has made with me when it happened. Oh, look, hey, if important things are happening with your deadlines and stuff like that, Seeker, please put us on mute. Like, nothing I post in there will ever be as important as what is going on in your life. This is a this is a volunteer for funsies position. Like, V! Hello! V with the resub 10 months Twitch baby. Absolutely. Hello! How are you? I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for the resub. This person is correct. Yes, follow on social media. Following is a free way to support streamers and makes a huge difference. Surprising, but true. Yeah. 1,000 followers is a trigger for the algorithm, which allows fear to get more visibility and more possibly opportunities for sponsorship. Because the more followers I have, the more brands are going to be willing to actually uh, fork over some cash. Uh, <laughs> the, yes, the all my links will send you to a list of all my platforms. You can follow all the socials. Uh, Instagram does a wiggle, so you can follow that and, and follow that and click there. Or you can scroll just down um, in the about Fiamma bar. If you look all the way at the side, it's got an Instagram button. If you click that and then you can click follow super quick and easy. Should take you no more than 20 seconds. And if you keep scrolling, there's a purple and yellow little box there, top left of all the panels, uh, which is where our fundraiser is for today for Pank One. So Pank One Network of hospitals and cancer research institutes trying to squish pancreatic cancer. Which I think is a very good cause, which is why I'm throwing my stream behind it today. Her being fear also other creators in contact. Yes, absolutely. Look, it all someone clipped that thing. <laughs> I mean, you know you have a clip button, right, Seeker? It should be on your mod dashboard now. You can put it there if you'd like. Big purple button. You can click, it makes a clip. That was great. Ah, oh dear. But yeah, uh, following on social media is a fantastic way to support any content creators of any type uh, that you want to support. And it is totally free. Uh, dentist always tries to offer me whiter teeth without realizing if you're the too white on a black person, it looks weird. Oh dear. Yeah, mine are yellow as hell and I'm quite pale, so they're terrible. You know how they say that like a red lip makes your teeth look whiter? It doesn't for me. They're not, they're not like coffee stained or cigarette stained or anything like that. I just have a terrible enamel uh, from when I was a kid. So um, yeah, they're not, they're not great. That's why I also have like so many fillings and so many dental issues in general uh, is just, I have terrible teeth. Um, so we're fixing them up and I'm going to make them look nice so that when I actually, I can, all my photos, like every, all the photos you see of me smiling, um, it's, it's like this. I'd love to be able to smile with my teeth. I, I really, truly would, but I just do not feel comfortable doing it. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I have to get Invisalign. Here's the thing. Uh, I need to get a crown on a tooth that's had a re-root canal. It, it failed, so they, they redid that. They need to put a crown on that tooth, but the crown won't fit because when the root canal failed, um, part of the tooth broke off, so it had, like, a thinner tooth with, like, a gap there, and the tooth next to it shifted into that gap. So now they can't fit the crown on. So I have to get Invisalign to move one tooth out the way so they can put a crown on. But you can't do Invisalign on one tooth. You've got to do a full tray, top and bottom, which is four grand, roughly, give or take. So while they're fixing that one there, it does not affect the price of the Invisalign to get anything else. Like the more you could fix every, you could move every single tooth in your jaw and it will cost the same as moving one. So I have a couple of very, very minor cosmetic issues where like, instead of my teeth being like this, one of them is like this 
like the tiniest little overlaps and things like that. But I might as well fix them up because we're in there already. It's not going to cost me any extra. So we're going to fix them up and they're going to be bloody perfect. And you can put whitening gel in Invisalign in the trays right in there. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> Dropping all this cash, might as well have them look sparkling. Ah, oh, a lot cheaper than bloody veneers as well. Anyway. <laughs> I had many great faces, FYI. Yeah, I was eating beans before and now I'm feeling kind of nauseous. So that's fun. Poor Susan. Uh, look, I've used Karen a couple times. And uh, I think it was Seeker pointed out that last time I used Susan. So I'm trying to switch between people. Reason the name to lazy Susan after God damn it, Susan. Uh, you're basically using tarot cards as a sounding board and a therapist. Yeah, yeah. Because I've already paid for them and now it's free. And now it's free. From from here on in, all the uses are free. I don't think there's any harm in that, honestly. Like, as long as it doesn't become an addiction where you're like you cannot make a single decision. You can't choose what color shirt to wear unless you consult the cards. Um, or if you're constantly telling people, you're, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I, what I want to have for lunch at the cafe and you pull out the deck, it's like, choose a card and it'll tell you what to have for lunch. Like, as long as you're not, like, if, as long as it's not affecting your life in that deeper way, I, I do not see an issue with this kind of stuff, personally. Um, totally okay if others do. I, I get that. I respect your, your decisions and your choices. Um, but, uh, I just hope I'm not judged for this. It's a little way to dive a little deeper into my brain and see what I actually want. Get the logic bit out of the way. You know, because your logic your logic center might be screaming, this is the only way. But then your, your heart wants something different. You know, it's um, get to the root of what you really want and need. Uh, and then make decisions with the new information you have gleaned from yourself with the assistance of a bit of cardboard. Karen that's holding you back though. I mean it could be. It certainly could be. I feel sorry for Karen and Susan and Amy sort of going to the dumps like Karen. <laughs> nah. I have no issue with either of them as long as they don't come anywhere near me. <laughs> Honestly though if I met someone called Karen it would be totally fine unless they started acting like the stereotypical Karen and that and then it'd be like uh now we done. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, Karen had it coming though. Uh, not discipline hypnotism. It's you supporting yourself through the thing and telling yourself you can do it. You use hypnotism to deal with my needle phobia. Hasn't gotten rid of it, but made it manageable. I dealt with my needle phobia and made it manageable by getting stabbed a whole lot. I don't have hyperventilation anymore. I don't cry anymore. I don't shake anymore. I never passed out. I did used to like make lots of noise, like not necessarily screaming. But like, it's like the anxiety coming out my throat and like being noisy. I don't know. It's really hard to explain. Like I, I didn't feel like I was yelling, but I knew that the noise I was making was loud, if that makes sense. Um, but when you're having like four or five sets of shots a, a month, um, it's either get used to it or like be in a constant state of bad. <laughs> so I just kind of like... I'm still not great. I'm still not great. I still get really kind of shaky and um, and it's still not not easy to, to get a vein and all that, but I'm getting a lot I'm getting a lot better than I was. Um, so that's good. Uh, raising for a good cause. Absolutely what inspired today's charity choice, if I may ask. They asked me to. The stream today is sponsored by the Pank One Network. My goods are crafted. They they sent me a couple emails because I was recovering from surgery and didn't read the first couple, so they sent me some more, um, just explaining who they were and what they were doing, and uh, when when they were looking for people to fundraise for them and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I read about it. I went and did some more research, and I'm like, yeah, this is this is something I can get behind. And so I emailed them back and I said, I'm so sorry, it's taken me a week to get to you. I've been recovering from surgery. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> Three left. Oh my god, hitting F5 a lot here. <laughs> she kind of did a little seeker's choice this time. What's a clip kidding, of course. Can smile with confidence after. Exactly, absolutely. 
It's the Cathedral of Light. All right, I can do that. Mm, four grand. Yep. From Vizalan. Too bad they can't bond. No, the tooth then crown. <laughs> Eventually the tooth would fall out of my face. The problem with my failed root canals is that there was what they, so the, the top one, they thought they could see there, there was a smudge, like the tiniest of smudges on the x-rays that could have been infection. It could have been. So either they go, ah, you know, it's probably not. It's fine. Let's put a crown on it. And then years later, the, the infection has developed a whole lot and they have to drill through the $1,600 crown to fix the issue and then put another crown on it to, to cover that. Or they just go in there and they fix it all and then and so make sure it is perfectly clean and then put a crown on it, which is what we elected to do. Um, they did give me the choice, but I, I said, no, let's do that. Um, the one down the bottom here, um, I've got a hunk of titanium in my jaw now um, for an implant. No, no crown there. There's an implant. It was another failed root canal. It failed five, I want to say it's five times, um, because I never got a crown on it because I couldn't afford it because crowns are fucking expensive. Um, so Cathedral of Light engage. Um, so it failed and it failed and it failed and it failed and it got to the point where there wasn't enough natural tooth left because every time you put another filling in because you do the you do the root canal but then you still put a filling on top of that to to cover the hole that you made to deal with the root canal right um, but every time they do that they have to prepare like prep the surface of the tooth so that it bonds properly and every time they do that it wears away a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more of the natural tooth it got to the point where the natural tooth above the gum was completely gone so they weren't going to be able to do a crown. Uh, not sorry, weren't going to be able to do a uh, a filling in that to then put a crown on because there just wasn't anything for it to bond to. Um, plus, when they did the X-rays, um, there was a it was very infected. There was there was a lot of like they said that if it wasn't a root canal, like if I if I hadn't have had the root canal done because the root canal removes the nerve from the tooth, right? So the tooth cannot feel anymore. They said if I could feel it, I'd be in unbelievable agony 24 7 because of how much infection there was down in in the bone in my jaw because it's a tooth sits in in the jaw so if there's an infection at the tip of the tooth that infection is in the jawbone so I went into surgery first surgery they extracted the tooth so they went in cut my gum and pulled it back and cut the tooth into pieces and pulled it out and then cleaned out the inside of my jawbone and had to put a bone graft in because enough of the bone was missing after that that there wasn't enough to put the implant in. The implant would have held in because there was nothing to hold it. So they put a bone graft in, stitched me up, and I went away and healed for four months. After four months, they checked. Perfection. It was healed like like textbook. It was um, just done. Amazing. Um, perfect height, perfect width, perfect density. Everything was exactly where it should have been. Um, so then we booked in second surgery, and that's when they put the titanium implant in. Uh, and then again, stitch me all up and then that healed it healed quite a bit faster so currently i have it's almost like a screw in so you've got like the the jaw bone and then there's the screw that screws into the bone and then above the bone there's like a disc like the, it's just a metal disc it looks like with a hole in the middle and that's the top of the that's the top of the implant after four months, they're going to do another x-ray. Um, when they did an x-ray to check up straight after surgery, everything's exactly where it should be. Great angle, great depth, all that. Um, and so they go in and they basically, they do a talk test. Not talk as in what I'm doing. Uh, talk as in T-O-R-Q-U-E. Um, it's physics. It, they yank at it, I think. I don't, I don't actually know what they do. But they're going to make sure that it's healed solidly enough that it can withstand like the pressure of chewing and, and moving and all that kind of stuff when there's a tooth on it. Um, so, and then once that's, once they're happy with that, the hole in the middle, they'll screw a post into that. And that post, so I'll have like a metal bit sticking up out of my jaw, rather than just sitting flat on the gum line, it'll stick up. And then that is what they put the crown on to make it look like a tooth. Yeah, <sighs> it's very expensive, very expensive, uh, but means I don't lose my jawbone. So I like that. Sunwell. Ah! Golly gosh, Blade, thank you so much for the resub. Much appreciated. 10 months. 
Far out. Anyway. Um, Greens want to get Medicaid. Okay, cover dental. I'm up for it. Yeah, they got to pay for it, though. They got to pay for it. Hey, all the emotes. Look at them go. Amazing. This is the only way. It doesn't work in emote only mode. That's super strange. Well, that's weird. Just noted for later. There's nothing we can do about that. It's an emote. I've uploaded as an emote. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Send a ticket to Twitch. Um, send a ticket to Twitch saying that you can't use an emote you've paid for in emote only mode. Um, they'll be able to have a look at it. Uh, when I have blood stun now. Oh, you just have a new phobia, got over it. By donating blood a lot. Love that. Love that. I can't, because autoimmune and um, meds and stuff. But that's okay. Uh, I do what I can, just that one I can't, unfortunately. Um, I don't have blood stun now. I can't loudly, like a very anxious, slightly disturbed person. Very anxious, slightly disturbed. And she's a good ambassador. Aw, oh, thank you, V. Thank you. Health is diabetes. We're gonna have five needles a day plus finger pricks. You should get used to it. Oh, I can imagine. I oh no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <gasps> two. Oh my god, we're so close. Titanium enhanced. Yep, it's my first step to becoming a vampire cyborg. Just that's what we're calling it. Good. Zalk, Litter, Zam, Aelin, Great, and Thor. Congratulations to all of you on your bonus Well done. This is not a drill. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. See, I'm holding out till it hits 999. Yeah, look, we. That wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I was just thinking the same thing. Because you were talking measure of twisting bending power, making sure it isn't going to just break off. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. But every time I say it, like they talk and talk, <laughs> I have to explain it. Because, yeah. Because, I mean, especially when it's to do with like your jaw and dental, like a talk test. Maybe they just want me to like read something aloud a whole bunch and see if it does anything bad. It it's actually like a lid it could possibly be slightly legit if you really dug into it, but that's not what it means. Uh, <laughs> Make a second account. Ah! Uh, hey a rat, how you doing? Welcome on in to chat. She for a few months kept forgetting to say anything. That's okay, not a worry. We love our lurkers as well. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, sorry, it sounded like there was fighting going on. There is, but it's jewels. It's not, um, what's it? Oh, look at this. We're getting close. Getting close. Boogie down. Oh, so just take my blood piece. Yeah, plenty of O plus to go around. Ah, yes. Uh, thank you so much for giving blood when you can. That's, that's really awesome. Um, I've never had to have a blood transfusion, but I, I can only imagine that one day I might, and I will be exceptionally thankful to everyone who's been able to donate up to that point, because who knows, who knows what I'll get from who, you know, like it's blood and blood products are super needed. Uh, but yes, uh, everyone feels a hype building, plus fear is a vampire, I mean there's that too. Um, right. Oh, goodness gracious. I can do a stretch. I probably need a stretch. Oh. Oh. That made some noises. I saw that, Seeker. Having fun there. It's it's almost a sense of ticking things off a to-do list, but you didn't have to do anything. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. This is twenty-one. Oh god, I'm far short of where I needed to get today to get fifty done by one Friday. Oh boy, Ooh, another stretch. Uh, I've got blood transfusion. Make sure you check. Cancer regularly blood transfusion risk of cancer increases. Interesting. I didn't know that. I wonder what the mechanic of that is. Like, why does it cause... Why, why does it make cancer more likely? Like, what is the... What do the blood products actually do to make it more likely to happen? Curious. I mean, they might not know yet. Like, I, I'm just kind of... 
I'm not demanding answers, more more just sort of musing aloud. I do that a lot. Hello, Daz. Welcome on in. Oh, did we forget to... We did. We did. Uh, how's it going? Very well, thank you, Justin. Excuse me. Summer, this place is in Kunlai Summit. It is where uh, a Shire of Angus spawns that drops a mount that's one in 2,000 drop rate. Right, okay, so um, we just did a battle, and when we do battles, I'm supposed to talk about this. So, the future of pancreatic cancer research. This is what we're funding. This is what the fundraiser is for. This is where the money is going. Um, the same level of research that has resulted in a substantial increase for the survival rates of prostate, breast, and skin cancer must be done for pancreatic cancer. This could potentially double its survival rate. Remember that the survival rate is 8% over a five-year period. If you're, don't, if you're just diagnosed with pancreatic cancer today, the chance that you will survive five years is just 8%. So we could double that to 16%, but it's going to take work. It's going to take work. The research will be conducted by the Pank One Network, an international coalition of hospitals, including John Hopkins, um, and some cancer research institutes as well. And this is international. It's across the world. Uh, we're working tire tirelessly to raise $10 million to fund the needed research. Of course, this is coming from lots of different places, not just my stream. Um, <laughs> lots and lots of different places, but um, streaming is one way that we can help fundraise. The uh, This is Storytelling, like, Tell a Story Day. Pank One is taking advantage of National Tell a Story Day um, to talk about the stories of people who have had uh, or who have survived or who have had loved ones fallen or survived uh, with pancreatic cancer. Um, and in order to, you know, talk about it, open up the conversation and then open up the wallets um, so that we can fund this. And they're aiming to raise 50,000 through this particular, uh, what's it, through this particular event. Not just through my stream. There are a bunch of streamers who are all participating this together, uh, but they are hoping that across all of those and a couple of other little... Uh, bits and bobs here and there, they're hoping to raise 50k towards that 10 million. Every little bit helps. Um, if you yourself are unable to contribute today, which I totally understand, I'm in the same boat, you can do what I'm doing. Not necessarily streaming, uh, but opening up this cause uh, to people who you know. That's what I'm doing. I'm telling you about it. I can't contribute because I'm flat broke. <laughs> I'm in a sticky medical financial situation myself. Uh, but what I can do is spread the word and, and create a fundraiser that others can donate to. So if you, you can either type exclamation pank one or exclamation tiltify into chat to get the link. Um, Qualitron is also posting it every half an hour, roughly. Um, there's also over, I think it's over there at the moment. Yes, the QR code is over there. Um, you can scan that on your phone and it'll take you to the same donation link. Or if you have a scroll underneath the video player, the very first panel, top left, is uh, purple and yellow, and that will take you to the donation link as well. So feel free to grab that dono link and send it wherever you feel comfortable. Your social medias, your discords, text messages, what, like WhatsApp, wherever wherever you feel comfortable sending it. Because um, who knows? You might send it to someone who sends it to someone who sends it to someone who is a billionaire. We don't, we don't know. We can't possibly know. So... <laughs> So that's the way to do it. Share it around and hopefully one of them will be able to donate on your behalf instead. Um, because you want to reject anything that's not naturally part of it. Yeah, but um, that's really interesting that that would create a higher risk for cancer specifically though. That's, it's really interesting. Uh, I can't research. Appendix exploded inside of me. I had to be in the hospital for 10 days in my 20s. It's in the paperwork that the risk goes up. Interesting. Well, I mean, I'm very sorry that you had to experience that. That blows. Um, I, so, I have, I have a science degree. And so whenever I hear about, like, funky medicine things or, or science things and stuff like that, my brain always goes to, like, ooh, how? So that, yeah. That, <laughs> That's kind of my, my sincere apologies if that came across as insensitive. I promise it was not my intention. Uh, but yes, I'm sorry that you experienced that. That would have really sucked. 
And it's very interesting that it's in the paperwork like that. There you go. It's been painful. Absolutely. It's impossible to completely verify blood in a transfusion is completely free of carcinogenic ingredients. Risk is minimal though. Okay. I mean, obviously, yeah, medical paperwork and stuff, they absolutely have to mention fucking everything. You know, it may result in personal injury, coma, or death. Um, but it's, you know, the, the standard disclaimer. But, um, yeah, that's really interesting. So it's just, it's impossible to think it's free of... Because I imagine that they, tr like, when they get blood products, you're not getting pure blood in a bag. Like, there's got to be something else that they put in there to do something with stability and all that kind of stuff, I'm sure. And I'm guessing that, yeah, they, they can't guarantee that those added ingredients, um, are going to be free of cancer, uh, can uh, carcinogenic substances, there you go. Or even if somebody, like... I wonder if someone who doesn't know they have cancer, because I mean, we all know now, obviously, that pancreatic cancer is incredibly, like, hard to find and all that kind of stuff. So maybe if you weren't aware you had it, but the cancer cells are in your blood, because they've got to get, you know, if you have a metastasized cancer, it's because cancer cells have gotten into the bloodstream, traveled somewhere else, lodged, and then continued growing, right? Um, so I wonder... I think it was a lymphatic as well. I don't remember. But I wonder if they can, like, if there's a really good way of checking the donated blood for that kind of stuff as well. Like, it's just... Wow, I never even thought of that. Huh. So I just you get them out on the next tune, and then those two new followers should add you. Boom. So now let it be so... Oh, look, fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. Although that might have been the last tune you were talking about. Absolutely amazing at your wealth of knowledge. Pank one, yas! Um, spend a large amount of time reading random stuff that interests me. I spend a large amount of time on Reddit. Uh, <laughs> looking through the current research, most of the modern studies and meta-studies seem to indicate that there isn't an increased risk from transfusions. Perhaps it was the understanding at the time it looks to be either untrue or at least more in question at the moment. Well, that's good. That's a, that's an improvement. At least. My mum was a microbiologist group looking at close-up pictures of viruses thinking they look pretty, but they do! They're terrifying and horrible, but they look pretty. But people can do, so... <laughs> oh, it is super interesting. I'm really glad that you were able to look at your experience from that, maybe even not, maybe not at the time, but looking at it later on through that lens. That's a, that's really cool. So the better part of my working career as a nurse, so I get the ooh, how, that sounds interesting kind of thing before anything else comes into my head. I'll be sitting there, like, someone will be giving me news about my own health, like, being uh, a person who has an autoimmune condition, things get all sorts of wonky all sorts of time. Um, and I'm always just kind of like, oh, okay, so how does that happen? And the, the specialist is always kind of like, when I've got a new specialist, they're kind of like, um, well... Uh, and then they kind of try to explain it in kids' terms, and then I go I go back and I'm like, oh, so that's because of this and this and this, and they kind of go, yeah, and then they start using not the kids' terms. So, like, <laughs> it's it's really kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, I, like, I figure if I learn as much as I possibly can about what's going on in my body, I'm going to be able to be a better patient. I'm going to be able to pay more attention to changes in my body and report those at an appropriate time. And, and like allow, the, you know, give them more information so that they're able to more appropriately treat me and my condition, right? That supposed to work like that, but we'll see. Two more on, I know how like, oh my gosh. It's not even just added ingredients. If you drink or smoke blood, blood content. Oh, of course. God, of course. Don't you have to like, isn't there, I mean, I am I was going to say, isn't there some, like, checklist you have to go through before you can give blood, but you can also just lie. Um, impossible to show blood is completely free of contaminants. Yeah. How do I donate? Um, Ali has dropped the link there for you. There's an, if you type exclamation tiltify, the same link will come up. Uh, the QR code over there can be scanned for the donate code. And underneath the channel, there's a panel that you can click to also donate. All of the options. All of the options. Oh, itchy nose. Nine, nine, nine. Oh, my lord. Ah! You know it's going to hit 1,000 and then it's going to drop back down and then hit it and drop and then hit it and drop and then hit it and drop. You know that, yeah? <laughs> um. Hey, Jay, thank you so much for the donation. 
Oh. I'm so your message didn't come up on stream. If you would like me to, I can I can read it for you, or you can say, but I'll thank you so much for your donation. Thank you for your generosity. But it's it is also on the um it'll be on the campaign page as well. Um thank you very, very much for your generosity. This is chat history, huh? <laughs> and I hit F5 on this. Oh, no, Dupe. <laughs> That's a little bit hilarious. I'm sorry to laugh at your expense, but good Lord. I keep a health journal. It's a brilliant idea. Yeah, absolutely, Turkeys. I um, I don't necessarily keep a health journal, like a, a full-on one of, of like daily things and stuff like that. But what I do do, if I do notice that something, <laughs> if I notice that something has changed, um, then I'll, I'll note stuff down. Like, uh, when my, cause my, um, my ceramic arthritis was in remission for 18 months. I had no symptoms, was on no medication. Everything was peachy keen. Uh, and then it, my knee swelled up again. And I had been, de at that point I'd been dealing with an extraordinarily itchy mosquito bite on the other leg. Cause it predominantly affects my knee. Uh, and it's my right knee. So as you're looking at me, it's on the left, but it's my right knee. And I got a, a mosquito bite on the back of the, like on the calf of my left leg, my left leg. And um, it got, I'm allergic to mosquito bites. So it got real big, real quick. Then it blistered and it burst and it blistered and it burst and it blistered, got infected and then burst um, over the course of like three days. <laughs> and then, uh, then my knee started swelling up and my knees, it, it kind of, it happened quick. It was like two days and it was back to enormous. Um, oh, Rel, thank you so much for the cheer. So generous of you, much appreciated. Thank you. Um, and so like I had in my, lo like when, when I noticed my knee started feeling funny, like the day after I got the mosquito bite, when I was walking on it, I could feel that it wasn't right. You know, when you just, you, you get that feeling and you're like, this is not how my knee normally feels, or this is not how my body does. Uh, and that's when I started looking. I had the date of the bite. I had the date it started feeling funny. I had each of the dates of like when I noticed changes in the mozzie bite and then when my knee hit maximum swelling and then like all this kind of stuff. So when I next saw my rheumatologist, I gave the, I gave her the dates and she was like, Okay, so I'm not going to say that it was absolutely the mozzie bite because we can't say that it's absolutely the mozzie bite, but it looks like it was the mozzie bite. So it, was an, it makes sense that an allergy would trigger an immune response, which would trigger my autoimmune symptoms. Like it just makes logical sense, but they can't obviously. And there's then having that causation doesn't necessarily help my treatment anyway, but it was helpful to kind of see what happened and why. Uh, you bet your butt I carry three different types of repellent in my goddamn handbag now because <laughs> I want to get this stuff under control, get back into remission, and then never have to stab myself in the leg ever again. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel that. Health journals are fantastic, especially if you have chronic illness. Hate when I lose my chat history. Me too. Oh my god. Blood is super screen, goes through so many checks before it makes it into recipient. Interesting. I mean, I imagine it would be. I just like wonder what the restrictions, are, like what the limitations of those screens are. Is the yeah? I'll just be saying I'm trying to get the one k. Multi celebrations is what I'm hearing. There are one thousand. <laughs> oh my god! Someone do another noise. Yeah, <laughs> yay for one hundred Instagram. I hope it's not a hundred, but nine hundred people have unfollowed. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my god, look at that, there's a comma. <laughs> oh wow. You guys rock. You guys oh look it's sure. You guys rock. You're all amazing. Like I could never have done any of this without you. And you know it, but just to remind you. You guys are awesome. 
Pre-2000 studies are generally in agreement. That may be down to poor conditions or unknown factors. I'd theorize poor healthcare quality, little to no restrictions on donation, maybe even high lead levels as possible factors. I can't speak with any real knowledge on that past reading couple studies. Yeah, I'd hate to be a doctor or nurse. I was at a wedding once. People pulled out the weirdest half-naked pictures of the mole on their ass shit. Yeah. I feel like if I was, I wouldn't tell anyone. I feel like if I was, I wouldn't tell anyone because there's just, you, you're absolutely right. Everyone, it's like, it's like when I tell people that I, I play video games for a living and then they kind of go, oh, so you, like, you must be really good with computers. I'm like, yeah, I built my baby. Like I, I've built, I think it's seven PCs at this point. And they're like, I'm having trouble with my computer. And I'm like, oh? <laughs> like, ah, uh, it just, it's a thing. It's a thing. Lamau, everyone, if he realizes, scream. Get ready to clip. Oh, it just, oh my goodness. Happens all the time? Yup. So just giving people to come and Google search most and encourage people to take a look themselves. Of course, absolutely. I don't know where the clip button is yet. Zam, stand by. Ah, oh, talk to Jas, because he'll be able to work. I, unfortunately, I don't have access to mod view. So I can't see how to bring it up, but there should be on mod view, like specifically on your moderator dashboard, there should be a box that has a bunch of really big buttons. Um, there might be one with a smiley face, which is emote only mode. There might be one with a star to do goals. Um, there would be the, the little crystal ball one to manage predictions. Uh, a green one that looks like a dollar bill that has a time on it. That's to run an ad of that length. Yeah, I know. Um, and then there are, there's one that's purple. And it looks like the clapboard from like the movies. And that one is to clip. If you can't see that one, there's a gray one with a little white plus on it. If you click that, you'll get all of your quick actions and you can take ones away. You can put new ones in. And at the very top, it says manage. And there's, you won't have all of these, but I have add stream delay, add stream marker, add stream marker with description, clip that and edit stream information. I know you won't have edit, only Jas has got edit stream information. He can change my title. Yep, he doesn't. But he can, if I'm playing the wrong game or whatever, he can jump, like if I've forgotten to change, he can jump in there and fix that for me so I don't get banned. It's great. Um, but yeah, so it's clip that with the little clapboard. That's the one you want to add. And then you can hit that to make clips. Um... The supporters. Yes, thank you so much to everyone who has followed on Instagram. Keep going. Do not stop. Next marker is 3k when the algorithm likes me even more, but I mean, we'll take our time to get there. It's fine. Um, get them out now. No, I got an achievement because I've never done it on this tune before, but that's all right. I'm followed fear with my 900 old accounts, you know, just to troll a bit. Entire chat holds breath. Well, dang, Blaming Seeker. Why are we Blaming Seeker? Same with travel. Um, why should I work in travel? And they're like, so with this thing, and I'm like, nope, yeah. Let me confer with my Yeah. Oh, anxious. I'm so sorry to hear that. No. And also, hello. Welcome on in. Guilty of abusing my tech savvy PC friends, though. Yeah, but like, if you can help them out as well, like, it's, it's all about the kind of give and take, I find. Like, you know, if you're, hey! Sarum, thank you so much for the donation. Much appreciated. Go you, so generous. Wonderful. Used to work at Apple for years. Was in the hospital, my appendix exploded. Six a dog fixing people's iPhones and computer of the nurses. Oh no. And you know, they probably justified it as like distracting you from the pain or something as well. Good Lord. Good Lord. Um, you should clip that for future reference. <laughs> Dread hearing, hey, you work with computers, right? From relatives. No, not anymore, actually. I've joined the circus. Soz. <laughs> That's, look, I'm gonna have to use that next time. Uh, I need to build a new PC, so be doing that in soon. Yep. Ah, uh, dear, slurking and crocheting. Amazing. I hope you're creating something adorable and wonderful and that you're having a brilliant time doing it because that is the most important thing. You are really good at crochet, just BT dubs. Oh my God. Let's keep the message confidential. I don't want to bring down the mood of stream. Totally okay, Jay. Not a worry. I can absolutely do that. But I, I saw it and I kind of, you know, it did a heart thing. So, you know, you know what I would say, but I make it, I'll keep it. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Thank you for your donation. Thank you for your generosity. 
My god, you guys, 550 bucks. 550. What the hell? That is amazing. Thank you so much to everyone who we are we are going to wrap the stream up here. Um let me see if I can find <clears throat> Sinister Shaw making a scarf with the cuddliest yarn on. Yeah. Yarn store around Ikea that I really like. I love that. Brilliant. Um. Trying. Let's see. <clears throat> I don't think. I'm trying to see if anyone on front page is doing the charity thing with Pink One at the moment and they don't look like they are. That's okay though. Let me see if I can find. videos there's no I don't think anyone's ah here we go maybe they're just ah oh, you know what they're not gonna be on my front page they're not on my front page because they're not Australian I don't think um what are they playing Yeah, let's give this a go. Let's see. I don't know this person. Um, so usually when I read people, it's someone who I've kind of like, usually I've verified them as like a cool, awesome person and all this kind of stuff. Um, but I'm not sure who this person is, but they are raising for, they're, they're raising money for Pank One. So I thought that we'd send some love over there and uh, fingers crossed we can continue on the, uh, the love train. So let's try that and see how we go. Uh, the person's name is Matt RPD. They're currently playing The Last of Us Part Two, uh, which I think is, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a kind of shooty sort of game, but I'm pretty sure there's like, uh, like story. I'm pretty sure The Last of Us was like super heavy on like a really heart yanking story from memory, but I don't remember. Um. You two, what a lovely way to end the stream. I agree. Absolutely amazing. You're amazing in anything. Thank you. Thank you. Um, she went all the way around. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Machine is a great, is great to look. Yes. Story plus zombies. Brilliant. Heavy cinematics. Wonderful. If I'm thinking of the right game, I think so. I think you might be. All right. So we're going to go say hello to them and give them some support in their fundraiser for Pank One. I have a feeling they're on the front page at the moment in their area because they're sitting on one and a half thousand viewers and, but chat is not exploding. Um, so, so there's, so there's that. Um, but I don't know at what point chat explodes. It could be one of those kind of games where everyone just kind of sits back and lurks. So I don't know how it, we'll see. Let's have a look. Um, before I do that though, there's not much to talk about. Uh, on Friday, we're doing Shaw Farm. Sunday's May. See you on Friday. Uh, <laughs> it's literally that. Um, so let me drop this and I'll do this. Probably heavily moderated chat because spoilers. Yeah, potentially, definitely a thing. Um, I don't know if it's a, it does say first playthrough. Ah, yeah, no spoilers, no backseating. There you go. So. Grab your copy paste. If you haven't got the Fiamma Hype emote, either because you're not subbed or because you haven't unlocked it with your channel points, both which are totally okay, you can still copy paste the entire message, delete the Fiamma Hype, and then drop uh, your favorite happy hypey celebratory emote in to replace it. Um, and then send Matt some love. We'll say hello to a new person, maybe make some new friends. Um, I'm gonna see you on Friday for the rest of my Shah tunes. Uh, we only got through, I think like 21 or 22 today, not the 25 I was hoping for. So we look, Friday's gonna be interesting. Um, oh, there's a battle. Shit. Um, 
I'm going to have to do it as an offline thing, I think. Um, for God's sake. Yep, I'll have to do it offline, but that's okay. Um, take care of yourselves. Be nice to each other. Thank you to everyone who came out to support, shared, donated, all that kind of stuff. Penguin says thank you. And I'll see you on Friday. All love. Mwah. Bye, guys. <laughs>